Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Glanigors. Uh, we're here for round two of the Cart Championship, and what a beautiful day, or what a beautiful start of the day it is. We've already had our uh, first heats that took place yesterday. I hope you joined us. Uh, welcome, uh, if you are joining us for the first time at Glanigors. My name is Joe Bradley, and alongside me is my new cohort for this weekend, Henry Baudet. Henry, um, I'm, I'm a visitor to your part of the UK, aren't I? Uh, Hi. Well, Bor welcome to Karting Live TV oh. and welcome to Glanigos. Borada, Kroisoi Glanigos. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Glanigos. Uh, round die uh, of the, the Kart Camporioth, which is round two of the, the Kart Championship. I, I, I uh, kind of gathered that. Uh, yeah, I, mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm not, I, I can't speak any Welsh at all. Uh, the, the general gist, but uh, thank you for having me. It's been, uh, as you said yesterday, Joe, a fantastic day of racing. We did. Two heats for for every driver here. Now we've got the two super heats and the main events, the finals today. Um, weather at the moment is, is dry. The track is slightly damp, some overnight yeah. rain, uh, but we're here in the foothills of the Snowdonia mountain range in North Wales and a beautiful part of the world it is as well. It is one of the most, most picturesque yes. circuits that we visit here. The, ro the rolling grass infield without... With the lack of tyre barriers gives it, it that feel yes. of a... What it's, I see it is it kind of feels like a car racing circuit rather than a kart circuit. Yes, yeah, it, you, you can, you know, it's uh, unimpeded viewing from uh, certainly the clubhouse uh, on the left-hand side of your screen there, the start finish straight, which is, uh, and that's not even flat, but that is about as flat yeah, as well, the circuit gets. Well, that, everything that, is uphill, downhill. The thing is, Henry, that's the final turn there as we release the Hondas, but that final turn there, that camera isn't wonky. No, 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 no. The camera's no, no. straight. It's yes. the track that's wonky that's massively off camber there, and we don't really realise that um as you said we had our heat yesterday the heats were about we had two heats yesterday that was all about forming the grid for the super heats yes but we've scored championship points already yes and with the hondas going out there it was ryan white with two heat wins yep didn't have it easy though did he they, uh, they weren't exactly walkovers uh, no it not was, at all it was a metaphorical fist fight for this honda victory yeah, in, indeed. Uh, you know, the likes of, uh, well, you know, Kevin Ivanov, who will be starting this race on the outside of uh, row number one, Archie uh, Cannon, um, Archie Loveridge and Ed Spain amongst the, the drivers that were uh, challenging. And, of course, Ryan White came into today or into this weekend, second in the championship standings. Uh, he would have uh, increased, well, he would have moved to the top of the chart over Ed Spain, who we'll see very shortly a little bit further down the grid, but I mean a full grid of Hondas, the Honda 200s, the GX 200 engines, and uh, I think it's about time we probably took the, the, the viewers through who we're going to see in this first super heat. Yeah, we've got the, the grid forming up. The grid forming up and how they finished the, the two rounds of heats yesterday with Ryan White scoring maximum championship points with two wins. He scored 40 points there. 38 points were scored by Kevin Ivanov with a second and a third. A third and a second for Archie Cannon. I suspect these three are going to be battling it out at the front, aren't they? Yeah, the tiebreaker between uh, Ivanov and Cannon uh, was the fact that Ivanov put it on pole and uh, Cannon was a little bit further back on the grid. So the time qualifying is a tiebreaker when people have uh, got the same amount of uh, heat points. I'm not a betting man. If I was, I'd stay well away from this one. It's going to be very, very difficult to pick one. So, so Ryan White and Kevin Ivanov on the front row. Archie Cannon and Magiris Kovekis on row two. Ed Spin and Archie Loveridge are on row three. Row four is Riley Blakewell and Kean Sullivan. And then row five, running off the top ten, is Ralphie Branscombe and Albie Smith. It's a light-controlled... Uh, start to this standing start, and yeah, we on the right hand side. Yeah, that's screen on the there. right hand yes. side, and uh, we'll get a great view from our grid cam there, just on the outside of the final turn, just showing that really does see. You can see the slope and the adverse camber there. Oh yes, uh, from that corner. So we wait for the red lights to go on. The two big red lights. There they are. They go out very quickly, and we are off and racing towards turn one. On what is a damp track, and I think that Looks there's tricky, a, doesn't it? Yes, there's certainly a, a maybe I'm thinking at the slick tires for most of them, or well, we'll have to we'll soon see about what tire compounds they're on when they uh, turn up. And it looks like they might be on even on wet tires there because even though the sun is shining as we head up into Spoon Curve and a good clean start for our three leaders heading down the hill towards this the carousel. So the downhill entry, then, you know, 180 degree uh, left-hander. It's a long, sweeping left-hander uphill. Then you through the turn six here and turn seven. Turn seven is the beginning of the descent 
down the uh, side of the valley through they turn you know they did right and left through devil's elbow and then uh, right twice and then left again through compression corner down the hill into this final uh, 90 degree right hander at Pitts Bend. That's a wood lap here at Glanagors. That's a great uh, description of the track here at Glanagors. Tricky track conditions. If you are out on slicks, you're going to find it very tricky indeed. And the problem with a damp track on slicks, the slicks never really get up to te no. temperatures. We've got to move for second place there down the inside of Ryan White goes uh, Kavekis, Kavekis there right on the bumper up to the Dragon Strait, now Kavekis off and chasing Kevin Ivanov, who's had a great first lap there Henry, as you took us round it was Ivanov who was pushing on and making the break, these three breaking away from the rest of the field I would suspect before we get towards maybe, you know, two minutes to go, we're going to see these three come back together, because this is the pattern of a Honda Cadet race, they do string out and then by pure physics yes they, they just come they concertina back together behind the top three let's not discount ed spain archie cannon and archie loveridge who are really going at it yeah because you come you come out across the main straight at the start finish straight through the uh, clubhouse bends the you know the right hander that leads you on to this long dragon straight which a bit like pad a little bit like the start finish straight of brands hatch it's not quite straight because it's got that uh, kick through the middle of it but that's a flat out then you turn right as fast as possible up the hill into Spoon Curve, the very top end of the circuit, and uh, that first that first sector lends itself to slipstreaming and drafting, as we can see the 42 of Archie oh, Cannon yeah. battling with Ed Spain and the 73 of Archie Loveridge. That is for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Well, he got by, didn't he? He got by, and then he was kind of hung out to dry by getting by. He put himself on the outside of the uh, of the carousel, and now we've got the number 72, Ed Spain, uh, back into that fourth place with Archie Loveridge again opportunist occasion for him just lurking there in the shadows yeah. and then he went with him he thought yep I'll come with you through that gap on to the Dragon straight again then there's no change for the top three uh, Ivanov, Kovekis and Ryan White just to remind you I did mention Ryan White taking both of those heat wins so he'll not be happy with having to follow the other two around but the other two Ivanov and Kovekis um, it, was, it was, you spoke to Kovek, it's an old little yes. panic walk, didn't you? Yeah. While, whilst in the background, the team were going up that and tinkering with that setup to get him back on terms with Ryan White, no doubt. Yeah, we, we were in the zip cart awning last night, and you can see that the, the, the paddock walk with myself and Joe uh, during the, the lunch break today on, the, on today's coverage, uh, which, uh, again, it's a great insight in, into the workings of, of these teams. And, uh, yeah, certainly the, uh, the mechanic... Uh, one of the zip cart mechanics was uh, fett fettling away. Even though the cart was quick yesterday, the, the work never ends. It's still it's like sharpening a razor blade, isn't yes. it? With any form of racing. And even here, grassroots level, entry level karting here, Honda oh. Cadets. And still we're tinkering. And still we're tinkering with place changes up towards Spoon. And it's over the brow of the hill there. We've seen that as a, a kind of a favourite spot for overtakes. It's kind of got a kink as you go over the brow before the corner proper. And you've got that, that kind of opens up gaps and it, and it makes for great racing and, here. And it caught out a number of oh, race leaders yesterday lots. because you're, uh, yeah, you're going uphill, flat out, right hander there, side by side as they begin the descent down the hill. That's uh, normally only single file, but the Hondas are making it work. And that's a very, very good move. Well done there. That's Archie Loveridge oh. in the 73 zip cart there, managing to get past and uh, take the position. Uh, passing Ed Spain as Archie Cannon now passes Spain as well. But uh, that, that's a, that was a brave move and he timed it well. But it has allowed the 96 of Ralphie Branscombe to close in a little bit. Yeah, let's have a quick look at the top 10 actually. Uh, so Ivanov leads, Kovek is second, Ryan White third. That battle with Archie Loveridge, Ed Spain and Archie Cannon. Ralphie Branscombe just off the tail of them and catching. Eighth place is Riley Blakemore. Kean Sullivan is ninth and it's Luke McGall just ahead of Albie Smith for 10th and 11th. Yeah, and uh, 34 drivers started, 34 drivers still running, which is is, is good to see. And uh, even though these drivers are on the wet tyres, by the looks of it, the, the track is drying out quite quickly. The sun is actually beating down. It's quite warm up here in the commentary box. Yeah, complete contrast uh, the, to yesterday yeah. where we had snow around oh, this time yeah. of the year. Because we, you know, the sun is to the left of the camera shot by there, you know, coming down from over the mountains that, uh, that sort of surround this circuit. And... Uh, Yes, that will help the track dry as well, but uh, also giving the drivers a new problem because, of course, the grip level is increasing and changing every lap. And, of course, 
being the, the, the wet treaded tyre. I'm trying to see I'm, there, Henry. I, I, I'm, I may, I may yes, be wrong. I know, I know, I know. And it would have been, you know, a very, very tricky start to this event on slick tyres. On, yeah, no, they, they, on there's lots of damp patches. Yeah, those those are, those are wet tyres, as we'll see. In yes, the, they are. They our are wet. Camera crew yeah, there. Thanks. Good work there from our, thanks, boys. Our, our camera crew there to show that the treaded, uh, the treaded Dunlop uh, tyres. Has a, a lot of curb being used as well. That's that's a great shot there of just how drivers use the curb at compression corner to help rotate the cart. Yes, yeah, compression corner called uh, compression corner because that's exactly what happens as we've got a move there from Archie Cannon. He looked like he was going to pull alongside Archie Loveridge. Loveridge there giving him the indication, come on, don't fight me. That's basically what he was saying. Uh, yeah, Arch don't fight me. Let's catch Ryan White, Ivanov and Kovekis. And uh, Archie was, uh, he, he was not too enthused uh, by, Archie, by uh, Loveridge's uh, decision not to work with him. But up the hill we go. Now, they're closing in on Ryan White for third. Uh, the two leaders are five seconds up the road. And uh, so Kavakis and Ivanov have cleared off. And this is the third place battle coming through Compression Corner. Uh, White, Loveridge, and Cannon. Here we go. And uh, Ed Spain behind them in sixth and Branscombe seventh with Sullivan, McGill, and Elliot Bork rounding out your top ten. But uh, yeah, n now Loveridge is looking over his shoulder, and now he's got help from Cannon, and now he opens the door. <laughs> yeah, down the inside of Ryan White. Ryan White demoted another position down to fourth. He will not be happy. There's, uh, maybe it's the conditions on the track, maybe... Uh, and Ryan White comes back at him at the carousel. So this race isn't over. Ryan White, I was right, was not happy at all with losing that position. He's still under a lot of pressure. And there we've got Archie Cannon tripping over Archie Loveridge, the zip driver, having to make way for the number 42 as Cannon goes through and into fourth place. So it's the battle of the Archies for fourth and fifth. Yes. And that has gone the way of Ryan White because as the Archies battle it out, that's allowed Ryan White some breathing space. And off he goes to consolidate that third place we are inside uh, we are certainly inside the final minute I look up there and I see that we've got no time at all so it will be the one lap to go board for Magiris Kavekis who has gotten ahead of Kevin Ivanov just out of our sight so if we can just pick up the battle at the front of the field Magiris Kavekis has already pulled out a bit of a gap there 1.2 seconds having got by Ivanov there is the field just coming through well and there's then. the number 15 just in amongst the back markers there yeah so all, again that some of the novice drivers are losing and especially these tricky conditions this is going to be tricky because that is Ivanov trying to make his way past and he just does that that was James Pearson uh, just getting out of the way uh, well sort of inadvertently getting out of the way but uh, uh, Kovekis has extended his advantage to 1.9 seconds now uh, we'll see Kovekis in the number 15 car there he is going up towards uh, spoon curve and there is more traffic in front of him but I think he should should uh, manage to get to the end of that before well I'm not sure you may uh, have to negotiate uh, that'll be the 58 cart of Daniel Barton yeah, who he's uh, coming to approach it's going to be close Henry and I, I suspect that the gap between Kovekis and Ivanov has perhaps been exacerbated by the need to get yes. through the back markers that's broken the leaders up however he hasn't got much real estate to cover before he sees the checkered flag oh. and it is a back marker that's it's not going to cause him too many problems and uh, discretion being the better part of valor and stays where he is yes. to take the checkered flag for the first of the super heats for Honda Cadet Ivanov threw in second, two seconds, 2.1 seconds behind this. Ivanov did get left behind in them back markers. Uh, Ryan White, a full uh, nine seconds off the lead, seven seconds off second. Uh, they'll be tinkering, won't they, uh, in that yeah. morning? Yes. But, um, I mean, the Project One team, though, they'll, they'll probably think, OK, well, that was maybe an outlier, that race, because we, we're probably not going to get another race with track conditions that's right. uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, exactly like this. Yeah, so uh, for think, those drivers right. like White who weren't as competitive in this this race as they were yesterday, I wouldn't press the wouldn't press the red panic button too hard just I, yet. I think you're right there, Henry. Um, so the top ten uh, through checkered flag flies. Uh, so uh, Magiris Kavekis takes the win. Kevin Ivanov second. Ryan White third. Archie Cannon finally won the battle of the Archies and came through in fourth ahead of Archie Loveridge in fifth. It was Ed Spain through in sixth. Ralphie Branscombe seventh. Eighth was Luke McGall. Cian Sullivan was ninth. And then rounding off the top ten was Elliot Bork. Ricky McIntosh and Albie Smith just outside the top ten 
in 11th and 12th. But, you know, again, good to see, okay, Reggie and Jerry uh, Dufasi there, the two, two of our novice drivers, uh, James Pearson finishing a lap down, but 34 drivers started, 34 drivers negotiated, tricky track conditions without any incidents and got to the end, which, uh, you know, is, is, is all excellent for them. But uh, the, the conditions, that, like, like Bob Dylan said, the conditions, they are a-changing. They are, and they'll <laughs> continue to change. Hopefully they'll change to, to, to dry and stay dry. But however, what did I say? I said that this to you this morning. What's the forecast? And you said something along the lines of, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, In this part of the world, take no notice of a forecast because the we, we're very high on high ground here, aren't yes, we? You, As you said, the foothills of Snowdonia. I mean, basically, that, that's your forecast. There is the forecast. There, there yeah, it is, at, yes. At, yeah, there it the, is. At the top of your screen there, behind us. So we are next to that big two... Uh, two-story green building that's where our commentary position is and uh, behind us is where you see that uh, that's where the weather comes from over uh, those hills you can see the uh, you know, the stone the stone walls and the uh, uh, the sheep in their woolen blankets uh, watching on beautiful part of the world though I mean there's a there's reasons why people have holiday cottages in North Wales oh. and that is the reason right there everyone yes we are we are very rural here at Glanigors. Yes. Um, it's it's out in the middle of um, middle of nowhere, really, yeah, isn't it? it? And it? Which is good because then we don't have any issues of, of annoying anybody on a Sunday morning. No, no, uh, you know, again, the sheep don't mind, and yeah. uh, even even when the uh, the skies are as grey as the uh, the slate mines that uh, that dot this part of, of North Wales, it's still very beautiful. But you can see that, uh, yes. I, if I were the Honda drivers I, or the Honda mechanics, looking at that shot, because that is the direction mm. in which the weather is. Uh, well, I mean, there's a patch. Is the, of is the blues. weather coming from right it, to it, left? It's there. coming from right to left. So there's a patch of blue skies, but there's also. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't put the wet tires away for the day just mm. yet. No, not at all. Even though it's it's bright it sunshine. And, that um, that you shot know. there. Thank thank you, Scotty, for for bringing us this. Uh, Yes. This beautiful picture of the sky. That reminds me of that Monty Python sketch. I'm, I'm expecting an animated uh, uh, angel to come <laughs> to, through. To that flying class. down and hit the ground. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that beautiful blue skies. If only those blue skies could peek through and then the, the grey, horrible grey clouds can disappear. Um, right, on with the next race then. And it's our Rotax Junior Primo heat or super heat yes. uh, for them. Uh, we had two wins again in this class as well. Daniel Hartley. Uh, took two first places from Bella Fairclough, who took two second places, Maya Simpson two thirds, and then Tyler Davis took a fourth and a fifth. Uh, that's how they're going to line up then. Daniel Hartley, Bella Fairclough, Maya Simpson and Tyler Davis. Laura Stewart popped her head in there to tell yes, us I was that about Cart 15, Bella Fairclough, is on wets. The number 96 of Maya Simpson is on wets. The number 54 of Thomas Butcher, who's down in 12th, he's on wets. And the only other carter on the wet tyre is Oscar Pitt, Oscar the number 85. Pitt. Everyone else on the slick tyre. Yes, I, I have a feeling, though, that we might see those four drivers on the first lap maybe gain a little bit of time. But um, ooh, Well, the track's evolving all the, the time, isn't it? Evolving. Literally, every lap, is, it's changing. I'm those not damp sure. patches are disappearing. I'm, I'm not sure that that's the right... Well, we'll, we'll soon see. So, but what, it, all right, you're on the... Do we agree? I what, would be on slick tyres. You would be on I, slick tyres. I would tires. be on slick tyres. I would be on slick tyres. If my driver, Ethan Pitts, who's a novice, I'd be pu putting that novice on wet tyres just because you think, OK, look, yes, let's, yeah. let's tricky conditions. Risk, risk and rewards. We're going to find out, Henry. We'll find out. Now then, this is the primo class, the junior primo. So the chances of us getting away is oh. absolutely uh, on the cards because yes. we have. Ah. And there's and a there's the problem with slick tyres. <laughs> yes, maybe. That's a big incident involving one, two, three, four, five, six carts who... Thankfully, I've rejoined. They're going to rejoin at the back of the field as the front of the field gets away. And that looks like the 63. Is that no, Daniel it's, Hartley? it's Bella Fairclough and Maya it Simpson. Is. So yeah. the wet tyres have gone off well. And you could see... You called it, mate. Uh, every, every, everyone got into the first corner and there were six carts. And you, they, into the outside understeering, the drivers tapped the brakes, which looped the back end round. And that's where you had those six. So we'll have a little look. Yeah, but so these two drivers, uh, the two young ladies... On wet tyres, uh, Simpson in the 96, Faircliff in the 15. Uh, then you're looking at the number 63 of Daniel Hartley, who is who winner yet double winner yesterday. Now the question is, how oh, but, Butcher is up in there's, there's the 54 as well. Yeah, so the He's first on three are on wet tyres. Uh, uh, on wet, sorry. Uh, but we'll see their lap times. Uh, you know, uh, progress or or degress or. or pro 
either progress or regress uh, as the race continues. The other thing, Henry, is as the dry line appears, there will be a dry line appearing offline. If you want to take any any kind of move, you are going to go onto a very damp track. Yes. And that's where the slick tyre will just lose its grip completely. Yes. These three breaking away, though, Maya Simpson, Bella Fairclough, Thomas Butcher, Daniel Hartley, the first of the drivers on the slick dry tyre, is now coming into play. Yes. That dry tyre is reaching that optimum temperature. And look at this. Hartley about to take third place across the line. Doesn't quite have the grip to get down the inside of turn one. And he's going to lose a lot of time now he down is. Dragon Straits because he would have had to understeer a little bit. And again, he's, he's so tentative. He's so much quicker down the straight than the wet tyres, but he does not want to move offline. There's one dry line at the moment, so Hartley has to pick his place very carefully. And down, you see that? There he goes onto the wet line there to make the move. The, 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 there is one line at the moment through Spoon, when usually there's about ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's exactly, about yes. ten lines through Spoon. <laughs> Uh, there's one line now with this dry line, and there, that is highlighting exactly what we're talking about there. Daniel Hartley just moved slightly onto the wet line and found he didn't have any grip, and he quickly made that decision to get back onto that dry. But he is harrowing Thomas Butcher all oh, through, down the inside. Yes. And that was a beautiful move there at the final turn. Yeah, it was. And again, now, now those wet tyres will be starting to overheat, and the treads will be starting to, like, ball up on the tyres and uh, you'll start feeling as though you're driving on ball bearings oh and uh, change the lead, first the, no, change it first I think is the leader lost her side pod I'm oh, really? looking down there uh, there's that uh, let's have a little look there the uh, Bella Fairclough's cart is that minus an appendage it is it is she's lost her lost her side oh, pod on the left hand yeah, side so that's going to be that, game over that's for gonna be Bella a Fairclough that's going to be a mechanical right yes uh, uh, it's uh that's definitely going to be... I mean, that's old... I mean, look, I mean, Joe and I are both old school. And, and My like, can't look like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good look, that, that with no <laughs> yeah. side pods, I've got to say. But uh, there, there is, it is the technical There's the technical defect. defect. Well, that's, that's going to help Daniel Hartley. Oh, that is a shame for Bella. Great. And look at that. Daniel Hartley down the inside. Those dry tyres. Your tyre choice was right, uh, yeah. Henry. you spot on. And Daniel Hartley's proving that to be the case. He's just scythed his way by Maya Simpson there into second place. Bella Fairclough, unfortunately, is going to have to pit with that technical defect flag, having lost her side pod. That was just off our cameras there. We're not sure how that happened. But there's a great, uh, a great insight as to what is under that side pod. Basically mm. nothing but the rear axle. Yeah, rear axle and, and seat and driver. <laughs> and there's Hartley. There's Hartley into the lead before Fairclough peels off and goes into the pits. Yeah, so, and to be fair to Bella Fairclough, she, she didn't fight it. She had just moved slightly offline. Yeah, she knew uh, what was coming. Now, uh, Maya Simpson on wet tyres moves into second. So third in the number 24 cart and fourth in the number 51 cart. They are on slick tyres. That's Ethan Barth and Ewan Stevenson. Thomas Butcher and Oscar Pitt, who are both on wet tyres, are still fifth and sixth. But then everyone else on slicks. Tyler Davis, LED, Ellis Dealey, Eddie Stewart, Sophia Caldwell, Laurie McVeigh, Leighton Kelly, Jack Johnson, Riley Mason Lewis, Zach Kane and Alfie Forrester, who are both out of the race. They were two drivers that were caught up in that first corner incident who sort of toured around and realised that uh, something was bent and uh, they, they pitted. I'm not sure about Zach Kane. He's, he's showing at the back of the field. He's only he's three laps down off the lead oh, lap, right. so, so he might have come back in. And there's, there's a, a card being pushed I, off. That was was that possibly Riley Mason Lewis not in the quite 59? Sure. It's but certainly not Daniel Hartley. That's the that's no. the main thing. Daniel Hartley, two heat wins yesterday. He's in the lead of this, the first super heat. He is the he's been he's proved to be the driver to beat in Junior Primo. Um, at this stage of the morning, it might uh, be an idea to explain exactly what Junior Primo yes, is, yes. Henry. For the uninvited uh, like myself. So it's drivers aged between 12 and 14. It's drivers that are coming up off the 950 chassis in the likes of Micromax and Intermax. And before they transition to play with, quite literally, the big kids yes. in Junior Road Acts, which can be very, very daunting. Um, the car championship has created a junior primo class for that age range. Once you're into your year of your 15th birthday, you then have to move up to junior Rotax. So these are the younger drivers who are in junior Rotax, basically. Yes, They'll go yes. off in other series and be in the junior Rotax grid. But, but this gives them the opportunity to have their own race. Yeah, and, and it's, it's an excellent step, stepping stone um, as well. You know, for, But it's not just a stepping stone also. For drivers that may think, OK, I... You know, we, we can't race every weekend around the country, so you know why why go against the full junior class when you know we're just going to get beaten up? Uh, let's we can race at this level, a, a very competitive national level, 
at uh, you know uh, within our means. Oh dear. And the the, the thing is, Henry. You know, I, we 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 both uh, know that's the number fourteen. That's Sophia Caldwell. Sophia Caldwell, yeah. Having a chat, and uh, I think she's been pushed back out. I think she's received uh, some. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not, not sure she's sure. allowed to do that, though. Is she no outside assistance. A couple of laps. Maybe they're just pushing her back off into the right. r- end of the the, pit, the, the the dummy grid area. I was about to say, I've seen some very very competent drivers in both Micromax and Intermax and because of age have moved into junior road acts and have really struggled uh, at front running drivers in Intermax yes struggling in junior because of the increase in physicality with the wider stickier tyres the more powerful engine and it it's literally took them about two or three years to kind of grow into the grow into the car. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so um, this is giving them a, a, bit, a better opportunity of yeah. gather experience. Learn the craft of the learn the craft, learn the tires, learn the chassis, um, without going up against yeah, 15, 16 year olds, or, uh, 14, 15 year olds who have been in the class for a couple of years that are far more physically developed yeah. because these are these are children, and the difference between um, you know a five foot one, twelve year old. And a five foot eleven, fourteen year old. That's right. Is yeah. Extre- is is vast in lots of ways. Yeah. Absolutely. But we've got a, we've got action at the front. Yeah. That's Maya Simpson who's coming under pressure from Ewan Stevenson. Again, this is a battle of the treaded tire against the slick tire. And Henry, your call at the start, you would be on slicks, was the right call. Daniel Hartley's proving that. There he goes off into yeah. another lap, and here comes Stevenson, who's literally all over the rear bumper of Maya Simpson. This is where he can accelerate by better traction out of the final turn. And nope, she's coming back at him. Those those treaded tyres, I can just see them peeling off. You know, <laughs> yeah. as they go up the straight there, uh, overheating. Let's have a look at this again. Maya Simpson just switching back down the inside and pulling alongside, but just didn't quite have that to to pull alongside Stevenson. So Stevenson, as we suspected he would, yeah. is now pulling away on that dry tyre. I think it was initially the initial bite coming out of the corner was was better but then you know a second later you know the slick tire had just had just pulled away and uh, now stevenson can set off after uh, ethan bath ethan bath is is some way behind yeah. daniel hartley i mean eight seconds behind so they're not gonna have a change for the top three it's can simpson simpson should hold on for fourth as we start the final lap, and it's a very yeah. good race. There's Ellis Dealey who runs in fifth. She's got quite a gap though, Ellis Dealey. But she? here's the battle. Now this is uh, the last two drivers, Oscar Pitt and Thomas Butcher, sixth and seventh, trying to hold off Eddie Stewart, Tyler Davis, and Leighton Kelly. There's uh, Alfie. So we'll try. We'll try and get this uh, this battle on the, uh, on yeah, the no, final that's, lap. That's the 24 cart of uh, uh, Ethan Bath. Go past Alfie Forrester, who is out there. There it is. That's it there. Oh, yes. Stewart's through. Stewart's through on one of the drivers in that equation. Uh, on the 45 cart of Eddie Stewart. Yeah, he's going past, uh, I think that was Oscar Pitts, possibly. Oh, Pitts coming back at him. That was cheeky. Pitts snatched that position back right there in the devil's elbow. Now into the compression. Time running out for Eddie Stewart. to have a go at these two on the wet tyres in front of him, and it doesn't come off. The chequered flag has flown, though, Henry, and it was Daniel Hartley who crossed the line first. Ethan Bath, uh, a full 10 seconds behind in second place. Ewan Stevenson was third. Maya Simpson fourth. Ellis Daly fifth. Oscar Pitt, it was that hung on to that sixth place with Tyler Davis hanging on for all he could to that rear bumper for seventh. Eddie Stewart did try uh, and uh, and nearly pulled it off, but Eddie Stewart comes through in eighth. Ninth was Leighton Kelly. Thomas Butcher, tenth. And then we had Laurie McVeigh, Riley Mason Lewis, and Jack Johnson. The final 13 finishes, or the first 13 finishes uh, out of the race was Zach Kane, who dropped out on lap nine. We lost Sophie Caldwell, Bella Fairclough, we saw going off with the loss of that side pod, pulling out the technical flag. And Alfie Forrester was a driver we lost at the very beginning. Very quickly, though, good result for Oscar Pitt. Uh, still a novice. Uh, spoke to his mechanic Nathan Chafer last night. Yes, we did. Didn't uh, we? And, and, and so Nathan is the CRG. He's involved with the CRG, and Nathan has just come back from a trip to the CRG factory in Italy. Uh, obviously, you know, learning a lot about the cart, and, and they got. Uh, so know, was he out there on a fact-finding mission, kind of thing? He, yeah, he was invited out there, is because they, you know Nathan and his family they import the CRGs into the UK, right. and uh, so the, you know, Mr. Tadini had take, uh, invited them out to the factory. They had a, a good look around. Uh, looking at the uh, looking at the equipment and figuring out how to make it work better, and obviously the the fact finding mission uh, has paid off. It's a good result there for Oscar. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Nathan Schaefer in bed early. We'd like in to bed, say yeah, last yes, night, yes, out yes. of character, but in bed early, uh, <laughs> a full day ahead of him. 
Uh, we've got the Bambinos coming out, and uh, in our paddock walk that you will see go out in the lunch break. So Henry and I had a bit of a wander around the paddock uh, yesterday evening after the heats had been completed. Yes. And one of the drivers we spoke to was Ollie West. Yes. Who took a second and a first in yesterday's heats. He will line up on pole position uh, with Noah Wicklow alongside. Now, Noah won the first heat and was fourth in the second. But the reason, and, and do watch the paddock show at lunchtime, um, we taught Ollie West because he's also out on the electric Mike yes. E Bambinos. And, and we, we wanted to ask Ollie what the differences were and he was very insightful he was uh, he was uh, y- you know inc- incredibly and it gives you an, an idea of just you know how intelligent a lot of these drivers are because they've got to soak up an awful lot of information but and they're only six to eight years old but this is the official motorsport uk british bambino championship class so the the, the kart championship this year uh you know under motorsport uk uh, permit so this is the official motorsport uk british bambino championship and the British official motorsport UK mighty Bambino Championship. So, yeah, good so, point. so the this is for the official British title. Good point. We're going to crown yeah. a British champion in July. Yep, yeah. the final round. Uh, uh, you know, let's which have is a, a great credit to the championship uh, <laughs> uh, and all all involved with it as well. Absolutely, absolutely. But yes, the grid. <laughs> Sorry. First year of MSU, MSUK uh, sanctioning has been the yep. governing body for this championship. Well done to Darren Beavers and all of his staff, Joe and uh, Matty. Um, so Ollie West, as we've said, is on the pole position. Noah Wicklow alongside. Ernie Weird and Jess Bailey are on row two. Row three is Freddie Pennell and Lewis Wilson. Row four is Arthur Bowers and Logan Hodgetts. Row five is Benjamin Shivar up from where he qualified 22nd, which, was, last, which yeah. was, yeah, not very good for Benjamin. He's back where he should be. Henry Hills alongside. Then we've got Raytho and Arlo Gamble. We are just clearing the grid as uh, John Stevens, Hendricks, Fallack on row seven, and then Max Armour, Jax Wong. We're about to clear the grid. We've got a green flag about to be waved at the rear of the grid to denote that we are ready. We are. It's a light sequence again. We'll see the red lights go on there on the lightning board just to the left. The driver's being told. There it is. It will go out and we will be racing. Jumping up and down there, Henry. What's yep. that all about? Uh, well, I mean, it just, you know, obviously the more weight over the rear axle, the slower the wheels rotate when you put the accelerator down. So there's less weight on the rear axle. by so the shifting your weight forward, you mean? Yeah, or, or, or if, there's, if there's no bum in a seat, then the <laughs> axle just rotates that little bit quicker. And it um, does. It does. The, the, the jury's always out as to how much it works. The key thing is the driver believes it works. So even if it's a, pre- <laughs> even if yeah. it's a placebo effect, yes. the driver believes it works. And it, it will help a fraction. I've, got hey, to say, I've, I, done, I, I've done it myself. Uh, yeah, it, it, I'm because, not sure it works from somebody my way. Because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still on the thing. Uh, yeah, but I mean... It, <laughs> It, it, it can have an effect, um, but, the, but the drivers believe it has an effect. And if the driver believes it, if you can convince a driver this works and you can get the driver this to believe it, must do. the driver will make it work, even if it's, uh, it, yeah. Um, not, it is, it is nothing actually different if the, the driver's mindset is uh, of, a, of a certain yeah. way. And uh, here's, uh, here's our, our technical analyst, Ollie West. Ollie West, yeah, great. yes. Like I say, great insight. Uh, he's got a uh, massive company, though, right on his bumper. In fact, I think they're nice. joined together yeah, in somewhere. Maybe a bungee tie. Like conjoined join, twins, yeah, conjoined yeah. Uh, carters there up towards the spoon. Still very wet offline there, but these carts are on the little cont all weather tyre, which means they're treaded yes. for these youngsters. And there's no changes. It's a very fast corner, that at Spoon. In fact, on these Bambino carts, there isn't any really slow sections of Granny no. Gores. It's all very, it's all very Osterite ring. Yeah, it's all very old fast and ring, flowing. Yes. yes, all very fast and flowing. And these I'm, drivers, bizarrely, I, I say bizarrely, I mean that the greatest respect. These youngsters have an instinct about yes. speed and momentum and how to drive the cart through that floor and they, they, they very rarely go sideways. They know if they go sideways and start sliding around too much, it's going to slow them down. Yep. And here we are, textbook from Ollie West and Noah Wicklow as they come through that off-camber final corner. And then behind the two leaders, we've got a gaggle of carts. A good battle, yes. That, uh, Ernie Wade, Henry Hales, Jesse Bailey, Louis Wilson. Uh, and apologies to Louis' dad. He collared me this morning. So just, 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 just one question. I was like, whose name am I getting wrong? He was, no, it's, so it's Louis, not Lewis Wilson. Right, okay. So that's, uh, Thanks for Lu- letting us know. Louis, Louis Wilson, that's uh, the Tim Wilson Motorsport Collective. Uh, Arthur Bowers, who I, I think is Mr. Trick by not... I mean, if the name... Oh, it's a name like Bower, you should have 24 as your number. 
Should you not? Oh, I like that. Oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Good <laughs> yeah. One. yeah. Through the carousel. All we've got them. we've got everybody through the carousel. Yes. We've got two way coming out on up over the hill towards Ooh. turn six, into turn seven. Uh, a yellow then, flag. Yeah, because that's, somebody is being. Uh, it's that's the number sixty-seven cart of Jack's Wall. Oh, that's a shame for Jack's. Yes. Yeah, he had a great weekend at Warren Law last weekend, the Spring Series. Uh, not so great here this weekend in the first. No change at the front though. West still leading Wicklow, and then we've got this gaggle of carts. How many have we got there? Absolutely no to deal. Six, on eight, the dragon straight, eight, eight or nine. Well done for counting that. Back to the ninety-four. So that, so that is Incredible. third to twelfth. Train of carts, going to slingshot over the brow of that hill. Here they come, and they spread out. <laughs> Who's where? I do not know. Let's see how they come out of the spoon curve and down the hill towards the carousel. It's, it's incredible like, racing from this lot. It's like a reverse hole shot in, uh, in, in Supercross or Motocross where <laughs> yeah. they all start in a single file and when they get to the, the, the corner, they're seven or eight wide. They really were. They really were. They've sorted themselves out to a fashion. We've still got lots of place changes. It's still Henry Hills at the front of this queue. Yes. But behind him, there's place changes going on all the time at pretty much every corner. Here they come, down through the compression. Now, Henry Hills has lost out there, and I think that was Jess Bailey. In the green and black cart, moving us into second position. So, yeah, 78. Ba Is Bailey. Benjamin Shivar moving up the order? So, Shivar was seventh the, at yeah. the start of the lap. He's now fourth. He's in the green. He's got the green bumper. He's got a good run down the outside of Dragon Straight. When he slunks up <laughs> around the outside, job done before we get to turn two, and they're four wide behind. He's a really cool little character, this is, great, is Benjamin this is be a great Shiva. shot. Look this, at this. Here they come. That's fantastic. See how he just looked across as he was passing there? Just looked across, checked where they were. I remember the first time I met him was in a, a, a race at, uh, at Warden Law, and he was absolutely outstanding, class of the field. And he came, uh, I asked, you know, Bambino drivers, Benjamin Shiva in first place. This tiny little tot came yes. out with these big brown eyes and this big smile. Are you Benjamin? Yes, I am. Yeah, get up here on this podium, yeah. mate. You've won the race. That's when you and when they've got to like put their helmet down and sort of like put their hands down on the podium to lift themselves up. But Shiva is now uh, trying to pull away the the gap. The, the group has sort of split into two. Uh, so this is Shiva, Bailey, Bowers. And Wilson with the 57 cart of Hales in seventh. And then three wide behind. Now, there's the number 12 cart, Kalman Simon's uh, Ayrton Senna inspired cart. Now, if I was Stu Stratton, this is where I'd be taking <laughs> some of my photos. You've got the trees in the background, the grass, the side of the circuit, the sun is on the tarmac. And then out from uh, up, up the hill, these uh, multi colored, you know, Bambino crash helmets go kart emerge. Three oh, wide, and Shivar, we've still got battling Shivar going on. losing out and down the hill. It was all about the spoon. Shivar went really wide, Henry. Oh, and we've got a coming together there into turn seven. It was Shivar who went uh, side by side. So Shivar's lost out at Jess Bailey and Arthur Bowers. Yes, and and that was because he went wide at the spoon and lost momentum down the hill. Let's see how it figures out by the time they get back towards us. It's already Shivar up. I think he's he's clawed back another place as Ollie West goes through. Noah Wicklow goes through. It is going to be, it's Lewis Wilson. Lewis yeah, Wil Louis Louis Wilson. Wilson. Louis Wilson. Louis Wilson in third from Benjamin Shivar. It was Louis Wilson who got through, but Shivar's going to come back oh. at him. Shivar there, looking. he's looking around. There's nobody there, Benjamin. Here we go, over the brow. Is this where the move's going to come? Here they come now. It's Shivar on the green cart. The yellow cart is Lewis Wilson. Not Down the right. hill. Louis looking over his shoulder there, and Shivar is there. Still wet on the inside, so the yes. carousel may be not the place to make the move. But on the switchback coming out, he hasn't got the line, Shivar. He has to slot in behind Wilson again. And I think I just saw Bauer spinning going up the hill behind. But oh, we've Shivar seen gets that so move. many times. How, how, how do they do that there? Yep. They, they're not supposed to be able to do that. Uh, but how many times have we seen these Bambinos overtake there? It's because of the narrow carts, the mm -hmm. lower-powered carts. But so so Shiva uh, and Louis Wilson now clear. Uh, I think Bowers had a spin. Yeah, he's talking about Will Wainwright and Ernie Wade now fifth and sixth with Hales, Bailey, Simon. But up at the front, Noah uh, Noah Wicklow and Ollie West are separated by half a second as uh, 
They're yeah. actually attached to each other. Yeah, they're, they're literally, they're they're, actually, yes. yeah, there's they're, an elastic they're band somewhere. Be, yes. Yeah, from, from rear bumper to front bumper there inside the final minute, then 20 seconds on the clock. It will be the final lap board when these two come through. So we'll, we'll stick with this one. Um, Alex, if you were Alex producing at the minute, yes. producing the pictures for us in fine style, uh, we'll stick it with this one because what I do not want to do is if Noah Wicklow has been playing a waiting game, and I fear he hasn't because I fear he's, he really is chasing down Ollie West, but we don't want to see the place change on the final lap as we are concentrating on all of that that's going yeah. on behind these yes. two. Uh, at the end of the day, when you look at the lap chart from this first of the superheats for the Bambinos, you'll see Ollie West and Noah Wicklow being first and second all the way through this. But I'm pretty sure it's been uh, a case of Wicklow just looking for that opportunity as they go up towards Spoon then, over the brow, into the right-hander at Spoon now. Little variation on a theme there, wasn't it? They've, they've both gone through different lines, but they come out exactly together. And Wicklow, if anything, Henry, is now on the bumper of Ollie West and looking for a way by. Yes, uh, up the hill, half a lap to go, although Ollie West has got that five or six cart length advantage. As long as he doesn't make a mistake, and, you know, the fact that he's doing double the amount of laps because he's doing both classes, uh, trying to become a double British champion means that I think that... Uh, He's not inclined to make a mistake, but he's, he's made the move and then consolidated it. So uh, a good start to the day as the checkered flag comes out for number 20, Ollie West, who uh, celebrates in style as well. He should. Noah Wicklow second, and after that fantastic battle. And that's what I love to see. There are drivers celebrating, finishing fourth, finishing fifth. Yeah, I love a, them. They've had a really <laughs> good yeah, look battle. At them. Look at them. Yeah, this is what I love. What, it. And this is what the championship, this is what Darren Beavers and, and the rest yeah. of the team want to see yeah you've had a good race you know it was whether it was the first or fifth or 15th you you you've learned it, it, and you and you're happy with winning that little battle that little private battle that some of the in. best races i ever had in in carts were not necessarily for the lead it's not what it's about mm. wherever you race you find someone who can, you, you can race with yeah and whether it's for 10th or 20th if the race if the racing's good and you've had yeah. a good battle three or four of you that's what it's all about. And it, these kids are just showing that that's the joy, that's the pleasure. Yeah, it, 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 it's it, intense. It's something. Uh, or it's it, pleasurable. Yeah, because I used to find that, you know, you, you, you'd arrive at a circuit, you know, half, you know, maybe the second, like this is the second round of the championship, and uh, you pitch up. And at the first round, there was a driver who was a couple of places ahead of you. And you're thinking, okay, I want to try and match, I want to get to that driver. And then you you, bat, you get to that driver, you battle with that driver, and you when you if you beat that driver, even if it is for 12th, 15th position, as, a, as, as an individual, you think, okay, I've improved myself, my setup, my speed, and you know I can now set my sights on another target, which is great. That's exactly what it's about. Yeah. And, and those kids punching the air yes. was exactly that. Ollie West was the first to punch the air with that fine uh, super heat win, adding to his tally of uh, of points going forward. No Wicklow second, Benjamin Shivar, a fine drive up from, I think he started eighth on the grid or something there. Uh, he finally came third ahead of Louis Wilson in fourth. Louis Wilson just missing out there, could have easily have been his third place as well. Ernie Wade and Will Wainwright, Will Wainwright was fifth and sixth. Jesse Bailey and Calvin Simon eighth, uh, seventh and eighth. Uh, ninth and tenth was Henry Hills and Logan Hodgetts. And then we had an 11th, John Stevens, Max Armit next, Ray Thorne, Arthur Bowers, Hendricks Fallat, R uh, Riley Aston Wilkins, Arlo Gamble, Max St. Hilaire, Santo Amico rounds off the finishes in 19th. And then we lost Freddie Purnell and Jack Swong, who we saw being, uh, being recovered from the infield on the circuit. Um, <clears throat> right. I don't know whether I need to lie down before this one. <laughs> um, well, well, the one thing is that we know they're all going to be on slick tyres. So yes, we, have, they we are. haven't got tyre issues to worry about. It's only driver issues. I, I tell you what we have got to worry about is ju a junior road axe field being unleashed onto a track where there's a very wet and damp offline. Yes, yes. Um, this could prove to be a little bit eventful. Well, the marshals might get their steps in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know the recovery marshals especially um you know uh, flag we, waving wrists at the ready i think we need dan ashton's 360 cameras on this one <laughs> yeah. for a tv broadcast this is going to be eventful um the heats went the way of um at the end of the two heats i should say it was Camp casper tomaleski 
who uh, is at the top of the table. He'll start on pole with a third and a first yesterday. Yep. A second and a third has put Harry Erz Grover alongside him. A first and a seventh puts Addison Smith in third with Andrew Dix alongside. And then we've got James Kell and Callum Gosh. Fourth row is Jensen Pritchard and Max Haller. Then we've got Lewis Sumner and Jack Robinson. Row six, Riley Morgan and Ben Horner. It is row seven, Marcel Popacol and Logan Howes. Um, Sam Green Gomez and Gregor Reed, and then we've got Braith Murdoch, Aidan McDonald, Elliot Foster, Archie Doty, Leon Barlow and Charlie Vary share the 11th row of the grid, and then John J. Buchan. We've got the 2 3 3 off yes, there, Henry, as I, uh, I continue down. Ewan yeah. House and Molly Pugh, Lewis Holt, Harrison Purnell, Aston Brown, and Emily Cooper, and Christian Stefanov. Now, em- Emily Cooper it, has pulled out after that little incident yeah, yesterday. Yeah, Emily Cooper had an incident in the first heat yesterday, a slight concussion. She's okay back home. Hope you're watching Emily and feeling better. And it was uh, Elliot Foster taking an excursion, and that's going to be a false start. You can see the, uh, the yellow uh, Chevron flag. Um, oh, Chevron. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but, uh, yeah, so that's the, 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 the green, the yellow Chevron um, that shows a false start. Elliot Foster was, uh, just, well, getting his cart extricated from the scenery halfway down the Dragon Strait. That's a, that's a great viewpoint here of, uh, yeah, the uh, the Glanagorse hillside. And there's Elliot Foster at the bottom of your screen that, trying to that, catch. That's exactly um, what I mean, Henry. Yeah, that about, is, yes. about that, that shot there. That just epitomises yes. Glanagorse, doesn't it? The, the open yeah. fields, the beautiful infields. Uh, Ed Davis and his team doing a cracking job it, here and keeping this place looking it absolutely It does remind pristine. me a little bit of, uh, you say, there's parts of the Virginia International Road there, Course. Yes, yes, this bit here. Very, which is very similar where you can yep. see, you know, carts, uh, cars. Going Across the, the infield and yes. stuff. Yeah. Uh, and are we, we going? We are off and Yeah, we are. Racing. Green flag. Yes. yes. We have got a green flag. The field through. No, we don't. No, we haven't. Another false start. Ah, now, this is uh, where... It was at this point of one of the races yesterday that uh, our race director, Dan Ashton, decided that he'd had enough of the gamesmanship at the front of the uh, the field and was going to... Oh, there he is. Uh, As it, what, no, that's not Dan Ashton. Is that my not word. Dan? No, that's was, ah, it was the yellow earmuffs that... Uh, that's four foot taller than Dan Ashton. Do you right. <laughs> Dan Ashton. And no orange trainers, No, either. no orange trainers. Um, and, and Dan Ashton only does race directing because he can't go to theme park on weekends because he's not tall enough to get on the rides. Right. Is that yeah, a fact? Yeah, yes. That's, that's yeah, a yeah. true, true yeah. truth, that is. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yes. He, he's <laughs> open, he openly tells people that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah ab- okay absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah um, doing, a, doing a great job morning, yesterday. Morning, Linda. Dan's mum. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting keep for the text message. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's my Dan. Your, uh, yeah. she, or is she concurring with that? Possibly. Well, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, now then, have we got this under control? Let's go to our shot across the line. We'll see. That looks a bit more orderly, yes. doesn't it? A few people tra- uh, all savagely crossing the tram lines there. I say savagely. That's the only word that I can find to describe that. As we've got the leaders already up and over the brow and into Spoon for the first time. It does look like it's the number it's Tomaleski. Kasper Tomaleski, the number two twenty. Harry then, Hurst Grover was uh, ran very wide. He was on the off off the dry line, so that outside line. He understeered a little bit. He where's that put back. Uh, he, he's put that back into about fifth or sixth position oh, from second on the grid. He's the vice champion. Remember, twenty twenty three vice champion. He's going to have to there. fight his way back. It's the number. That's an ST racing car. That that's like second one of the, place. One of the John Stewart racing. Yes, uh, it is Addison Smith, of course. Yes, the 2 1 5 car with the 2 2 5. Andrew Dixon uh, in third position. The little gap back to uh, James Cowell, who has just passed Callum Ghosh. There's your top five. Then it's Hurst Grover. Jensen Pritchard, who we spoke to on the Paddock Show last night, is next, following Max Haller. Jensen Pritchard working with Ultima R, Matty Hingley. Ben Hingley and, and the team here from Abergelly. Yeah, he's, uh, first, he, he's just gone to Wildermott R this season, hasn't he, Jensen? Yes, and, from uh, uh, yep. Um, we've got Addison Smith there looking very, very racy indeed. He's uh, he's with ST Racing, so I suspect he's on a, an HRS engine, one of Nigel Horner's motors oh, yes, there, sir. trying to get by the leader, Tomaleski. That's no mean feat getting by Tomaleski at any track. Uh, there's a reason for that. He's the current, he's the 2023 car championship junior Rotax champion and once again showing his starting the 2024 season he's with KMS remember and down yep. the inside oh he had a look 
But again, that inside line, Henry, is very, very damp, and it's going to be very tricky for any kind of move down the inside of the carousel. Yep, uh, but uh, now if uh, he would have, if John Stewart has been uh, uh, mentoring young Addison Smith, you can rest assured that Addison will take no prisoners uh, if it comes to him potentially seeing an opportunity for the lead. But Cato Motorsports, Cato Adams uh, uh, and his team there running Casper Tomalevsky. Tomalevsky looking over his shoulder and uh, Smith, yeah, just there, tucking in side by side the third and uh, yeah. that's a move. James that's Cal. James, Cal, James Cal moving up the inside of Andrew Dixon and Cal's made two plays up there so far in this lap. But here's the move. Down the hill, not quite. You can still see yeah. the inside line is damp. He looks at it. He comes out of the spoon and through the left-hand kink. They plunge down that hill towards the carousel. And Addison Smith taking a look. But then discretion being the better part of Valor there on the damp line. He is all over the bumper of Tomaleski. These two are absolutely flat chat. We're not even anywhere near. We're a minute, a minute and a bit away from half distance. So there's plenty of time. And sometimes I feel that we have these drivers being very intelligent and just biding their time and making the move. They're, they're weighing it up, aren't they? They're learning yep. all the time. Where, where are the damp patches? Where is Tomaleski the weakest? Where am I the strongest? And sometimes it can all come together. Yeah, so so, that, ignore, so take, are we ignoring ig that? Ig ignore, the tight, ignore, ignore the sidebar uh, on the side of uh, the right-hand side of your screen there. Uh, the drivers have done more than yeah, zero laps. Um, but you've got Tomaleski, Smith, and Kel is now at the third. Dixon Ghost Grover is the sixth place driver. Uh, that, ah, no, that's uh, there we are. That seems to be better with, uh, that's, with that's Max, caught up, hasn't Max it? Haller, Jensen Pritchard, uh, and uh, Logan Howes with Jack Robinson rounding out the top ten. Now, Marcel Popacor uh, started down the order. Well, he started on the seventh row of the grid. He did finish second in yesterday's second heat race, but yeah. he retired from the opener. So, uh, Popacor. He's not the, what, the 13th, 14th fastest driver. He's having a he's, recovery day, isn't yes, he? Yes, he's on a recovery. So he'll be there by the end of the day. He'll yeah. be uh, uh, what, not one to count out. Still Addison Smith absolutely glued to the rear bumper of Kasper Tomalevsky through the devil's elbow and then into the compression. That right-hander there using all of the kerb. Then they turn right and left and then into the final turn, the off-camber corner there to finish the lap here at GYG into the clubhouse turn comes up very very quickly after the final turn that first turn and then all the way up the dragon straight and then up popping over the hill giving us some great pictures there Addison Smith yes. looking down the inside but again the perspective there giving us getting us excited for no reason at all and Smith beginning to Ooh. search for the grip down the inside side by side through the carousel and Addison Smith makes it stick the ST racing driver into the lead and uh, that was a very, very good move from Smith. And it was also, he, he left Tomalevsky on, on the outside that line. Was brave, Henry. Just enough room. And Tomalevsky sort of had trust in Smith that he wasn't going to just run him onto the grass uh, and didn't. Very close. But it has allowed James Kell to close right in. So we, and Tomalevsky looking over his shoulder yeah. to see, okay. Uh, and oh, there we go. Kell wasting no time, keeping the wow. momentum, uh, you know, picking him up, putting him down, and uh, into P2. So Tomaleski's, I think Tomaleski's slowed. He's coming yeah, out yes, of the spoon. Yes, that's, that's a problem. And he, yeah, it looks down the hill towards the carousel, and Tomaleski has slowed down dramatically there. That means that Callum Gorsh and Andrew Dixon is going to going to very soon be coming up upon Tomaleski. He's picked up again, Henry. I don't know whether that was. I don't know what happened there. If this was car racing, I'd say he missed a gear, but there are no gears on a Rotax Axmax cart, so I'm not sure what the problem was there. I mean, coming through the through the, te the tight and twisty bits, the cart looks okay. I think it's when he tries to go through the... Ah, no, he's, he's playing with there. something there, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think when he sort of like tries to pick up speed, now he's slowing down, so the engine's not revving as high as it was, or it's got a misfire. This when is it where he's slowed, right there. Yeah, so when he gets it, to it a certain uh, speed, at a certain trajectory, the cart does pick up. But then this, this part of the lap, he looks to be okay, because you're, you're going downhill and you're, uh, you're a bit slower. It just, it was, it was very strange. He's picked up again. Yeah. The cart, the cart's running again, uh, running okay. I mean, the, the last lap through 43.5 was way off the pace of the mid 42s. Let's see what his lap time is now. As Addison Smith still maintains that lead, James Kell second. Uh, he's backed out to 42s, 42.9. Yeah. James Kell ahead of him, 42.8, 42.7 for Addison Smith. 
So they are beginning to space out the first two and th one, two, three. I, I wonder if he had his radiator flap down too much of the engine side overheating. Maybe. It, so, so he's maybe. had to like lift it up to let the thing cool it. Oh, and now he puts it down. It's yeah. been up. Now but he puts it down. He's it down. Uh, he's not putting it down. He's slapping it down, which means I, there's obviously something has come loose and uh, there's an intermittent problem. And that just goes to show, again, these junior drivers, he's, he's trying to drive, trying to hold on to a third place Incredible. and yeah. one handed. Well, uh, try to make adjustments to a cart that doesn't want to work. If you don't know it, the drivers know what engine temperatures they are having. They, they are, they're giving, uh, the, the engine's telling them via a digital dashboard that's yep. in the middle of the steering wheel. So as they go up the straight, they'll ah, just have a glance. Again. Yeah, he does. Very top end. Top end. Very top end. The, 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 the cart doesn't want to reach max and revs or it starts sputtering and dying. Top end problem for Kasper Tomaleski, and that might have been the reason. Uh, that he was disadvantaged, certainly to lose by, uh, to James Kell that position because he's dropped right off them. Meanwhile, Smith consolidates that first, James Kell second. Behind Tomaleski there, we'll just drop back to Callum Gorsh and Andrew Dixon. That battle there, the two-card battle there for what is fourth and fifth. As they come through the final turn then, it'll be one, two more laps of racing. So they're on to their penultimate lap. And I think there, Callum Gorsh, Seems to have the legs up Dragon straight from Andrew Dixon. And then behind them is the number two who started on the front row. And there's the move. Oh, good move. That's the move from Andrew Dixon we thought was coming. Oh. And there's the switchback. That can happen every time. As Callum Gorsh will show not losing that fourth place, even though he did briefly at the spoon curve. Yeah, the cutting edge racing. Uh, Steve Cutting's team there of uh, Callum goes to CER, uh, you know, outfits uh, still... Good to see long-time member of the karting fraternity. And, uh, yeah, Callum Ghosh holding on to fourth place. But uh, now, will he have to defend? Because, again, Dixon was very strong down Dragon Straight. So we start the last lap. Now, Dixon, he's got the run again. Can he make the move going up the hill towards Spoon? And can he keep the position now? So he moves into Spoon Curve. And this time, Ghosh defends down the hill. Good stuff. And you can see the drivers checking over their shoulders into... Oh, we got a driver. That's the number 233 off the side of the circuit. Uh, I think that was uh, Elliot Foster again, who has uh, not had a good morning, but yeah, uh, he'll go again later isn't. on. Um, here we go then. And across the line has gone Addison Smith. Across the line has got James Kell. Kasper Tomaleski clinches third. And here's that battle there. It was indeed Callum Gorsh who pulled out that little bit of a gap to consolidate the fourth place. Andrew Dixon, fifth. Harry Hurstgrove, sixth. Jack Robinson, seventh. Eighth was Max Haller. Ben Horner, ninth. Tenth was Marcel Popperkull. Just outside the top ten, Lewis Sumner in eleventh. And Jensen Pritchard dropped down to that twelfth spot. Yes. Um, how do you take your coffee, my friend? Oh, I'm milking two sugars. I'm not one of these people that goes, uh, no sugar for me, I'm sweet enough, because I'm most definitely Well, this not. is sugarly. Oh, well, he, oh. I should be getting... Uh, sugarly, I'm sure it tastes lovely. Yes, it's the nearest thing to sugar. Oh. It's a Candarel product. Oh. If we were on TV, other, other, I'd other, be able to, you know, maybe get some uh, other brands commercial of uh, artificial sweetener are available, <laughs> yeah. but maybe, uh, the, but the, not as lovely as uh, this particular as Candarel sugarly <laughs> too. Not, not two full te teaspoons, by the way, Henry, oh, well, because I, this is very, very sweet. Yes, I, I, I did have a coffee this morning, and my teeth are still chattering yes. uh, as a result. Well, it's got to uh, keep you going, mate. That's the thing. Well, I got, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm just, just, you know, where's, uh, where's, where's my, where's my Phone call to Alpha Live HQ. This is how you look after your commentators. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. I'll see yeah. you next well, week. Well, you'll see them next week yeah, with the yeah, O-plate. Yeah. <laughs> Out of Wilt Mill for the British O-plate. And uh, I'll, I'm, I'm going to be there in the, in the role of spectator because that's how much of a geek I am. And I'm really looking forward to it. Right, we've got our Indermax. Uh, Superheat coming out next. We'll have a look at that grid in a moment, Henry. Or oh, you can have a look yeah. at that grid while I stir your coffee. Babe. Oh, thank you very much. And just you know, having a look, looking at the paddock, you know, this is the second round of the uh, of, of the the cart championship. We've got a nice full paddock. Uh, you know, next weekend at Wilton Mill, some of these drivers will be competing in the Motorsport UK, the O Plate. That is the o the British Open Championship. It's open to every driver, kind of like the Golf Open. It's open to every driver in the class. Uh, and that is on course to be Motorsport UK's biggest ever race meeting in terms of... Biggest entries. ever? Yes. Wow, well, really? You, you know, there's, there's already uh, well in excess of 200 entries across only the Rotax classes. So 
you know, it's good to see at the start of the year the weather's been dreadful. However, paddocks across the country yep. are full, which yep. is which is good. Um, and uh, yeah, well, and, and the it, season starts early. I, I remember the season doesn't end. Well, the season doesn't end. Yes, you're right. I mean, I remember the season going to a cup of coffee, maximum. By the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, uh, uh, it's Costa number number four. Um, yeah. In the pack. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, ground I'm coffee. I've got to pay you four pounds. No, I mean. No, uh, okay. It, it's, it's a, that's your first one's free, of course. Oh, of course, yeah. The next yeah, one yeah, you yeah. have to pay for. I'll add it to the invoice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, the price goes up and up. Um, yeah. What am I talking about? Yes. Oh. Um, the season does start. Uh, it never finishes. Yeah. It used to end in October and then resume at the end of March. Yes. Now yeah. we go through. We have we have race meetings everywhere. I mean, the, the, the first round was in. Um, in the end, at the end of February? What? No, beginning of March, first weekend yeah. in March. The off-season is now known as Christmas Day. We've got two rounds yeah. in March yes. to kick off the car championship. We finish the car championship in July. And then you have a winter series. And then we have a winter series. That kicks off relatively early in, uh, in, in September, of course. We'll have a look at the but calendar no. later. Because we've got Max Gilman leading the field of Intermax, uh, the, the Intermax field around. After two heat wins yesterday... Uh, he's got Jensen Seal alongside. Jensen had a third and a second. Harvey Bacon on the f- second row of the grid. He had a second and a third. Nathan Edwards is alongside in fourth with a fourth and a fifth yesterday. And then we've got Fraser Anderson and JJ Plowman sharing row three. Oscar Roach and George Ralston are on row four. Drew Davidson and Sandro Kemp are on row five. And rounding off 11 carts. It's a, a, our smallest grid of the day here at Glanny Gores. And we're about to get into Max Underweight. And we are indeed racing, and that's a great grid order through turn one there, side by yes. side, all of our all of our rows, and we've got just, I think everybody's in first going up the hill there. <laughs> yes, up the hill they go, uh, and uh, it's Gilman uh, holding on to top spots from the uh, Harvey Bacon number 180 car, the white crash helmet, the red race suits, as uh, all 11 drivers now make their way uh, around the carousel up the hill under blazing uh, sunshine here at Glanagorse. I'll just leave you to ponder on that one. And, as um, the, yeah, I mean, the, spe- <laughs> the, uh, the Welsh, the Welsh spectators. This is the uh, you can see the dragon on the, the Welsh flag, but uh, obviously uh, I, I some think... of our some of our, our woolen clothed friends watching <laughs> from the hillsides. Uh, it, um, it's great to visit Glanagorse. It, it's also sorry. great to finish your home track at Glandau. Yes, it I is. I really I mean, do like that track. Um, it's very technical. It's in complete contrast to this one, which uh, is you yes, know, in every way, un- shape un- and form. Every way, shape and form. It's undulating. It's it's quite rare to have an, as undulating a track as we have here at GYG, um, uh, yes, because uh, usually car tracks are flat because they you know lots of old airfields. Uh, lots and of old airfields. Like, I mean, uh, uh, lots of racing. He likes it. Silverstone, Croft, uh, yeah, of know, course, yeah, what yeah. Have you. Yeah. But uh, this, the, you know, you wouldn't land a plane here. I mean, I mean, this is known. As, uh, I mean, a field full of sheep, that's a Welsh leisure centre. <laughs> Are we allowed to say that? Probably no, not. Probably not. No, probably not. But Let's we'll, have uh, a look at this. Cross the line. Back to as to as no. they cross Hello, the Nick. line, <laughs> Max Gilman, yeah, representing Nick this weekend, is yeah. Henry Baudet. <laughs> Max Gilman leads from Harvey Bacon. Jensen Seal in third. Fourth is JJ Plowman, just coming up the order. Nathan Edwards, fifth. Oscar Roach, Fraser Anderson, Drew Davidson, George Ralston, Thomas Jackson, and Sandro Kemp. That's your 11 carts. And it looks like the lead beginning to string out. That's a battle for third. Jason Seal and JJ Plowman. JJ, another ST racing driver here this weekend. And it's a blue and yellow cart and a yellow and blue cart. That's the Jensen Seal on the blue and yellow. And JJ Plowman on the yellow and blue and is yes, the we... best way. And then behind them, I think everybody's behind from fifth yeah, downwards. A... a right little string of carts coming through the order there. Uh, as Edwards, Roach, Anderson, Davidson, Ralston, Jackson, Sandro Kemp, not that far behind, off the tail of these. So it's a it's a great little intermax battle there at yeah. the fifth and fifth place downwards. As the f- uh, the drivers in the top four positions are kind of stringing out, and yeah, the lead is stringing out even further. Yeah, and, but I mean, all the drivers apart from this, maybe a Sandro just just at the back of the field, but. This, this isn't necessarily a race you're going to see a lot of overtaking, but what it's what it's it, it's good for the drivers in terms of okay, it's it's flat out. You don't got to worry about tactics. You've just got to worry about driving as fast as you can, corner after corner, not making any mistakes. And a lot of these drivers will probably come in and they will find that they have done their fastest lap of the weekend in this race. 
because all they're doing is focused on chasing mm. the driver and concentrating on the driver in front of them. And um, there, there's, there's a prime example. Jensen Seal there puts in the fastest lap of the race so far, a 45-1 uh, for him, a 45-149. Uh, Max Gilman, the leader, 45.163 on lap three was his fastest lap. So the, you're quite right, Henry. That's a good, good observation there that with the, the field stringing out. And as I say that, beginning to come <coughs> together now, well, that cool. is Jensen Seal on the rear bumper of Harvey Bacon. Yes, because so Gilman and Bacon were the only two drivers or two of only four drivers last lap who didn't set their personal best lap on lap number four now there's the move sail to the inside bacon lets him go so they won't lose too much time they come up the hill to spoon curve and you can see that uh, unique driving style we saw yesterday from uh, jensen sale moving his body around in the cart just to sort of take weight off the, the one corner of the cart that's uh, not under load so he's trying to that the coming through there he's leaning to his left because the left rear tire is the one that needs to have all the weight to get the grip and he's to lift the right rear tire up as he as he turns turns right just to sort of yeah get the cart to rotate a little bit better it's uh, an art form that mark kimber seems to have managed uh, mastered and uh, a lot of young drivers now sort of copying that yeah i think i think a lot of driver coaches in in, in, in sort of making it mandatory for their drivers yes. to lean into the corner whereas we used to lean oh. to the inside of the corner who's that then who was that gaggle there swapping backwards and forwards that would be that nathan edwards, edwards oscar roach fraser anderson and drew davidson yeah fifth place on back so there it sixth, is seventh eighth ninth and tenth so this this is a good battle and of course yeah now they've now they've worked hard they've chased hard they've caught they've caught up and now the tactical element of the race begins with two and three quarter minutes to go and yeah uh, i mean still plenty of time isn't there yeah the one four nine cart that's nathan edwards now is that a bradley now there's the bradley shepherd racing team that are in sort of black and red predominantly uh there's fraser anderson who is uh second in this group then uh, george ralston oscar roach the 196 has fallen back to the near the back of this pack oh and look at that oh, trying yeah. to make it that's uh, the number 116 is uh, thomas jackson uh who just uh, sort of muscles his way <laughs> ahead of uh, drew davidson it was kind of like the it was a bit like the m25 uh, being congested there when everybody yeah. just backed up and and eventually the, the guys at the back had nowhere to go but to uh, to rest against the bumpers yes. of the carts in front. And that's not really a deliberate act. That's just an inadvertent thing that happens there as this train of carts being... Nathan Edwards doing a fabulous job. He's he's reminding me of Gilles Villeneuve at the Spanish Grand Prix oh, in 1981 yes, yes. where he, had a, he held the, uh, the whole field up for the whole race. Well, I'm not saying he's holding anybody up as we get challenges all the way down through that snake of carts. And we're certainly Edwards, not saying that that go-kart leader is as badly set up and as horrible as the, the driver's uh, <laughs> view of those Ferrari yeah, was that absolutely, day. absolutely. And Edwards there, just when he gets a bit of free space, he does pull out a little bit of a gap there. And behind him, of course, Fraser Anderson, Oscar Roach, Drew Davidson. Uh, they can lose out to the carts behind when they approach the cart in front of them. And that's the chance you take. If you're going to have a go for it, then yep. be careful because you've got opportunist drivers behind you yep. that can then demote you even further. Yes, and uh, but now what we'll see, so Anderson has managed to put a little bit of a gap between himself and uh, Roach, Davis and Jackson. So we'll see Anderson look over, his, we should see him look over his shoulder now. No, he chooses not to, but he'll realise, OK, I can make one move. I can maybe swing wide going into a corner. Uh, and then cut back underneath without getting elbowed wide and uh, try to squeeze by and again. And that's cost him yeah. momentum. And now he's under yeah. pressure. Now he looks over his shoulder. Now he realizes, okay, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to defend a bit more, and that's going to allow uh, Edwards to pull away again. I mentioned Henry earlier. There's about ten lines through yeah. Spoon Curve there, and there was a prime example. It didn't have a, any effect whatsoever on the speed through the corner. We had a car diving down the inside, a car staying sort of mid mid-track in the middle of the track and staying round and that was the uh, the cart of nathan edwards the orange cart there at the front of this train of carts we are uh on the penultimate lap actually we're going to see the last lap board for the leader max gilman next time by gilman leading by 1.1 seconds from jason seal harvey bacon still in third ahead of jj plowman so no change there but the here this is the battle for fifth sixth seventh eighth and ninth and i think that's george ralston just off the back of these uh, six carts there 
two, three, four, five, six. Yep, Ralston is the cart at the back of that field. They've dropped Sandro Kemp a little bit off the tail of these, but this is still anybody's race. Absolutely. And I know it's Nathan Edwards in fifth, and then Fraser Anderson in sixth, but if they're going to... I'm not sure how they're going to finish, and it could finish in a completely different order to what we're seeing now. Uh, well, they come around to get the last lap board. Gilman, 1.1 seconds in front of Sale, who in turn is 1.6 seconds in front of Bacon. And then it's JJ Plowman on it half a second back and forth ahead of this battle a long way ahead of this battle uh, that's the Lando <laughs> Norris chassis going around the outside that's Thomas Jackson passing Oscar Roach and uh, Jackson will now look at the rear bumper of uh, Anderson and George Ralston, uh, Ralston yeah, he's still he's, uh, he's hanging yes. on there they're getting towards the flag now into the devil's elbow they've got the compression and then the final turn, they fire out of there. And look at that, Nathan Edwards has been the smoothest through there. As Max Gilman, oh. Jensen Seal, Harvey Bacon, and JJ Plowman, that's your top four. But then the gaggle that we've been watching, Nathan Edwards fifth, Fraser Anderson sixth, seventh is Thomas Jackson, Oscar Roach in eighth, ninth is George Ralston, who got by Drew Davidson yeah. right at the very last. Is that, was, was that your intake of breath? That was, yeah, because <laughs> Drew, David, Drew Davidson was sort of, you know, ran a little bit wide over the grass. And, uh, yeah, Ralston decided uh, that it was now well it was now or never because it was the last corner uh, went for the lunge and uh, th th no contact made but uh, Drew Davidson then was uh, maybe a little bit surprised and ran wide but they all managed to cross the line f facing the right way great racing there, great racing from Intermax um, we were overwhelmed by the action in the C50 oh. Bambino uh, superheat a few moments ago weren't we, but a few minutes ago uh, we've got the mighty Bambino here coming up next. And, and, and one of these drivers will become, will make history this year. They will become the first official Motorsport UK British car champion in an electric cart. Uh, that's very significant for the future of the sport. And, um, you know, and, and so, yeah, so the Motorsport UK, uh, Darren Beavers, the kart championships of the two classes, the Coma Bambino class and the Mighty Bambinos, they're running for an official Motorsport UK British title this year. So, and, and has anybody in British motorsport become an official motorsport, whether it's the a MSA, RS, a national champion in an electric well, vehicle? We, we, of course, we've got Formula E, which is international. That's international. And the, the, That's the, the primary yes, so you've got the, electric you've got, uh, but, vehicle electric racing but vehicle but formula a british national racing. but a british national racing we haven't got an electric only national series have well, we we? Ha we have now we have now and and, and, a, and a young and a six seven or eight year old it's going to be the first the future of the sport in more ways than one will make a bit of british motorsport history i know we're seeing other technologies coming to the fore in motorsport in general that you know there's talk of hydrogen going to be um and the aco at le mans is, is, is always been yes. at the forefront of technology oh, and absolutely, other, absolutely. other materials for now the electric carts oh. are the future i think yep especially at this age level because of the uh the the lack of necessity to tinker with all the variables that a petrol engine brings they're becoming very popular and, and and you also look at like what uh, are we making cars road cars are they generally being made bigger or smaller these days bigger aren't they well uh, or, or or have you got more sort of smart cars and small little electric vehicles you know that people use you know on a on a daily basis like town cars and what have you which are almost a bit like you know just a, i think we're going to see you know Obviously, yeah, you, you mentioned the ACO at Le Mans, and for many years, uh, you know, manufacturers would trial new technology or new yeah. thing at, at, in, in sports cars and then it filter filters it down. down, doesn't it? You know, I'm wondering if we're going to start seeing more and more technology filter up from the world of, uh, of I, smaller electric engines, smaller, smaller power units. Well, if you think about this, right? Into, into sort of road If you think use. about this, you know, Karting Live TV yes. has evolved from RC Racing, racing TV. Yes. And you talk about filtering up. Yes. The battery technology that we're now seeing on these mighty Bambinos has been around the RC world with charging rates and uh -huh. power outputs and all of that. And I, w I wish we could get Johnny in from Mighty, who's very shy. He's very camera shy. Well, uh, or, well, or even very mic shy. Well, at the end of, uh, at the end of this he race... Because he I'm can give us a very, very technical insight as, as to... 
um, the sort of voltage power outputs, the ampage, would he the be battery out there on life. The circuit at the moment, or would he be? I'm not sure. He's he's possibly in his right. little van. All right, I tell you what. Uh, let's have a little look. Uh, uh, oh, guess oh. what? I've just been told by James, uh, our producer, who's who's also a big RC. Cause, uh-huh. uh, well, I tell you hydrogen what, I'm going to just uh, go and find Johnny. For RC us. now doing hydrogen. Oh, right, maybe are. Right, well, we'll see if you can get Johnny, yes. and I'll have a look, because we've got a standing start. So with a first and second place in the heats yesterday, we've got Ralph Martin starting on pole position. We had a fifth and a heat win for Felix Tandy, who will start alongside. Ollie West do, doing du- dual duties in the C50 Comas and the mighty Bambinos. He starts on the second row. Uh, Ollie had a second and a third place yesterday. Oliver Woodall had a third and a fourth. He starts in fourth place. And then in fifth, junior right, Henry Hill starts alongside in sixth. And then we've got on row four, row four Heath Smith, Maximilian Mikalski, Jack Harper and Jensen James Williams start on row five. Ava Garrett and Hugo Williams start on row six. Row seven is Nico Mohan and Hadley Jarvis. Etienne Gardner and Frank Pearson start on row eight. Row nine is Arthur Bath and Christian Doshi. And then we've got Kai Ogunsoy and Arthur Thompson rounding off the 20-cart uh, mighty Bambinos. Well, Henry mentioned the fact that we are going to crown our first electric national champion uh, at the final round of the kart championship. That's going to be at Fulbeck in Lincolnshire on the weekend of the 13th and 14th of July. The fifth and final round of the kart championship uh, is at that venue. So it'll be Fulbeck where history will be made. Right now, though, we are building towards that history with round two at Glanny Gores. Is Johnny coming in? Two. Two. He said that last time. Ah, well, he said that at Wilton Mill. He said, "Yeah, I'll come in at eat two. You're going to have to go." I'll go I will Shep- find him. No Shep- now that you mentioned the sheep around these fields, we yes. need a sh- shepherd's I'm, I'm, crook. I'm like a, I'm like one man in his dog. Take a shepherd's crook with you. Hip, hip, boy, hip, 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 hip. I've there, just yeah, mentioned me. Henry that the uh, the history that will be made will be made at fullback at the final uh, round. Wow, well, I mean, talking about modern technology uh, and uh, the. <laughs> Yes. Here's a misnomer. There's a the, contrast. The of cutting edge of modern modern technology. And, no, and, 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 one, and, of the, and uh, one of the most historic cars. I was about to say, at the, one, of the, one of the very first tracks yes. to evolve from that airfield at Fulbeck, yes. a, a, a former World War II airfield, yep. but has been a venue since I was racing in the 80s and 90s. Absolutely. And, and we're still racing there. We're about to go uh, and get on with this race, Henry, with a green flag about to be flown at the back of the grid, the mighty Bambinos. It all goes silent here, of course. The electric carts make no noise apart from tyre noise. We're going to have a red light start. The red lights go on, and they go off, and we are racing. And the front row getting away side by side, and it's the pole position driver, Ralph Martin, who gets the inside light and off along the Dragon Strait. We've got a couple of carts off there. Oh, the 11, is that the 77 of Nico Mohan? That's Mohan, Nico Mohan yeah. yeah. Uh, now, of course, you've got uh, Ollie West will have already had experience. I mean, Ollie West doing double duty. I'm just looking there. He would have uh, been out on the circuit earlier on for the other, the other Bam- uh, the Coma Bambino class. And uh, so he'll be a little bit... He's there in third position at the moment. More tuned in to the track. But yeah, he'll be. He, the track's you know, different, though. The track I mean, is yeah, different, yeah, yeah. But I mean, in terms of. It's, and it, ha- but it has gone colder. Has it? It, it has, it has uh, cooled down slightly. Um, still got, uh, you know, a mixture of blue cloud, uh, blue sky and uh, light cloud overhead. Oh, there's side a move. By side. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a, a move from Felix Standy. He's certainly got his dad's jeans flowing through his brains, hasn't right, we'll he? Have a look at, look that at again. this great move, opportunist move there. Out to the outside went Ralph Martin and Felix Tandy. Didn't need an invite, did he? Didn't need a written invite for that gap and mm-hmm. went through it as you would expect. And he leads across the line to lead on lap one. Yes, now he defends uh, and he's going to get freight train because everybody's gone to the outside line. Look at them lining up like at Talladega or Daytona in a NASCAR race. They uh, pick a lane and round the outside. That's going to be Martin. He's going to emerge in front. Great shot. Love Love, Love that, it. and yeah, it's, it's Martin uh, in the lead, Tandy Dak back to second, and it was just, yeah, like you say, M25, sometimes, you know, when you can see the traffic slowing down, you've got to pick a lane, yeah. and you've got to hope that your lane moves faster than the other lane, On. and that time it did. There's 67, Henry Hills, <laughs> down the inside of Ollie West, into the carousel, I really love that corner, downhill entry to it, the leader though, Ralph Martin, is ahead of Felix Tandy, is he going to do it again? Oh, Three wow. wide, oh, and Tandy off onto the grass, he's going to rejoin. He's going to rejoin and then slot in where he left off. And he's not going to lose. He has lost a few places there as Felix Tandy. 
and that was a coming together of drivers there and the yep. dri- I've oh. got to say the racecraft on these youngsters yes. is absolutely phenomenal there and that was that was, there was nothing deliberate there, Henry. That nope. was a racing incident, in my opinion. And that was inst- instinct took over. Uh, Felix yes. Tandy, he realised, if I try and turn in, we're g- I'm going to take everybody out. So I'm going to channel my inner Martin Skanker or John Welch or Will Gollop. Or Nick oh, Tandy. Or a girl with the grass. You know, <laughs> He's cha- in a Nick Tandy. Cha- channel, <laughs> channel my rally cross driver and uh, rejoin. Um, but He did. He did a really cracking job there. That has left the number 67 of Henry Hills off and away and into the lead and leading this race going into lap three and there's a there's an incident marshal uh running up dragon straight so we will uh catch up with why that incident marshal uh was going for a sunday morning jog or sprint uh i think yeah, everybody has managed to emerge i no, think so yeah i think so we've got Still a right. fastest lap of the race of 61.3 um from Ah, we'll uh, Oliver see. Woodall. Ah, Felix Tandy. Recovery drive coming through. Yes. A 60.9 for Henry uh, for Felix Tandy. We've got a cart off on the ah, left there. That's why the marsh, uh, the incident marshal was running. Now then, if we've got a yellow flag there and we had a we had a move for position yes. under yellow flag conditions as Felix <laughs> Tandy down the inside <laughs> of Ollie West. Excuse it doesn't me. come off there as they plunge downhill towards the carousel. Tandy back up to third. We're going to let the stewards sort that one out. We don't know how that's going to culminate uh, when it comes, the results are published. But right now, we've got uh, Henry Hills, Ollie West, Felix Tandy ahead of Ralph Martin, who was our early leader, now back in fourth. As they come through Devil's Elbow here and award us at the compression. And you have to remember that, some, you know, OK, overtaking under a wave yellow flag. All the drivers know what the flags mean. You know, that's, that's, that's a, a given. Even at however, six and seven and even, eight years even old, Even at yes. six and seven. However, um, not all those drivers would have been in a situation where they've been making a pass and, and, and there's been a yellow flag. It wouldn't surprise me if they say, OK, there was, there's going to be a penalty. You know, you're going to be, uh, you know, there's a penalty for overtaking the yellow, but they'll only do it once. Then they'll be more aware. You, you'll know the rule, but then it's putting the rule into action whilst you're driving, while the adrenaline's going. Yeah. At this age, okay, they'll, they'll fall foul of it once, but then they'll be more aware uh, uh, next time that, oh, okay, yes, I'm, you know, I know I can't do that. I know I shouldn't do it, but then, you know, the, 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 the racing driver brain will take over. And they're all gaining experience, aren't they, at this age? Yeah, I mean, so Felix Tanny's only in his second race weekend. Yes. I'm not sure about the others. Ollie West is gathering dual uh, duty experience in every round that he does out on the C50 coma, the petrol engine cart and the electric cart here at the Mighty E's, or the Mighty E's I will stop saying Mighty E's, it's Mighty E's you, you're, thinking of mighty, you're thinking of Mighty Minis, the Mighty I Minis might. the, the, the Mighty might. Mini 7 Championship you know, yeah, which is which Nick Tandy did I believe, Oh, I'm, really? I'm, I'm pretty sure he did, I, I, I might be wrong, certainly on the, on the short ovals was where Nick started out, whereas Felix here, starting at the uh, the entry level, turning Bambino right. carts. Yes. yes, turning left and right. Uh, first three together, across the top at the spoon, uh, tr- almost tripping over one another. There, Hills, West, and Tandy. They were kind of conjoined there. They weren't actually touching bumpers, which is something mm. you've got to get used to. Yes. They, and even at six and seven years old, it comes like in second nature, and they're just settled. They're so composed, yep. absolutely sort of together, just nestling the front bumper against, up against the rear bumper is commonplace in karting, but it's a bit unnerving when you're starting out and, you, and you're doing it for the first time. And even at that age, yeah, even they, more so. And that's why sometimes you do see little mistakes going into corners where somebody mm. sort of doesn't lift off because you've got to lift if you're the second driver pushing or you know touching the, fr- the front of the rear bumper of the cart in front of you you've got to break a fraction of a second before the driver or else you'll push them wide now there's, there's the yellow flag waving again and we it's might in have a good another, position have we got another incident for the uh, yellow flag we'll, we'll soon see yes, yes we have. there we go yeah. uh uh, but again, that time, again, the drivers instantly learned, OK, can't do that, single file. Yeah, and they did. They single file through Spoon, down the hill towards Carousel. We're inside of the last 90 seconds of this first superheat for the mighty Bambinos. And it is Henry Hills looking very composed as Ollie West pulls alongside there, going towards the, uh, I think that was turn seven. Mm-hmm. Now into Devil's Elbow. It remains the same. The Bambinos kind of space out because they've got a choice of lines. They're so yes. underpowered. They can choose what line they go through. Certain 
uh, certain parts of this track. That's the compression there. And then here they are to complete seven laps. We're inside the final minute, so it will be two more laps of racing for these cars. And look at Oliver Woodall and Ralph Martin. Fourth and fifth, there they are. They've caught the lead trio. On that last lap, they gained the uh, oh, fastest lap of the race for Woodall, a 60.283. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, they, you can spread out, but then you can close in uh, quite quickly if the driver's in front of you. Uh, go offline or start to... Oh, oh coming spin. together there. It was... The, we've mentioned them being through the spoon yep. and tripping over one another. And that's exactly what happened with Ollie West and Felix Standy. Felix Standy there just tripping over Ollie West and thumping him up the back. Felix paying the price there, though, and went through a 180, pointing the wrong way. He will recover. But Ollie West was uh, was lucky to get away with that. And here we've got Ollie West coming back and taking that second place back from, I think that was Oliver Woodall. And yeah. then everybody, oh, and there's Woodall coming it's, together again. It's getting intense, isn't it? Or is that Ralph, uh, that's Ralph Martin, actually. Is it Ralph the, Martin, the, is yeah, it? Ralph oh, Martin, so he's ahead pressure. of Oliver. Yeah, so uh, there, there is West uh, in second. And I think what it was, it was, as they were coming into Spoon, I think Felix uh, Tandy looked to the inside uh, and was trying to make a move. West closed the door and Felix realised, uh-oh, the door, it's, it, that, that move's not on, slammed on the brakes and just the, the rear end of the cart sort of rotated. Um, and now Ralph Martin's come through. It's Henry Hales has got a huge lead. I don't think they're going to catch Hales. They come out of Spoon, down towards the carousel, although Hales is defending when he doesn't need to. That's going to that's gonna possibly cost Hales is because West and Martin, they're still flat chat, and they're going to catch Hales. Hales is defending, thinking, I've still got yeah. the, all these drivers behind me. And that's... So these drivers are all, don't look behind you all the time. Don't look behind you all the time. Sometimes you do need to as we come into compression corner for the final time. Are they going to catch Hales? Uh, I think they're going to be eno there's going to be enough space for Henry Hills to take Just. a relatively comfortable win here in the first superheat for the mighty Bambinos. Who's going to finish second, though? That's the question. As Henry punches the air to acknowledge the checkered flag, it is Ollie West that hangs on to second. Rolf Martin third. Fourth was Oliver Woodall. Heath Smith fifth. Sixth was Junior Wright. The recovery of Felix Tandy brought him back to seventh. Uh, Maximilian Mikalski was eighth, ninth was Eva Garrett, Jack Harper tenth, and then we had uh, we will have as we wait for them to cross the line now. Jack Harper tenth, and then we should have Etienne Gardner, Christian Doshi, Hadley Jarvis, Hugo Williams, Nico Mohun, Kai Ergensoy, and Frank Pearson. Arthur Thompson, the final finisher, and uh, Jensen James Williams and Arthur the Bath. Bath. We lost actually. Yeah. That was one of the, the that, they were the two carts that went down, wasn't it, Jensen? James Williams and Arthur Bath. An interesting Hugo Williams, his older brother Harry Williams is uh, is now racing, you know, uh, across across the way in, in in the in the MSUK, you know, sort of British Championship, and uh, saw Harry Hugo's dad this morning, and it's uh, great to see that, yeah, you know, following in his older brother's footsteps, as it were. But um, yes, we are going to get uh, guest guest insight and co commentary. For the second heat, Henry, I like, love, I, 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 really admire your, uh, your spirit, <laughs> and, and your naivety. <laughs> but, but, uh, but Johnny, uh, he, uh, he, um, he promised us this at Wilton Mill. Ah, well, yeah. And he kept, he kept saying he was busy, which I undoubtedly believe he him, because he's, 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 he's servicing. He's the, he's the backup service to the mighty grid. Yes, yes. He is the, uh, he, he is mighty Bambino carts. Well, once they're all on the grids, that means he can't service them because they're on track. So he's well, going to be. I do, we, you well, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna sneak up out the sun from him, aren't we? Because oh, we're I'm, gonna I'm, send you out. Like, a, um, like an assassin with you, with, in the night. Yes, yes. <laughs> or an assassin in the bright sunshine. Have you got a balaclava and but, a, a bowler suit? I leave it at home, All generally. Right, okay. yes, it's, it's a uh, shame, that, because that would have come in handy there. I have used on a Friday. Sneak up with yeah. him. Have you got any camouflage gear with you? <laughs> from, out, um, from out of the bush or something, out yeah, of the shrubbery. Uh, um, <laughs> you are speaking to a Welshman. The camouflage is generally white and woolly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, you say, moving, yeah, moving only, on. only you can say that. I yes, can't say I'm that. Gonna... Um, what you leaving? I... You're... <laughs> Henry's had enough there. Be before he's sacked, he's going to leave. He's gone and resigned. Um, he's back. He's out for a pit stop. Um, we've got the Micromax out for their uh, super heat, the first of two uh, this morning, and uh, after two heats yesterday with two fine wins, fine wins by Alfie Mayer. The question is, who can who can actually compete and who can beat? 
Alfie Mayer today. He took two heat wins yesterday. That puts him on the pole position for the super heat. Uh, in second, uh, a second and a third place for Benedictus Masiokas uh, puts him alongside. And then we've got Buddy Hugo with a third and fourth. Uh, he will start in third place alongside Ro Logan Rolf, who finished seventh and second. And behind Logan, we've got Chloe McGill and Lewis Herbertson starting on the third row. Fourth row is Lewis Kakotti and Alfie Garrett. Fifth row is Albie J. Stubbs and Elijah West. And then we've got Toby Biggs and Xavier Ramsey. Row seven, Matthew Lilly and Dian Singh Pahal. Sebastian Crawford, uh, the current um, Warden Law Cart Club Bambino champion from 2023. He starts 15th, moving up to Micromax uh, this season. Jack Mellon's alongside Sebastian on row eight. Row nine is Jamie Walsh and Freddie Blackshaw, another driver moving up into Mike Max from Bambino on the 18th slot. And then we've got Victor Popacool, Jensen Walker, Travis Giddings and uh, Zach Andrew, Ruben Sagu, Rory Faulkner, and then rounding off 26 cars is Carter Jackson and Leo Hunt. It's a rolling start for Mike Max. So we'll get the carts being led around by pole position driver Alfie Mayer. Benedictus Masiokas, who we speak to in the paddock show, which you can see in the lunch break. We've got another. This is the final round of the first superheats. We've got another round of superheats coming before we break for lunch. So still plenty of time. So uh, we are we are going to have another round of superheats coming uh, up after this one. We get straight underway with the Honda Cadet second of their superheats. And of course, the superheats, the results of the superheats define the grid for the all important final. So it's a points-gathering uh, situation as well regarding championship as the results of the Super Heats are, are put together and then points are awarded uh, down the order to give us our grid for the final where double points are awarded for the uh, wins in the final. Uh, through the compression already and heading towards the final turn, the grid looking like it's gathered up. We're about to cross the line and go green. And we do... And it looks like we've got things underway with a green flag. We look to that Marshall's post and no false start flag there. So we are indeed racing. And into Spoon for the first time. It looks like it's Masiokas it could be leading. We've certainly got two zip carts. It is Masiokas that leads. The black helmet of Benedictus down the hill towards the carousel for the first time, Henry. Oops, sorry. Need to fade you up. Ah, there we go. That's only you, only me. No, uh, so, yeah, Masioka's a good start. Uh, Alfie Mayer, though, Masioka's and Alfie Mayer, we spoke to those two drivers last night. There's the move for third position. That is uh, Lewis Herbertson uh, side by side with the number 42, uh, the number 32 cut of Logan Rolf as uh, they head down the hill uh, through compression corner. But the two zip cart teammates. Uh, Trying to streak away and pull together. There's the move for third oh. place. That's a very good move there. The 42 of Alfie Garrett uh, passing Lewis Herbertson for third position. Rolf on the outside now of Chloe McGill. And McGill moving up there. We've got a battle for the race lead. Yeah, now I thought these two would work together. Mm. Because if these two are going to go side by side out of Spoon yep. and down the hill like that... That's they're going to they're gonna slow each other down. Yep. And before they know it, Alfie Garrett, who looked like he was fired out of a cannon oh, down the inside of yes. turn one there on uh, Lewis Herbertson, he absolutely had massive amount of speed. But here they are, side by oh. side, through the yeah, devil's Mayer elbow. Mayer puts a good move on. Uh, there. He's made it happen as well, a devil's elbow. Yep, yep. He's not supposed to do that. No, and, and uh, Benedictus uh, Masiokas was sort of moving over a little bit, but then obviously realised, OK, and just sort, of, just sort of got out of the way. But uh, this is... Uh, you know, Alfie May decided, look, I, I want us to work together, but we can only work together if I'm leading. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, he's so well, he... Let's play nice, but I want to be in charge of us playing nice. Well, Alfie likes, <laughs> likes being in the lead because yes. he proved that yesterday with yes. two heat wins. And uh, he's probably been unsettled there, having to for, uh, work behind his teammate. He's got to where he wants to be, which is leading this Mike Max field. Masayokas dropping off the back of him a sli in slightly. So proving that Alfie was indeed needing to get by because he felt as though he was being held up slightly by his teammate. Uh, I say that in relative terms, of course. Uh, and as I say that, as they hit the compression, the, Alf, the, yeah. the driver on a charge is Alfie Garrett in that orange cart with the, uh, the yellow yeah. helmet. And Buddy Hugo in fourth place isn't far behind either. Uh, Logan Rolf uh, in fifth position is a bit like the cork in the bottle, but although... 
McGill, uh, Dehan Pahal, Lewis Herbertson and Albie J. Stubbs are all sort of in that cluster of carts chasing uh, Logan Rolf. I, as I was, uh, I just popped out there. I did see, uh, 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 Log- I did see uh, Logan's mum and dad. Well, I saw, I saw uh, Gaz Tech from a distance. Um, you know, he's uh, thinning out on top. Is 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 Gary Rolf? Um, you know, it's not the only place he's thin these days. No, I'm joking, Gary. I'm joking, but. Uh, <laughs> um, it's a good job you know these people. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, the sort yeah. of things you come out with is like, yeah. I couldn't get away with that. You know, they take offence so, to me. So, so, sometimes I'm not sure if I can, but it all works yeah, well, out that's nicely. True. Ah, that's true. Technical defect for the number 46. That's Toby Biggs. Toby Biggs. Down, oh. Yeah, down the order in 13th midfield for Toby. That's going to come to an end. I'm not quite sure what the defect was. That's the 66 off. Uh, and that's, that's Leo Hunt who's been recovered to a safe place. He's up at the top end of the the track there the highest point at spoon curve just waiting for the field to clear that'll be yellow flag conditions into there so whatever that pass was yet slotted back in there yeah yeah, they realized recovery taking place but of course and that's the thing sometimes these drivers like why are you waving yellow flag there's nothing going on i'm gonna oh there it is yeah yes yes yes. didn't didn't you see the tractor hauling the car out the Uh, gravel trap i had a driver do that in, in front of the stewards. Yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. see the yellow flags. No, sorry, sorry. Uh, did you not see the tractor recovering? Go. Oh yeah, I saw the tractor. I like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I saw the tractor, but uh, yeah. didn't think anything of didn't it. Just think, thought, yeah, oh. yeah, just thought, oh, that's yeah. a tractor pulling the car at the gravel trap. That, yeah, that, 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 that won't cover the yellow flag. Will the, it? the tractor, the grass, or oh, the alpine. The alpine uh, looks at the delivery <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> no. So we're inside the second half of this first superheat for Micromax and that's a great scrap there the number 11 of Buddy Hugo Logan Rolf and Chloe McGill I think it was Chloe who's just uh who's just on the back end of Logan Rolf and I think she's actually gotten by she has mm. she's made that move stick and she's ahead of Logan Rolf and now having a bash at uh, Buddy Hugo so that's Chloe easy to pick out Chloe with her pink cart and pink helmet and a, a big thank you to Chloe McGill uh, for yes. that, because she's easy to pick out on track. Yes, any, any any prospective independent parent out there who's not running with the team and can choose what livery uh, they run with, uh, choose a very simple but bright simple. and distinctive crash helmet and yep. graphics kit, because Buddy Hugo, you can spot him a mile off. Yep. In fact, the International Space Station to follow this, because they can actually <laughs> see that yellow cart <laughs> from, from there, because it is bright. And there's uh, Logan Rolf, Dian Pahal, just challenging there and getting ahead of Logan Rolf. So Logan Rolf down to seventh. Oh, what well a Dean up the inside from Chloe McGill as well. Oh my goodness, Dean Pahal had momentum after he got. He was so encouraged by getting by Logan Rolf. He thought I might as well get by uh, Chloe McGill. And there's Logan Rolf following him through as well and ahead of Chloe. So Chloe from fifth down to I think that's seventh place now. Uh, yeah, uh, but in just uh, a couple of corners. In just a couple of corners, but uh, that could be that could become fifth place in just a couple of corners as well. Ah, and uh, Toby Biggs uh, is now being black flagged. Um, just to see whether Toby again. Oh, I can't think. I can't see anything wrong with the cart. I can't feel anything wrong with the cart. I'm not listening to that flag. I just realise his rear bumper's fallen off. And these youngsters sometimes do. You know, yes. there, there's a move. There's a move on. I think that was, uh, that was Dian Pahal going passing. ahead of Buddy Hugo. And look how much Buddy Hugo has been disadvantaged. He's about to lose another place to Logan Rolf, which he has. And Chloe McGill almost sneaking through as well. Yeah, and uh, Hugo closing the door uh, on Chloe McGill there and forcing McGill over the curb and just to back out a little bit. But luckily, McGill doesn't lose too much momentum as they head through compression corner. And uh, it's funny you mentioned, so I mean, apparently a driver's peripheral vision doesn't fully develop. A human being's ah, peripheral right, vision doesn't think. fully develop until the age of about 12 or 13. So sometimes you can see with the drivers got their heads down and focused. Yeah. It's harder for them to see, you know, at the corner of their eyes. Yeah. And, uh, yes. But we had a, yeah, we had, we had an actual medical professional uh, explain that to us. Uh, as uh, oh, they, we don't need proof of that. So, oh, that's Leo Hunt, who's got back on and has now come off again, yeah. and is now back on he's again. Now back on again because he's just getting trying to get out of the way. He's a lap down, just trying to get out of the way and not interfere with anyone else's race, um, but also try and get as many laps in as possible. And now, Buddy Hugh having a little look at Logan Rolf. While we can't take our eyes off this battle for what is fourth down to this seventh a, ahead yes. of them, Alfie Garrett has gotten ahead of Benedictus Masiokas for second place and pulled out a little bit of a gap just ahead of these. This battle will rage all the way to the flag. Two laps, two more laps to go. It's yes. Pahal, Rolf, Hugo, McGill. That's the four there. Fourth place down to seventh. And there's a move down the inside has gone. 
Buddy Hugh. Oh, sorry, Logan Rolf. Logan Rolf and Logan oh, he's Rolf off. Wide. Yes, he, oh, what happened there, Henry? Well, he, he tried to look to the inside. The door closed, and he sort of had to back off the brake uh, and, and sort of like under, he hit the curb, and that sort of washed the cart to the outside of the circuit, uh, where the grip isn't as great, and just sort of eased himself onto the grass. So that was Logan going for a move, it yeah. not working, and then rather than just so side swiping another driver and taking them out, just sort of like yeah, backed off and sort of sacrificed his own uh, uh, corner. That's, that's allowed. That, that's actually um, disadvantaged Dean Parhal as well. Yes, as we've got Parhal now dropping behind Buddy Hugo now up to fourth. Parhal now fifth, McGill sixth, Logan Rolfe recovering seventh, RBJ Stubbs, Jensen Walker, Lewis Herbertson, Elijah West, Xavier Ramsey, Matthew Lilly. That's the top 13. Out in front of this lot, Alfie Mayer, Alfie Garrett, and Benedict Masiokas. That's your top three. Just ahead of this battle for fourth, that's Buddy Hugo on the yellow card, being challenged by Parhal, taking that fourth place back, but then, then coming back at him, does Hugo. That's kind of textbook stuff, isn't it? This is the final lap, remember? So time running out. They're at turn six, seven. In, in the devil's elbow, they're coming together there. Yes, Pahal just looking at the inside and uh, backing out of it at the last minute. Did back out. Enough time. Chloe McGill looking like a challenge. She needed another lap or so before she could do anything about Pahal. However, Alfie Mayer has already taken the check and flag to take the first Micromax superheat. Alfie Garrett second, just under eight tenths of a second behind and then a further second and a half to Benedictus Masiokas, who takes third. Buddy Hugo fourth, Dean Singh Pahal fifth, Chloe Miguel sixth, Logan Rolfe seventh, Alby J. Stubbs eighth, ninth with Jensen Walker, then we had Lewis Herbertson rounding off that top ten. There's your order on your screen. And uh, looking back, apart from Toby Biggs, who uh, had to retire with a mechanical failure, Leo Hunt does finish the race. Carter Jackson just crossing the line there in 24th position. Uh, but uh, 25 of the 26 starters uh, finishing that race. And, and would, you be, would you believe it? That is the first round of Super Heats complete. It is. And I'm going to dive into the pits, Henry. Yes. And leave you in charge. Oh. So don't, 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 uh, press don't anything. break anything. Yeah, don't break anything. Don't press anything. Just talk. Um, so uh, we, we will wait now. Before we got underway uh, this morning... Uh, we did have a minute silence here at the circuit uh, in remembrance of Blair Mollison. Blair Mollison, uh, uh, a name and a face that is familiar to kart clubs and kart drivers all over the country. He, uh, at Glan, of course, he worked as a timekeeper and as a scrutineer. Also remember him very well from places like Raura uh, and what have you. We lost Blair um, it was a very short while ago, earlier this month, last month. Um, and of course, as it would be remiss to us while we're, while we're remembering uh, members of the karting community in the UK who we have lost this year, uh, Shelley Barrett, the wife of uh, Mick Barrett, uh, Mick Barrett Racing, and also uh, earlier the start of this year, Gerard Cox uh, from Project One Racing, and we're about to see... Uh, one of the last drivers to, 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 to race well, under Gerard's stewardship of Project One, Ryan White, uh, start from pole position. You can see him there, the familiar red, white and uh, green uh, Project One racing cart there. And um, yeah, it's just a, a, a big hello to uh, Maria and the rest of the Cox family who have been, uh, in, you know, Gerard was, uh, when, when I used to work at Landau, uh, every year we would run the Welsh Championships and we would have a raffle to raise money for the club. And uh, Gerard would turn up and he would always donate a crash helmet and he would always uh, put 20 quid into the uh, the raffle collection and say, there you go. So um, that was the kind of man he was. And uh, now we get underway. So this will be the second round of super heats honda cadet 34 drivers strong and uh it'll be ryan white leading the field kevin ivanov 
uh, on the outside of row number one. Archie Cannon and uh, Margaris Kavekis on row two. Ed Spain and Archie Loveridge on row three. Riley Blakemore and Kean Sullivan row four. Ralphie Branscom and Albie Smith row five. Luke McGall and Elliot Bork row six. Uh, Ricky McIntosh Jr. and Ella Dixon row seven. Ashton Horsepool and Ronnie Smart will start from row number eight. Oliver Ratton and Jack Wikes on row number nine. Luke Jardine and Daniel Borton will go from row ten. Now, ah, the last time I saw the name Wikes on a British karting grid was Brett Wikes. Uh, a British Do you think junior there's any relationship? Karting. I will go and find out. Uh, and uh, I will have a look. How long ago was that? Brett Wikes was the 2007 uh Formula Car, uh, BRDC Stars Tomorrow Cadet pull, pull Champion. Pull your zip up on your Anorak. I'll my uh, Brick yeah, America. Yeah. Um, yeah, we won't talk about the team that he was running with. because uh, that 2007. 2007. Right. He could was, be his son. That was, yeah, it, could be, it could be a son, and that, and that would make me very upset. <laughs> <laughs> Get away. You've seen lots of generations. No, no, I through. know. Yes, I know. But uh, 34 drivers. We will keep up to date with the individual, the Duffacy family yeah. battle. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Duffacy. Uh, is ahead of Reggie on this grid. Um, now, they, what one thing, you know, their lap times are sort of will, will be improving. Um, I'm just looking well, down. Um, the, let's, uh, yesterday, a Reggie had a 31st and a 32nd. Jerry yeah. had a 29th and a 31st. That's why he's slightly higher. Yeah, so Jerry is, uh, is one or two places ahead of uh, his brother. Every race. Now that will that will be upsetting Reggie, and that will be there's no greater motivation uh, to beat your teammates. And if your teammate happens to be a sibling, oh my word! Sibling rivalry yes. is an actual thing. It oh yes, and uh, there are the uh, the dads. Oh, well, some dads, some mechanics, uh, some. But uh, yes, they're the people that make it happen. Who will wait? And uh, in their position, I've got to say. Dan Ashton and the championship, they've got their, they've even got the mechanics behaving, <laughs> standing in a line, yes, waiting, waiting in the grid slots. Yeah, fabulous. That's uh, excellent work. Looks nice and ordered, doesn't it? Yes. Let's have a, that's, that's the shot I was looking for, James. Well done. Um, I love that. That, look how sloping that adverse camera is. Oh, yes. And, uh, yeah, so the, the thumbs up. Is that, uh, Looking back there in the grey top of the glasses, that looks especially like Tom Smith uh, from the uh, the Tom Smith International uh, Karting Team. Uh, now a, an estate agent. We'll have to see uh, either that or he's got a doppelganger. But uh, yes, now the drivers uh, are just left. And the mechanics only go on the circuit just in case an engine cuts out when they stall. Yeah, or right. if they need to be put back into the grid position. They're not allowed yeah. to adjust anything. And you don't want kids getting out of their car no, and no, restart no, to try, their yes. engines. And stuff. Or somebody trying, somebody stand there with their engine, you know, and you know, yeah, halfway up absolutely. the grid. Um, so that is why it's just, it's just a safety precaution. Uh, I, now, I actually, I'm a big fan of these standing starts. Yes, yes. Because we're in the entertainment business, Henry. Yep. And right now, the tension is going to mount. The engine revs will rise. The red light comes on. The engine revs rise a bit more. And the lights go out. And we are racing. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? I and love that. They watch Formula One. And it's like yeah, the Formula exactly One they watch. The same, yeah, yeah, you know, this is, this is our Grand Prix start. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I it's love not the possible in every starts. class because of the clutches and the yeah, life. That's right. And, and sometimes, you know, it, w it would decrease the life expectancy of a clutch in some classes. <laughs> in, in most classes, <laughs> yes. yeah. But for these, it's perfect. And it's, we, it keeps the speed slower as well, which means you get this great view of carts three, four wide, but without, you know, the high speed. Ah, I was going to say, but without the incidents as well. Well, we, we had a bit of congestion up at Spoon yes. there when everybody came together. That's kind of, they've all bumped themselves a bit of a gap. Ah. As we've got an incident at the carousel at the bottom of the hill. We've got a driver off on the outfield. That's the number that's, 86. It's, it looks like the 86. That's Harley Bradbury uh, Stretton, who gets going again. Ah, oh, good, he, good. He, he, was, he, wasn't he looked hurt. a bit he distraught, was, didn't he? Well, he was just upset. Yes. And, oh, there's another. That's one of, the, that's one of Paul James's carts, the Ambition uh, Motorsport number 44 of J.M. Prakash, who oh. is uh, gone for a, a, a drive in the scenery. Jane was, was up as well. He was well up the order. Uh, that's the leader, though, to zip cart uh, number 50. That leads Kevin Ivanov, leads for the second time into Spoon and then down the hill towards the carousel. This is where that incident took place on lap one. Let's see if we can get everybody through this sweeping left-hander and then again back 
up the other side of the valley into turn six through turn seven. The next right and left is called Devil's Elbow as they go through the left-hand bit and then into the compression over the brow there and it kind of drops away, doesn't it, immediately? <coughs> drops away and then through the compression and then here we are completing lap number two. Ivanov leads right on his bumper is Ryan White, right on his bumper is yeah. Archie Cannon. A little bit of a gap before we've got Magiris Kavekis, then Ralphie Branscombe, Archie Loveridge, Kane Sullivan, Albie Smith, Ricky McIntosh up into the top ten the first time today and then Riley Blakemore rounding off that top ten. Yes, and uh, so White wearing the number one plate because he is the reigning British champion. And I uh, wonder how long it's going to be before we see the official Motorsport UK British Championship for, for Honda Cadet in, in, in the kart championship uh, as, w as well. As, uh, All the kids' championships would be. Well, I mean, there's, the there's, there's a school of thoughts, you know. Darren, for, listen, for listen, Darren. <laughs> oh, Darren and Dan, Mr. Parker, there's a cart off. But, you know, this, you know, in terms of in junior racing, this is still a feeder series into Motorsport UK. But, yeah, it is. Yeah. But in, in terms of uh, Bambino uh, and maybe even cadet racing, uh, this is, a, you know, a great learning ground, uh, you know, and, and, a, and a great platform. Maybe a, maybe a future. This could be for all the, the, the British championships. We'll have to see, although, uh, you well, know, we've, we've got we've the, got British championship quality drivers here. There's yes, Ryan White just taking the lead, carrying the number one with the British champion here. Yes. And, uh, and certainly and certainly this is the biggest Honda. Gro oh, and uh, who's that? Uh, that was the number 56 cart. I is it the 56 or the 96? Sorry. Oh, that was Ralphie, Ralphie Branscombe. Branscombe. Mm. So he was in fourth place. He's now way down the order there. A recovery drive from him. Here comes the leader, who is now Ryan White, with the number 50 behind him, Kevin Ivanov. That's the 99, is it? Or the is that, that the 99? That's the 99. That's Albie Smith oh, uh, Albie being Smith. pushed off the side of the circuit. He so, had a uh, great weekend last weekend up in the northeast, and uh, not having a great weekend this weekend, is he? No, so well, Ryan White has the lead. Now we've got a, a breakaway of five carts. You can see the first four of them on the screen. Uh, Loveridge in fifth position. This is White, Ivanov, Cannon, Kovakis, and Loveridge. Down the hill. It's not uh, over, is it? No, no. It's uh, four, four minutes uh, and, fifth, and plus, plus a lap and change to go. Uh, the top five. But there's the move from Ivanov. Oh. White doesn't fight it, but White comes back at him. This will bunch everybody up together. Very cool and calm the way they race. The racecraft on these Honda Cadets are always, always impressed me. There, there was no squabbling. There was nope. no like sort of uh, you know wheel banging, unnecessary wheel banging. It was just allowed. He allowed him to go through, and then he just sat there, all cool and calm and composed. And here we've got Kevin Ivanov sitting composed on the rear bumper of Ivan White. Uh, sorry, Ryan White, as they go up and over the brow. Will he have a go? It's more than one line. He does indeed down oh. the inside. Uses a bit of grass as well. Excellent move. E Excellent absolutely move. textbook move. And defends a little in the middle of the track there, down towards the carousel. These two battling and squabbling at the front is allowing Archie Cannon, Magiris Kavekis and Archie Loveridge to take part in this battle for the lead. Yeah, so in Honda, it's all about, it's about, it's about losing as little momentum as possible. Uh, so uh, th this point a lap ago, White and Ivanov realised, OK, um, rather than go side by side, yeah, I'll, I'll concede a position here. Oh, I I've got an opportunity to get it back. And, uh, you know, rather than, uh, than fight it, they think, OK, this is the, the fastest way through this point of the race. Whether I'm first or second, this is going to help us long term because... Now they start to defend a little bit, and here goes no. White to the inside, side by side into Spoon Curve. Uh, new leader, Ryan White. But behind these five, you've got Kean Sullivan, Ralphie Branscombe, and uh, Ricky McIntosh all closing in as well. So uh, we've got a five-cart battle, Joe, but we could have an eight-cart battle very soon. Well, we had Ryan White leading out a Spoon, then into the carousel. That's we had Ivanov. Now. now we've got Ryan White back, and now we've got Archie Cannon about to take second place and begin to get involved with the party going on for first. This is a five cart, about to become an eighth cart, as you said, Henry. And this is, this is fantastic stuff because we've still got two minutes, two full minutes of, of track action before we even think about a last lap board as they head up towards the spoon along Dragon Straight, which isn't really a straight, it's a bit of a curve. Mm -hmm. And then through that curving entry once again. Ooh. Oh, and a little bit of a clash there as Ryan White slammed the door in the face of Kevin Ivanov. 
who paid the price, didn't he? He got his fingers trapped a little bit there. He tried the same move, and that's, that's the difference between four minutes plus a lap to go and less than two minutes that's plus right. a lap to yeah. go. Yeah, you good know, point. A couple of laps ago, he got the, he got on the grass there and made a great move. Uh, Ryan White didn't fight it this time. It's like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. And that was the, the yeah, the the, uh, the results. And Ryan White just took, he, he, he was just, on his line. Yep, he, he, just, he was he taking just, the, the conventional line through there. This has allowed Ryan White to break free. The biggest gap we've seen between first and second, the whole race. It's about half a second there. And it's Archie Cannon now who takes up the cudgels of that yeah. challenge for first. Bagheeras Kavek is through in third. And then we've got the recovering Kevin Ivarov, having had that door slammed in his face, he's now wanting to come back into the play. Yes, and, uh, the, you know, at the start of the race, there's give and take. And as the race progresses, there's less give and more take. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, But you can see that uh, that that lead that Ryan White has, as, as they cross the start-finish line, you said this is the biggest lead that we've seen all race. And now, it's gone. after that, it, it's completely gone. It's gone. I suspected it would, and it has. And it has. And now we've got a lead group of eight, because they're all black livery cart of uh, Ricky McIntosh Jr. in the number 33 is just about done enough to tag on to the back and as we come oh. to 30 seconds to go we've got two laps and back markers in front of us oh it's, good, uh, goodness it's, goodness yes indeed so, you know what we, we we're, all, we're all about the drama and intrigue here in any kind <laughs> of motorsport but none more so than the kart championship and, and we it's, have, uh, you know a run to the flag with an eight kart train is is good enough but let's just add in the mix a few back markers into the final two laps it's going to be reggie defacy and james pearson who are the two drivers they're going to catch now if they catch the two drivers going down dragon straight that's great if they catch the two drivers you know anywhere else on the circuit then these eight drivers are going to have a real problem. Well, Let's see. What's going through Ryan White's mind? He knows he's got a train of carts behind him. He can see the bat markers coming up. Now, the bat markers are doing their oh, job. Oh, I think they could get him on the straights. The, the, the bat markers the are bat, battling. No, the, the bat, bat markers, markers are side by side. They're allowed to do that. They're having their yep. own race. Ryan White has to sort this out. Now, he's down through. He's, he's past one. Yep. He's got one more to go. He hasn't been held up that much. The second place cart of Archie Cannon there just sitting behind him. And down the inside, he has to kind of force oh, his way by the back marker. Oh, dear. The number 24, they're getting mixed into oh. this. We've got a spinner. It's we've a 15 got, cart. We've got the 15 of Kavegis going off. We've got Archie Loveridge going off. And the number 24 there, Reggie Duffersy, playing a part in the outcome of this superheat. Yes. And I've lost track. I don't know whether it's, it is the checkered flag. Yes. The checkered flag flies. It's Ryan White who takes the third win of his, after, of his weekend and takes the second superheat. Archie Cannon second. Ralphie Branscombe third. We've got Kevin Ivanoff fourth. Kean Sullivan fifth. Ricky McIntosh. A disconsolate. Yep. A disconsolate. Magiris Kavek is there having to walk to the Marshals post and keep safe. At the very last, their incident and drama are plenty in Honda Cadet as ever. Now, I, I, I think that if we, you know, when we look back at that race, when you look back at it, you'll see as they came down the hill towards the carousel, Ryan White sat behind the number 24 oh. cart of Reggie Duffersy. He didn't make a move up to the inside because what that would have done is that that would have uh, Duffersy would have moved offline going to Carousel would have opened the inside line for all eight of those leaders to go through so Ryan White sat behind going into the Carousel and then just sort of moved Duffersy out a little bit to take the to, to, to lap him coming out the Carousel and that put Duffersy on the inside line going up the hill I, I, I totally accept what you said, but that is the devious mind of a Baudet speaking there. <laughs> it's a, it's and I want to know. I want to know. I'm going to find out. I, I know Paulie's dad uh, <laughs> relatively well. Ryan, we know relatively well. I'm going to ask. We need to remember to ask Ryan. Yeah. Is that what he was thinking? Because that is utter brilliance. If, 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 to yeah. be as clever and in, as intelligent as I'm not going to make this move. I need, he needs to, in a hurry, get past the bat marker. When he chooses to get past the back market, to disadvantage the carts behind. I wonder, yes. We that will. is very, very clever. We will ask, but it just He's looked, experienced enough to be as devious as you, Henry. But, but, it, but it just looked to me as though he had the opportunity to go to the inside coming down the hill uh, towards the carousel, and he didn't. 
uh, and, and he waited, and uh, I, that, that made me think. Mm, he's he's thinking about. I need to get past, and, and then and then make sure the door closes behind me, uh, putting the lap driver in an impossible situation. However, that is the, that is the way the car is. We will find out. So that, there's there's two missions for today. <laughs> One <laughs> is is to find out from from Ryan White and his dad uh, if that was the tactic, and the second one is to get James from Mighty. Uh, in here to, yes. to commentate. Yeah. R- right. Ryan's, the, Ryan's the, the driver to talk to there. Paul won't have a clue. He'll be proud of Ryan. Um, very much proud of, of, of Ryan's drive there. But that was action-packed Honda Cadet. And, and you know what? That concludes their super heats for Honda Cadets. That's the grid formed. We'll wait for the, uh, the results to become official before we have any idea of the grid going into the final. But that was just the super heats. The final where there's a trophy and a podium position in play and maximum championship points, that's when the intensity rises. And that's the same for all of our classes here this weekend. Uh, round two at Glanigores, uh Round two of five, uh, if I might add. Uh, we go to Warden Law at the end of April up on my part of the world. I only live two miles from Warden Law, so that's ideal. I'll be able to sleep on my own bed. Uh, wow. for that one so I'm really looking forward to that uh, 28th and 20, uh, 27th 28th of April for the round three we then go across to the northwest coast for Rowra just on the edge of the Lake District there yeah. Rowra north of uh, north part of the Lake District just south of Carlisle uh, 22nd and 23rd my birthday weekend actually oh uh, yeah it's a big, f- yes. big 4 the big 4 yeah, yeah, I thought I th- yeah. You know, yeah I thought or is that it was big a big 3 or I can't never remember that one um, uh, <laughs> so Rowra for round f- uh, three um, sorry, round four. Uh, and round five, we then make history. As you mentioned, Henry, we go to fullback to round the season off. Yes. And that season will be rounded off for the CART Championship. We've got a special MSUK event for Bambinos. It's the uh, and it's the Bambino, I think it's called the Bambino special event, actually. Um, that's going to be phenomenal because that's happening at PF. Yes, PF International. PF's yes. going to be a fabulous track for those Bambinos. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, and having watched, I mean, that's, it's, it's, yeah. Fast, flat, you know, well, well not flat, but it, it's very fast. It, it lends itself to great slipstreaming racing, and um, you know, it's going to be a fun, it's going to be a great showcase uh, for the kart championship and the you know, the level that they've got the drivers to. Just putting in a lunch order. Well, it's it, it, quite important. Most, mo- most important part of the day. Uh, we're going to pick up the field with Daniel Hartley leading Bella Fairclough around. That's the front row. Mia Simpson and Alfie Forrester on row two. Tyler Davis, Ellis Daly, row three. Then we've got Thomas Butcher and Eddie Stewart. Ewan Stevenson, Zach Kane, Laurie McVeigh, Jack Johnson, Ethan Bath, Riley Mason Lewis, Sophie Caldwell, Leighton Kelly, and Oscar Pitt rounding off the grid. Now, uh, Oscar this... Pitt was, was, was a disqualification. Uh, uh, no, that, that, that is the that is. Oh, sorry, I've got the wrong. I've got the wrong grid up there, Henry. Ah, uh, uh, disregard what I've said there. Junior Primo Championship. Uh, well, it's, uh, there it's, it is. There. Yeah, yeah Hartley awesome. and Faircliff, Simpson and Davis, Forrester, yeah. Stewart, Stevenson, and the rest. They come into the tram lines. Lights are out. We're off and racing. Can Daniel Hartley continue his perfect weekend so far? He had it all his own way pretty much yesterday. Had to fight his way back from a tyre gamble this morning and uh, to, to win out there. But as we head down the hill into the carousel for the first time, uh, up the hill now we go through turns uh, hang on a sec, turn five, six, and then down the hill. Devil's elbow already Daniel Hartley stretching away from uh, Bella Faircliff and uh, Maya Simpson. That was Faircliff who lost the side pod earlier, so her left side pod is now fully attached and uh, hopefully bolted together. She'll be wanting to maximise the yes. result of this second superheat after that DNF in the uh, in the first one. Daniel Hartley has been the class of this junior primo field. Um, at round one at Wilton Mill, and now here he's continuing in that vein at uh, GYG. He really is hard to beat for the rest of this field. And uh, remember, this superheat was the second race of the day. Yes. And we had a mix of wet and dry tyres. None of that anomaly here. Everyone now very much settled on the dry tyre. Slick tyres all around, so we're not going to have that. But here we have Daniel Hartley 
Look how on the limit he is. Yep. The cart dancing on the exit curbs of that final turn here. He has a look over his shoulder. There's nobody there. Bella Fairclough is is what? what, what what's the gap there? Let me just check that. I've got the wrong screen up. It's 1.1 seconds. Already, it's over yeah. a second already. Um, we haven't got Oscar Pitt on the circuit. So we were looking at there was an exclusion earlier on. I wonder what that was for because he did so well in the first super heat this morning. Uh, on wet tyres, and uh, maybe we can go and I'll go and try and find Nathan Chafer, uh, his mechanic. Ah, oh, that's true. That's Nathan's the, uh, cart, isn't it? Uh, yeah. 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 So uh, why he's not out there? Um, well, 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 we can't. We won't speculate. But we'll concentrate on what we have got. We've yeah. got Tyler Davis with the bright yellow rear bumper closing in on Bella, Bella Flaircuff and, and Maya Simpson, and, and I have to say that this goes back to the first race. Uh, the first heat yesterday, these were the first four, Hartley, Fairclough, Simpson and Davis. Alfie Forrester, the Bradley Shepherd racing driver, is next in the number 79 cart. Then it's the racing commentator, <laughs> Eddie Stewart, followed by Zach Kane, Thomas Butcher, Ethan Mark and Ellis Dealey. But, but really, this has been the story of the weekend in Junior Primo. Hartley leading... The two, the two girls chasing him, yep. and then Tyler Davis trying to, you know, get fight his way onto the podium. Yeah, it is, and it, it, my, I've got to say, Maya Simpson and Bella Fairclough. Bella Fairclough was the driver of the day at Wilt Mill in round one. With she had a poor uh, time qualifying, so that put her down the order, and her drive through in the heats and then subsequently on into the super heats was just the order of the day. It was an absolute mm. joy to watch the way that Bella made her way through this, uh, this junior primo field. Uh, she's, she's having a better weekend apart from that super heat disc, uh, DNF. However, if she can maximise her pons hole, and by doing that, she'll need to finish here. Second place is the best she can hope because Daniel Hartley is wow. absolutely on fire there at the front. Yes. And you can see that. You can see that with the body language of Hartley's cart, the way he's got it dancing over the curbs. Mm -hmm. And you, there's Bella Fairclough. You can see Bella's body language, Maya Simpson's body language, yep. Tyler Davis's body language is they are flat out, Henry, they trying are, to catch him. They're pushing. Oh, and uh, that is Ellis Dealey, sadly. Uh, the Ambition Motorsport cart has got a long... That's impressive. He's decided to park a long way off the prepared surface. I think he might have exit stage left at a rate of knots, potentially not facing the correct way, and uh, has then righted it. But that is a long way off. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a cart that far off. No, 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 no. Yeah. That is, but plen uh, plenty of runoff there. Plenty of runoff. Good, good spectating. Um, now, you're thinking Daniel Hartley's got this one in the bag. No, he hasn't. And, and his team, they won't be just saying, right, don't touch the cart. Just put fuel in it and keep it going. You've got to keep adjusting the cart ever so slightly to take account for the increased or decreasing levels of grip on the track, which depends oh. on the weather as we see a move. Oh, is that under yellow? It is. It it's a is, yellow flag it is. situation. Oh, here comes Maya. Oh. Maya Simpson off in similar fashion there. Ah, and yeah. that was all under yellow flag. The yellow flag. Now, can you see the yellow flag as you come up the hill? Yes, you can. Of course you can. We wouldn't have it any other way. And uh, I think, yeah, unfortunately, it looked like Tyler Davis had committed to the move and Simpson was on the outside. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Simpson was on the outside and just understeered. Well, uh, again, that's why we have stewards. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's not our job. That's why we have stewards. Yeah, we're the, ent we're the, we're the entertainers, yeah. The, 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 but the, the, the race has settled down. Hartley's gone. He's gone to three-second lead from Bella Fairclough, who's now a very, very lonely second place. That's the uh, the kind of green... What, what, is that a cerise, it's, you would say? It's, it's a sort of a turquoise. Turquoise, yes. Tur uh, turquoise, yes. Yes, turquoise. Tyler Davis in yes. third. He's about to be joined with a bright yellow bumper of Tyler Davis. Yes. He's about to be joined by Alfie Forrester, though. Now, there's a great battle developing. That is for... uh, Stewart in the 45. That is Stewart, Butcher and Kane. Right. Is that Eddie, Stu is that Eddie Stewart's second in that trend? So, Eddie Stewart has fallen foul of Thomas of Butcher. Thomas Butcher. Mm -hmm. Thomas Butcher ahead of, of Eddie now. And Eddie's under pressure as they cross the line. Butcher fifth, Stewart sixth, Zach Kane it is trying to get on terms with Eddie Stewart. He wants that sixth place from Eddie Stewart, but Eddie Stewart wants that fifth place from Thomas Butcher. Let's see how that pans out with two minutes to go. And you can see, yeah, you can see Butcher really working the steering wheel of that number 54 cart, uh, you know, as uh, they slow down under 
breaking for Spoon Curve. But, uh, yeah, Davis and Forrest. Oh, oh. And, oh, Eddie Stewart put a wheel on the grass. <laughs> and the number 23, Zach Kane, was simply, he was focusing on the, oh, the x cart He's trying, he's, he's bogging down yeah, on the wet. Yeah, you can see the rear wheel yeah, spinning. spinning away. Can he get it going? Can it, he keep it going? No. It, no, he can't. He's bogged down. He, he's grounded out, actually. And that was on the outside of Carousel. Yeah, and that was, he was basically, you saw Eddie Stewart, he put a, a rear wheel on the grass. Uh, but then, but then, sort of caught it. Kane was so focused on the rear of Eddie Stewart's cart, chasing him, that he simply followed him as Eddie wandered off the track. Kept his foot uh, in. Uh, and, uh, yes, whereas uh, Eddie was able to gather it together. That fraction of a second difference of uh, suddenly, oh, Zach Kane going, oh dear, uh, I'm, I'm off, and that was it. He was off. Kept his foot in. Eddie Stewart now has found a second wind, and coming back at Thomas Butcher. Meanwhile, up at the front, three and a half seconds. Daniel Hartley crosses the line. It'll be another two laps, actually, because it was about 45 mm. seconds on the clock there. He's lapping in the 42, so he'll get round before yes. the time runs out. So I'm this is keep his nightmare. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> right on the cusp, isn't it? Yeah, there's Bella Fairclough. There's Tyler Davies, Alfie Forrester. Forrester, I thought Forrester was actually going to catch Tyler Davies. That hasn't happened. And just behind these two, as once mm -hmm. again, they trick us into believing that there's going to be a challenge yes. by coming together there. And there's that battle just beginning to settle down. Now, Thomas Butcher just dropping Eddie Stewart off his rear bumper. Yep. So things beginning to settle down. We're getting towards the final few seconds as Daniel Hartley comes to the end of his lap. Yeah, he crosses the line with five seconds on the clock. So yes. another two laps of racing. There we go. And uh, so Davis... Is it defending? He's aware that uh, Forrester is there. He checks over his shoulder, adjusts the, the radiator flap to let the engine breathe a little bit more, or to put the flap down. To that, you know that gives the engine more power. But it, you can't do that all race because the engine will overheat. So you know that he is the okay. I'm not. You know, I've got to be flat chat to the end. Uh, just hits the curbing there in the middle of the carousel, but the cart doesn't uh, break away from him. And, it uh, actually shows me how cold it is out there, Henry. Yes. In our palatial splendour of the commentary box yes. here at GYG, those those radiator flaps are very rarely up. Yes. In yeah. the up position, they're covering the radiator to get heat into the engine, pretty much the whole time. There's the final lap board, hard to miss for our drivers, and it'll come as a welcome uh, sight for Tyler Davis, who's got Alfie Forrester glued to his bumper. Time and opportunities running out for Forrester to challenge. Into Spoon, that was one opportunity gone. Tick the box down the hill towards the carousel. Here's another opportunity to overtake. And a bit of defensive driving from Tyler Davis in the turquoise cart. The big yellow bumper there, hard to see. Hard not to see, I should say. I'm sure you can see that from space. Great colour scheme on that cart. Bold colour, yes. again, being easy for us to pick out. Yep. Devil's elbow coming up now. And then into the compression. Daniel Hartley takes the chequered flag to take the second superheat. Oh, there's a move. Oh, to make him off. Oh, my goodness. Right at the end there. Bella Fekluff second. And then Alfie Forrester there taking the move. Did that come at the that final turn? Fi final corner. He, wow. Uh, Brief. Yep. And, and again, so Tyler Davis didn't defend that. If that was the last lap of the final, not the superheats, then... You can, uh, as sure as eggs are eggs, uh, then uh, Davis would have been uh, moving across to defend that. But, uh, you know, this is this is the superheat. This is now get all deciding grid positions for the main event. You're getting me excited saying stuff like that. <laughs> as sure as eggs are I eggs. mean, the racing's been phenomenal, hasn't it? Yeah, phenomenal yeah. in it, all it of really our cases. Uh, it, it really has. It um, really has. And, and you know, I, without, I'm going to touch wood because obviously there have been little incidents, but... Yeah, the majority, no, you know, the, the yeah, clean, absolutely. aggressive, clean the, racing. You're right, Henry. That the incidents we've seen, mm -hmm. I would say, are racing incidents. Yes. When we're racing at these speeds and in, in, in such close proximity, you are going to touch. You are going to bang wheels. Yep. What we haven't seen is any silly moves. Yeah, we've I mean, seen none whatsoever, in my opinion. No, and of course, you know, we're, we're, we're watching the screen. Dan so Ashton's uh, opinion might differ. Yeah, Dan, <laughs> I mean, and I'm sure there have been, but there's uh, certainly the majority of the time we're look, we're obviously focused at the front of the field, you know, the, the, the leading runners. Yes. Uh, where you could argue that each pass means more. And, you know, I could probably count the amount of sort of, I would say, rash moves you know, on maybe on, on, on one hand, easily, of the whole weekend. Um, you, you know, there's been a couple of moves that haven't worked. There have been, but, but really, there's been nothing silly 
where a driver think, do you know what, you could have waited, or, or like that, that was never going to work, and you know that there's been a couple of situations, maybe apart from one junior road taxi, where you're looking at it thinking, this is an accident waiting to happen, and uh, and it hasn't happened because the drivers have you're, all behaved. I've touched, I've touched. I hope you're clutching wood as I, you I, see I, I am, because <laughs> this could all go horribly wrong. I know. Curse the commentator. We could be at seven o'clock the, tonight. The, the, the minute that the commentator says, do you know what, the drivers have been really, really sensible. good. Yeah. Driving stands have been really good. Well, the Cobra Bambinos are up next. So, uh, oh, the ba- and the Bambinos have been the the oh, leading lights, absolutely, in terms of how it should be done. Absolutely, this uh, I'm really looking forward to the uh, the car championship special event yes. at PF on the sixth and seventh of July. Um, that's going to be um, absolutely awesome racing from the Bambino classes. Uh, we get them underway. It's the, the grid is formed from the results of yesterday's uh, heats. And with a second and a first place for Ollie West, he's on the pole position with Noah Wicklow with a win and a fourth puts him alongside. Second row of the grid is Ernie Wade and Jess Bailey. We've got Freddie Purnell and Lewis, uh, Louis Wilson, isn't Louis it? Louis Wilson, Louis, yes. I must get that in my head. Louis Wilson on the third row. Arthur Bowers and Logan Hodgetts are on row four. Uh, Benjamin Shivar and Henry Hills are on row five. Then we've got Wraith Owen and Arlo Gamble, John Stevens and Hendricks Fallat, Max Armit and Jack Swong. Hopefully Jax won't have a, as torrid a time as he did in the first of his Super Heats with yeah. retirement. Uh, Riley, uh, Riley Aston Wilkins and Will Wainwright share row nine. And then we've got uh, Calman Simon, Max Centelaire on the 10th row, 11th row. And rounding off the 22 cart field is Santo Amico and Nauman Faison. I would be watching for number 12, Calman Simon. We saw him lead the opening lap of the first heat race yesterday before uh, a mechanical May lady uh, sidelined uh, the number 12 driver. Um, so he's a driver that is certainly out of position. Now, why are all the Bambino mechanics and parents wearing orange? whereas the uh, Honda Cadet parents and mechanics aren't. The answer is, well, these are six- to eight-year-olds, and uh, incident marshals and pushers are technically allowed at the side of the circuit as, as, as runners. Uh, on the infield? On the infield, All yes. Right. yes. As, rec- as kind as, of taking the place uh, yes, they, re- they, as recovery marshals. They can, uh, you know, or if, you know, they, they can come onto the circuit, you know, they can't I- interfere, or, or if the driver goes off the track, then it's only the instant marshals that can put them back on. However, the, the, the dads then can come on to sort of, you know, get the driver up and out of the way, uh, you know, and uh, console, cajole, and, uh, and then kick the cart. Green flag at the back of the grid. The red lights come on. The engine revs rise. The engines are rising. It's a petrol engine, C50 Coma engine on these Bambinos. And away they go with Ollie West leading into turn one and Noah Wicklow slotting in behind as the field make their way along the curving Dragon Straight, all the field making it through Turn 1. Let's see if anything changes in three carts, breaking away at the front of the field, line astern, over the brow into Spoon for the first time. Ollie West it is. Remember, Ollie also driving the mighty electric Bambinos later on today. So gathering data and information because they're on the same tyres, Henry. They're yep. on the, the LeConte all-weather tyre, which is a treaded tyre for all conditions. Correct. Yes, and yes. Uh, Ollie West gaining a lot of experience. And there's a change for second. And I think that's the 77 of Jess Bailey there. It was. And that's Jess yep. Bailey moving up the order and into that second place. So that was a that was a pretty textbook. E- it, yep. Jess made it look very easy. And I've got to say, looking at those three, that there's, it's been a textbook opening lap for the lead trio because there goes West... Uh, Bailey and Wicklow across the line and behind them is a one second gap back to Louis Wilson. Ah, it's actually Ernie Wade. It's the 11, not ah, the 77. Ah, it's the 11, not the 77. I, my eyes were tricked as yes, well. It's, yes, uh, You know, I mean, yeah. Uh, your 40-year-old eyes, Joe, uh, uh, and my 40-year-old <laughs> your, your 22 eyes. Your 22-year-old. My 22-year-old eyes, yeah. they're not quite as uh, uh, as good there, but it is the number 11 of Ernie Wade in second. And, oh, uh, challenging. Challenging, yes. Challenging at the front there. If James could, if James could, yep, yeah, we've got them now. We've got them now. We uh, This is not over. Ollie West has had uh, a pretty good weekend. And Ernie Wade now on his rear bumper. What, what better time than to hit the sweet spot of your setup than in the race before the main event? Ernie had a fourth and a second yesterday, Henry. 
So he has been a front runner, yep. no question, with a second place in yesterday's heat. Uh, I'm not quite sure where he finished in the uh, the heat earlier, the super heat earlier today. He was there or thereabouts, that. absolutely there or thereabouts. And as I look down, Calman Simon has uh, moved from the back of the field, from 20th on the grid, already up to 7th. Uh, Noah Wicklow, sadly, going the other way. He's dropped to 5th, and that's the lowest that we've seen Noah uh, pretty much all weekend. But uh, yeah, early ways, and it's side by side for third place between Bailey and Hodgetts. Oh, Look wow. at this, wow. and uh, this is the Bambino action. As uh, is that Wicklow dropping down? It is Wicklow dropping down, and that's didn't a problem. Wi didn't Wicklow slow at the last in the last superheat? Mm, didn't like, he? Didn't he end up going slowly he, and dropping no, off? He, he, no, he was he was leading. Am I think someone second. else. Yeah, that was Tom uh, in, That's uh, right. Yes, yes. Sorry, same but, colours, but red this, and black. This is why. I mean, this is the British Bambino Championship, and it is, you know, if anyone was doubting, you know, back there in uh, the, those armchair enthusiasts that uh, you have many of in this sport, uh, you know, armchair spectators, armchair race directors, and uh, armchair officials, you know, if anyone was doubting why the British Bambino Championship uh, should come here, this should, uh, you know, allay those doubts. Excellent racing, excellent, excellent driving, and here's Calm and Simon, Simon, you did now mention him. From at the head of that train. Yeah, with that Etten Senna replica helmet, oh. that uh, yeah, it certainly makes my heart uh, pound when I see that. Any on anybody really, yes. it sort of brings back memories of uh, my hero and a lot of other people's heroes. Can't believe thirty years. That's how old I am, really. Yes, thirty years. Here 30, we go down the hill. Years. It's the Senna replica helmet of Calvin Simon that uh, is in that sixth place, probably up to fifth now. Being challenged there though, it is fifth that. He's clinched, and a big challenge there from, that's not Shivar. Shivar is be behind the number, I'm trying to that, see what no, number is that, is that. Owen in the 78, no, it's the 40, uh, it is the 70, oh, 78. Is it the 98 of Arthur Bowers? Uh, it could be the 98 of Arthur Bowers, actually. We're going to find out now. We'll find out very, so, very shortly. Ollie West leads, Ernie Weird second, Logan Hodgetts, Jess Spearley, Calman Simon, Arthur Bowers yes. it is, then Shivar. Shivar's in the green cart, yes. alongside Bowers. Everybody slotting in behind Bowers, and that's going to disadvantage Shivar, isn't it? And, and yeah, it is. But you've seen so. Salmon, uh, sorry, Simon has worked his way. He's passed the entire group, but he's not passed the entire group because his cart is so much faster. He's picked his place, driven well, track position, uh, and but now he can't pull away. Yeah. So and that, that that's a great. It, you know, that's a great example of the, the parity, you know, relative parity of the cards. Because, yeah, if a driver drives well, oh, and if a driver gets on the grass, like the 21 oh, of Will, Will Wainwright. Right. Yeah, coming through the order from down the air, down the field as well. You, you can pick your way through and gain a lot of positions by smart driving and fast driving, but then you can't just drive away from the rest from that group. Uh, West, Wade, Hodgetts, Bailey lead. Then this is the battle for fifth. Great battling here as we've got... The first four across the line. And then the, the next lot, Simon, Bowers, Shivar and Purnell. Let's have a look at the gap between Bowers and Shivar. It was 76 thousands of a second. And yeah. once again, Will Rainwright getting involved as well. And Freddie Purnell has just passed all of them. And he's now trying to go around the outside of Simon up the hill. Purnell got two of them going through turn number one. He's on the outside line. Well, he's on the middle... <laughs> He's in the middle lane of a three-way of a three-line highway. Incredible! And here comes Pennell down the hill. No, this is fantastic racing. It is. Fant it, it, it slots back in behind Simon into the carousel. Benjamin Shiva right on his bumper as well, and side by side out of the carousel. Will Wainwright is wanting to be involved with Arthur Bowers. He's eager to get by that cart in front of him. Wainwright in the bright yellow with the bright yellow bumper. And there's Shivar down the inside of Simon. Oh, wow. And that's Purnell, who'd gotten by Simon, took Shivar with him. They're three wide into the compression and out of the compression. It's going to be two wide through the final turn. Simon on the inside, Shivar on the outside. I'm not sure how that settled in. It's Purnell, Simon, Shivar, Bowers, Wainwright, Stevens, Wraith Owen in 11th. They're still battling up the straight. Well, if this type of racing continues with, without any incident for the next 90 seconds plus one lap, then, uh, uh, you know, the race director and the parents, they, you know, give those drivers a round of applause when they come into uh, Park Ferme because they are showing, you know, you know, this is the British Championship. The drivers have stepped up. 
that the drivers are showing British championship oh. calibre and aggression as well. But, uh, you know, elbows out, no contact. And, this, yeah, Calm and Simon uh, makes they, the move. And, y- y- you know what? I was about to say that's brave. But I'm, I'm not sure it is brave. It's just lack of experience because these kids don't know any other. This, they, this, what, what do you mean I can't pass there? It's of fearless. course, I, I've just proved I can. It's, as Calm and Simon just went yes. side down the inside. Just look at this gaggle. Now, Shiva was two carts back. He's made his way back up to the rear bumper of Will Wainwright. Yes. And as they cross the line, Hodgetts now leads Ollie West, by the way. We've had a change of lead. Ollie West down to second. Ernie Wade third. Jess Bailey. And then this battle here. Simon, Pennell, Bowers, Wainwright, Shiva, Stevens, Wilson, Owen, Henry Hills. The number 31 is the last cart. Wraith Owen is the last cart on the back of that train. And, I mean, and it's not over, is it? No, it's not over by a long way. And, and you know, I feel a bit is that so- Purnell down there? It's now Purnell at the back. He of was the at ground. the front he's of that. Four, he's the fifth cart in line. Incredible in this group now. Now, I mean, I feel as though we're, we're, we're Logan Hodges is going to be a bit hard done by because he's just taken the lead for the first time all weekend. We've hardly shown him because this battle oh. is so good. But Hodges is leading. Shiva, uh, Shiva's gone through the inside of Wayne right there, and now trying to go around the outside of Simon. Yeah, he's oh, he's going to be hung out to dry if he's not careful. He's hung onto that into the compression then. And Shiva, Shiva's a driver that will try and find a way by anywhere, sometimes to his disadvantage. He's going to learn that you just yep. can't pass anywhere. You've got to calculate it. But he's going to make this work. Can't pass through. anywhere, yeah, can I? He has, he has indeed. Right. He's proved me to talk, be talking rubbish. Last he's lap. Got a first. Is it the last lap? It, last oh. lap, and it's going to be three wide up the hill. <laughs> and here's the bat- there was the briefly the battle of the lead. Uh, West is now back in front of Hodgetts. And, uh, oh, my words, a round spoon curve. And uh, down the hill towards the carousel. Now it's Shiva looking over his shoulder. Here comes Will Wainwright, who was on the grass a couple of laps ago. And now Wainwright takes up the cudgels, as you said. As we, sit, as we head on, oh, there's <laughs> Shiva coming back at him. You can't do that, Benjamin. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I, I will, can. And I have. Through, through Devil's Elbow. Shivark Dix. Who's that gone with is him? Is that Bowers? It is Bowers. He's back up into behind Shivar. Incredible. And there's Johnny at the door. We're going to snaffle him while we can as we get to the <laughs> yeah, checkered yeah. flag. Ollie West takes the win. Logan Hodgett second. Ernie Wade third. Jess Bailey fourth. And then Congrats. that battle for fifth. Benjamin Shivar was there at the end with Arthur Bowers going with him. Will Rain Wright, 7th. Calman Simon, 8th. ninth is Freddie Purnell. Louis Wilson, 10th. John Stevens. I need to take a breath. Henry Hills, 12th. Max Armit, 13th. And then we had Wraith Owen, Arlo Gamble, Hendrix Fallat. Where's my screen gone? Uh, Hendrix Fallat, Jack Swank, 17th. And then we had Noah Wicklow. Noah Wicklow dropping yeah, all so the way down there. Not sure. issue. Yeah, But, you know, one of these drivers is going to be the British champion and they will have earned it and be worthy British champions. Uh, I'm going to step away very, very uh, shortly because we're going to have a... D- Joe, you're going to have two, I know. two co-hosts. I know. Well, well, Johnny from Mighty Bambina was going to come in in a minute and he's come in there. So Eddie Stewart's going to commentate for the next junior race. Uh, 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 are you... Right, I'm talking to Johnny here. This yep, is yep. great for TV. Yes. I'm talking to Johnny here. Johnny, have you got to be trackside for your mighty race? No. See what I mean? So we, see, how, did about I see? We, how about did we do this race and then Eddie Stewart takes over the next race? Well, Eddie's That's here for the junior race. I know. Let's have Eddie for the Intermax. Uh, Eddie, Eddie. Let's have a quick chat to Johnny yes. while we've got him. Sit down, Johnny. I've got you here, mate. Right, we can have a. Listen, it's going to take two minutes, right? Two minutes of your time. You're here. You are, you are the, the guys behind the mighty Bambino field. Firstly, the racing is phenomenal. It's epic, isn't it? It is absolutely phenomenal. If Sky Sports doesn't pick this up, <laughs> I don't know what else to do. I mean, that is so entertaining. Yeah. You must be very proud, though, what your company has done and the way that those carts are out there on the track and so, you know, so closely matched. Yeah, I know how evenly they're set, but you know, just watching the racing is um, is blowing me away. How good it is, you know. It is phenomenal. It is awesome. And then we've just seen a Bambino C50 race, the petrol engine carts. Yeah. There is no difference whatsoever. No, a lot of times they're pretty much the same. I think yeah. they're maybe half a second, a second a lap up the road um, per lap. But yeah, super close. We were talking about the car championship being at the forefront of technology, and and at Fullbeck, you might not be aware of this. But Henry was the one who's picked up on it. it we're going to make history at Fullback okay. because we're going to have our first ever electric vehicle national champion 
because okay. there isn't any other electric vehicle championship in any form of motorsport on a national level. Yes, we've got Formula E. We've got that rally thing that nobody watches uh, and can't be found on any kind yeah, of TV no, channel. It's, it's, it's just a shame. Yeah. Um, so this will be at Fullbeck in July. In the last round. It's going to be a, the first national British champion yeah. on an electric vehicle. And it could be any... Oh, I'm not even going to go... Seven, no. I, w- I want to talk to you quickly about... You, you mentioned, you give me some details at round one at Wilton about um, the battery charge and how long it lasts. Yeah. And you told me it could last the full weekend, did you say? Yeah, no, the full race day. We set them to run the full race day so the, so the parents don't really need to worry about charging for a race day. Then they can charge it that evening again. Right, so it's already, and you don't have to touch it after that. Yeah, that's it. You know, oil the chain, set your tire pressures. Yes. Give the kids some sweets and let them at it. And the, the, the stifling factor uh, about electric racing has been that. It's been about the, the life of the battery, hasn't it? But you, you've, you've gotten around that. So how have you gotten around that? What sort of batteries are you using? Yeah, be, be as technical as you can. I'll not understand a word. But, but this guy to my left is an RC guy, so he will. Okay, yeah, the, the sales, you know, they keep moving forward. Um, from when we first released the Gen 2 and Gen 3 in 2019, 2020, um, you know, the, the capacity of the sales and the discharge current that they can handle has increased significantly so we've we've uh, we used to run 120 cells in a in a pack and now we're up to 140 cells but they, they hold a whole lot more um capacity now and um it allows us to to run a full day then and is the is the battery technology is that are the batteries becoming lighter because weight's always yeah. been a factor as well yes yeah, so are, are they being lighter and they're being more efficient power efficient yeah we've we've got um more runtime out of pretty much the same footprint as we always had um so yes the battery is heavier slightly now with the extra few cells in it right. but um for almost 70 percent more runtime than you had in the previous generation in 2019 2020 right you know the footprint is still the same so right. yes they are getting lighter but because we've put extra cells in this pack just to give you a full day's racing um the, the overall pack weight is slightly heavier. The other criteria which you mentioned was the power output. You, you've been given yeah. a, a, a set level of yeah. outage. What What is that exactly? What's the figures? Yeah, so we run um, pretty much three horsepower. Um, so, you know, we upload the same parameter set to every, every powertrain, um, and then we just double-check every one of them on a dyno to ensure the power curve for every kit is exactly the same. Some of them need fine-tuned up or down. Um, and then we lock them down. You know, I'm the only guy with the password apart from the scrutineers. And um, so, if you had somebody very clever in that paddock, like a like a computer, yeah, you'd have to be a computer yeah, hacker, you know, on a, like a national security level to get by that password. I would imagine. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's quite a long password, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, the scrutineers do log into them after every every race. You know, the top right, four or five, right. and they just check that their power level is is set as as per the spec that we have given them you know so and am i right johnny you i think you mentioned the the power output is is kept to a level which keeps it safe for the drivers yeah we were faster in gen 2 gen 3 um but you know msuk wanted um sort of give us the parameters to work within and um that's where we where we went you know we have a we have a speed limit set in there as well that, you know, we do want them going over a certain certain miles per hour. Um, yeah, which is that? What what is that? Um, we've we've it set for forty five. Forty five, right? Yeah. That's what we. That's what I estimated. Johnny, I'm not going to keep you any longer. We've got carts on track. I really appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, no worries. In. That wasn't too hard, now was it? Yeah, hopefully we are going to do that again. We subtitles not, for no, the no, Irish we don't need to. Well, I'm from the North East, mate, so nobody stood <laughs> a chance there, did they? Yeah. And Henry's from South Wales, so yeah. not a chance. So thanks, thanks, uh, yeah. Johnny. Uh, for coming in. We'll get you in in another round to repeat everything you've just said. So, yeah, absolutely. Really appreciate that. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, A great insight is to our mighty ease coming up. We'll reiterate all of that. Eddie is going to join me. Eddie Stewart, uh, hot from his, quite literally hot from his junior primo race. We've got this. Sit down, Ed. Make yourself at home, mate. Um, We've got, we're going to bash straight on with our junior Rotax now, Eddie, there's a reason why you guys are racing in Junior Primo, because this is a metaphorical fist fight. Now, I know you play rugby, 
there's some aspects of this junior Rotax race that makes me think of a, of a, of a rugby-style ruck out there on track, you know, the, the way that the carts are, are being driven. Uh, would you agree? Are you thinking, you know, you're going to be racing in this series, what, in two years? So you've got another two years of Primo, aren't you? Because you're only 12, is that right? Yeah, so we, we, we have some years to, to get up, get, get confidence, get confidence with the carts. So we've got years to get used to it. But this is definitely a big step up. Right, mate. I'm going to come back to your race, your final superheat, which we've just seen. Um, we have just seen your superheat, haven't we? Yes, we have. Of course we have. Yes, I'm getting carried away. Of course, we've got the junior, uh, the final superheat for junior road acts about to take place. They've had two rolling laps. We should get things underway. That looks good. Eddie, we've got Tomaleski looking like he's leading. No, it's the number two. Harry Hurst Grover into Spoon for the first time, Eddie. Tom Alasky, I think he's lost out more places than at the start. Andrew Dixon's in seconds. We had a few comings together there as well with the uh, cart in second place there. Tom Alasky down the inside. And that's Addison Smith on the yellow and blue livery of ST Racing. That's Andrew Dixon losing out about four places there. So Andrew Dixon, who did go off the line in third, he's down to what do we reckon there? About seventh? Yeah, sixth, seventh. I think Hall is behind him. There's I the think leader. Max Haller is behind him. Harry has Grover pulling a small lead to Gasper Zomolaski. So down the hill into the carousel. It, it looks steep on TV, Ed, on a junior road axe cart. How steep is that entrance to the carousel? Up on that long straight, you you really can't see anything up that bank. You, yeah. you trust that there's no cart stops there. Or and really as you come over the stone. brow into Spoon. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's your just complete trust. Here they come then. Let's, yeah, you can read them out across the line, Ed. Harry Hersgrove still leads from Gaspar Somolaski, Andrew Dixon, Alison Smith and Callum Gosh. James Kell, Max Haller, and Jensen Pritchard, Jack Robinson, and Lewis Summer in the top 10. And we look like we've got a challenge. Addison Smith having a go at Tomalevsky there, but not coming off its spoon through the carousel. And out of there into turn six. It's a very composed Harry Hurst Grover leading the race. You, you've led a few races. I remember you leading in Minimax, Ed. He's looked over his shoulder there. How much can you see when you look over your shoulder? Is it just colours that you pick up? You sort of see half the car, or maybe even the front nose going sometimes, but you know he's close. You can hear the hear his engine. You can hear, like, double revs pulling. So you can actually hear you can actually, as it gets closer. Close, you can right, hear. yeah. And there's the move. Tomaleski at the top of the hill. And that was more down to, I think, Hurst Grover sliding wide there, Ed. He slided right and that right and that left to Tom Alasky to find a move through. But I'm not sure if Hurst Grover is done yet. He looks like he's still got pace in him. Yeah, he's going to very, very quickly be coming under pressure from both Addison Smith and Callum Gorsh. They're getting towards the final stages of, of this fourth lap. So we will see the change of lead here as he comes through the final turn. Through turn one and away up the hill again. So... We've got Tomaleski, Hurst Grover, Smith, Gorsh, Dixon, Kell, Pritchard now in seventh. Jack Robinson, Lewis Sumner and Max Haller, the driver. And there's a move that nearly came off for Addison Smith. Let's have another look at that. Up and, and over the hill, down the inside went Hurst Grover on Tomaleski. So a challenge for the lead there that I think, has it come off Eddie? Who's that in front? Is that Hurst Grover in front now? I think it is. It is. So we've had a change. And who has gone by, uh, uh, through in a second? Addison Smith. Oh, and Addison Smith loses out. I'm not sure That's what Tom happened Alaska. there. Who was that? That's Tom Alaska Tomaleski through. through. Addison Smith in the yellow and blue cart losing out there at the final turn. This is frantic, Eddie, isn't it? It's a busy race. I, w I would imagine, Eddie, I mean, it's a long time since I raced, but you've just raced a few minutes ago. You're basically running on instinct here, aren't you, when you're racing at these speeds? Yeah, you are, massively. You've trust as well, most of it. Trust with the, the guys that you're racing with, yeah, the guys and girls that you're racing with. Yeah, trust with the guys you're racing with. Yeah. Here they come, then. 
it'll be six laps completed. And it's Harry Hurst Grover and absolutely glued. We've got a six car train of Junior Rotax through the final turn and across the line. Eddie, take us through the first six there on this screen here, please. You've got Hurst Grover, Tom Olaski, Smith, Josh, Akel, and Dixon all in, all in a queue together. Dixon has dropped back a little bit, but not much. That is going to be a big battle going through. Yeah, we've just clicked by half distance. And there's a, a Hurst Grover there. Uh, he, he's defending into the carousel. That's putting Tomaleski into a disadvantage. That's Alison and Smith. Alison Smith's gone through on Tomaleski, and he's took Callum Gosh with him. So the yellow and blue cart, and then the bright orange cart, and the even brighter orange cart, that's the one of Kasper Tomaleski, who was in second place a moment ago. So Tomaleski got absolutely hung out to dry there, Eddie. Tomaleski... Is he in fourth? Is that fourth? Yeah, fourth, yeah. That's fourth. Yeah. yeah, that's it. He lost two places. Now we've got a challenge for the lead again. And Addison Down Smith. The inside. Looked like he went down the inside. Once again, Hurst Grover defending down the hill towards the carousel. That will offset him into the next few corners. So that's going to disadvantage him into this section here, having he's, done that. Yeah, he's got a slow apex into the corner, which disadvantages his um, exit speed, which will slow him around into the chicane. Which is why Addison Smith is right there. He's going to challenge. He needs to steer with him here. Get into the slipstream, Eddie. Up the hill towards Spoon. There's no challenge he's got. That's uh, Callum Gorsh right on the rear bumper of Addison Smith. And as Harry Hurst Grover will once again go down the left-hand side. Oh, and it's, it's kind of three or four wide through the carousel. Addison Smith on the outside. Callum Gorsh on the inside. Smith sticks with it through six. And then into seventh. He saved that second place, Eddie, with a bit of cr cracking, determined driving there. That was very determined from him. That could have been so easily into the grass or his race over. But he kept with it, kept composed. That's a cool head, yeah? Cool head. Nine laps completed then. Off up the hill again. We've now got Jack Robinson joining that train. Excellent stuff. Six carts become seven. It's anybody's race now. They are being, I would say, they're being slightly held up by the number two, aren't they? Yeah, they've all got the slipstream, so number two doesn't have a slipstream, so he's definitely having to defend and go slower through some corners. Ah, that's why he's having to, that's why he's having to do that. Because they've all got slipstream and trying to gain on. Right, that makes sense, Eddie. Thanks for that. Here they come, then. We're inside the final minute. We're going to probably have enough time for two laps. We are going to be right on the cusp with 47 seconds. They're lapping in the 43s. So we're going to be crossing the line for two more laps after this, but it's not over, Eddie. On to Spoon. Alison Smith. All over the back of Hurst Grover still. This is cracking stuff. This is only the second superheat. This is just to sort the grid out for the final. And I have no idea at what's going to happen in the final. As a driver, Eddie, are you conscious of the fact that this is just the heats? Is it a different mindset when you go forward to the final? It is when you're on the grid and when you're waiting to go out. But once you're under the track, it's all the same. You, you know what you've got to do. You know you've got to perform it. And it's all the same from there. There's a move from the number 252 of Andrew Dixon. I think just getting ahead of Jack Robinson again. On the inside, taking... Addison Smith. I think he's done it. Down the hill for the first time in the lead. Addison Smith it is. The ST Racing driver finally gets and pops the cork of Harry Hurst Grover, the number two. Who would do, He has done a great job holding everybody back, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done a great job, but you can't do it for so long. They're all going to be pressuring you. You're going to crack. And it was Addison Smith who found a way by. It'll be the last lap board that will fly now. So one more lap of racing. And if anything, Eddie, I think Addison Smith has got himself a cushion. Now then, what are you going to do if you're Hurst Grover? As there's a challenge for third there, just as I brought you in. James Kell going ahead of Gorsh. So James Kell might have his sight set on that number two cart and getting ahead of him. Tom Malaski, did, did he lose out there? I think so. Or is he through? No, that's Tom Malaski. I think that's 
That is that Tomaleski who's gone up behind? Is that Tomaleski there? Yeah, he's lost about three places in the last few corners. Right, we're getting towards the final stages then. So it's going to be check and flag. Eddie, if you take them across the line. Addison Smith wins the Super Heat 2, followed by Castor Molaski. No, 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 not Castor Molaski. Harry Hesrover, Callum Gosh, James Kells, Jack Robinson, Casper Tomolaski, Andrew Dixon, Lewis Sama, Jensen Pitchard, Max Haller, Ewan House, J John J. Butchen, Cl Charlie Vary, Riley Morgan, and Marcel Popicult in top 15. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff once again from Junior Road Axe and brilliant stuff uh, from Eddie Stewart joining us in the commentary box. Um, we saw your uh, Junior Primo race, Eddie, your second super heat, and you had a cracking race. You're, you're on the telly quite a bit, actually. Um, tell us a little bit about it. Tell us what, what can you remember of it, because there was quite a bit happened, wasn't it, the way you came up the field and then you had a great battle to the, to the finish. It was very busy. That's busy, yes, the busy. whole race. Yeah. yeah, the whole race. It was seeing carts off and thinking, oh, we're getting the place, so we're not getting the place. But having to also having to defend us on corners from, I think it was Thomas Butcher behind me. But yeah, great driving from me and him, I think. It was a clean stuff, but it was but also very close between the top, the top few. It was a great race. I'm looking forward to your final. Um, one more question before you go. That's probably going to lead to a couple of more questions, actually. Um, it's very easy sat here, isn't it, to not consider just how physical it is in your cart out there at Glanicores. How physical is this track? Because it's very fast and flowing, isn't it? This is probably one of the most physical circuits in England. I think Wilton Mill, well, it's the old Wilton Mill. With Even in Wales, you mean, Eddie? In, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, I say yeah. United Kingdom. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, it is one of the most physical, is it? It is one of the most physical. I think Wilton Mill probably is the most. But what about Warden Law? Have you been there yet? I haven't been there. Ah, well, you're going to find the most physical track in the UK when you come to Warden Law next month. <laughs> yeah, if you think this is physical, I'm told, I'm told, that's my home track. And to yeah. me, it's just the norm. Um, so, we take it for granted that at 12 years old, you're going to be fit and strong enough. But is fitness a factor as you get through the day? You're up early. You know, you bed, what time did you get to bed last night? I was a bed about 8.30ish. Right, that's good, that's commendable. Well done, Laura. Yeah, that, that was quite a chore, I bet. Uh, but you were asleep by what, 10, 12? Midnight. <laughs> Midnight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you went on your phone, were right? you? Oh, definitely not. Of course not. <laughs> and so, good night's sleep, up early. But by the time we get to the finals, you know, you've had a, a very physical day. It, does fitness become a factor? This is all good information for me and Henry, you see. When we start seeing, you know, little little nuances of mistakes creeping in, is that a factor, physicality? It is, but you you wouldn't really see it on, you know, a day like today. We've only got three sessions. Right. You'd see it maybe on a practice day where you've got sort of eight sessions that are running. Right, and you're driving all day. Yeah. Yeah. But in a race, in a sort of day that's only got three sessions, you'd see less of it. Right, and you've got rugby to keep you fit, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, great that stuff. Does the job. Eddie, I'll let you go, mate. Thanks again. Best Thanks of luck in your me. final. Thanks for bringing them in, Laura. Always a, a great insight from Eddie, as ever. I'll let you take your headset off and we'll get underway with our next um, Eddie Stewart there, who will be out in the Junior Primo final, the Junior Rotax Primo final later on this afternoon. Right now, though, we've got our second Intermax Super Heat to get through. Henry Baudet gets back. It's always great to have... An actual driver. We, Absolutely. We, we pursue. I mean, we, you and I have raced, Henry, and, uh, you know, so we do have a bit of an insight as to what's going on out there. But when you get a driver that's just literally stepped out of his cart from, from the his superheat. Absolutely. And it gives us that insight. It's, it's always great. Yeah. And, and um, you know, for, uh, I say the young drivers, they also realize that, that what we do isn't easy either. Uh, you've got to come up and have the confidence like He's Eddie has. Good that, for He's fought good. But let's have a little look. This is Intermax and the lights are out. We are off and racing in Super Heat 2. And it is pole sitter Max Gilman who leads them up the Dragon Straight through turn number two up towards Spoon Curve. And second place driver, that's Harvey Bacon, losing it under braking. You saw that the back end just stepping out and he tried to hold it. He tried to hold it and the tyre smoking. He's beached it on the curb, that Thule Motorsport livery cart. Now he can get up and out. That's the first time we've seen a driver wearing a gelée over his uh, race is that, suit. Is that how cool it, it is out that, there? It is. It's... Uh, 
Uh, it has got, I was going to say, I went a little bit of a, I mean, great to hear, you know, Eddie and, uh, you know, uh, John from Might, Might E uh, giving some insight there. I went on a little fact-finding mission uh, in the paddock just to, to, to catch up on a couple of things, who, which I will, you know, as they become relevant to the classes on track, I hopefully I'll, you know, keep you all updated, Will, uh, with. But uh, Gilman pulling away up at the front. Uh, Fraser Anderson and Nathan Edwards there on the outside on that Zenon cart, that uh, orange and black livery machine. Now he's going to get freight trained oh. by uh, Jensen Sale, JJ Plowman, and even maybe George <laughs> Ralston. No, yeah. he managed to come back on in front of George Ralston. I have to say, so impressed, Nathan Edwards, he came over to me and goes, oh, uh, thank you for commentating so nicely on me yesterday. And I went, well, you know, you were driving so well. It, it, you know, we, as commentators, we can only speak about what we what see we on the see. screen. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, you know, so if the, the, the drivers do well, we simply reflect what the drivers have done. So I said, so I simply said, well, well done for working really hard on your, on your race craft and, uh, and, 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 and driving really well. Yeah. But, uh, again, it's, it's, uh, you, you, you hear Eddie, who's 12, yes. and, and then you go and see Nathan, and you, you realize that, uh, you know, we, we joke and laugh about all the teenagers are on their phones all the time or do that. However, what karting does, it, it does create a very personable, I mean, amenable, uh, by and large, you know. Uh, uh, no, it does, I agree. I totally savvy, agree. savvy, professional, focused young men and women. It, it does, and, and even it even works for adults. When you know, you, you as a as a sometimes the children reflect upon their parents, and and, and instead of uh, kids picking up on their parents' behaviour, the parents actually pick up on the kids' behaviour. Yeah, in, the car, I, I, in, well, in the world of karting. Well, even you know, as a twenty-two-year-old who who I, I think I started racing at twenty-one, and by the time I got to twenty-three, that's when I took up twenty-four, took up karting, and competing. And, and just that sociable aspect of the yes. paddock mm -hmm. and then you go on track and you kind of you hate everybody when I yes. race you hate everybody no, around you, you. you absolutely you hate to. everybody you around you to. you need to overtake the person in front of you but off track you know it all settles down and, and yes. it's that whole that it's the, every single element of this weekend it's, you learn to separate you know the you track separate the out paddock. the track yes, yes. And, and then the meeting people from all over the country and it's certainly in yes. the national series like the car championship kids playing together when we did the paddock show um it was jade edwards who said you know the, the kids are the, the battles are intense on the track they get off the track they get a ball and they go kicking a ball around with the people that they've yeah. just been and, battling and, with. i mean as we were leaving the circuit last night we even looked at and it was bitterly cold but you're looking we looked out on the circuit and there was maybe 20 kids playing football of all different shapes and sizes That's it right. wasn't just and it was bambinos it was you know juniors it was cadets you know and it, that, that's you know that's the beauty it, of it they separate track from pits you separate the racing driver from the person i've never seen jason plato kick a ball around with matt neil no, I've Never. seen kick Matt. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah. but maybe may, yes, maybe yeah. may in their in their dotage. <laughs> they Half distance. Max Gilman is still at the front of this field by just on a second. It's oh, Jensen dear. Seal. What were you going to say? What did um, you say? And that is the back of the group. That's I think that's George Ralston who was banging his steering wheel. Oh, and really? I think as he goes down the dragon straight, that cart is losing a bit of top end. Ah, right, so he was at the top of the straight. What yes. number is he? He's the, he's the 199. He's, in the, he's the fourth cart in line there. With right, like he's the dropping ambition. off. Yeah, he's dropping off the tail, isn't he? Yes, he's right. dropping off these three that he's been running with. Um, so we'll see if we'll see as he goes on the dragon straight because he's okay through here where it's low, relatively low revs, and uh, but then you get onto the straight and now will Drew uh, will Oscar Roach pass him on the straight? Let's have a little look, and he's got his head down. Well, maybe that was just a, a slight mistake because he seems to be okay there. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah he's, he's banging his steering wheel because he was uh, not happy at losing a couple of places. Maybe fighting the wheel as they went through the uh, the spoon curve there. Fraser Anderson, JJ Plowman, and Nathan Edwards on the one four nine there, just on the back of the one seven seven. Jason Pl uh, JJ Plowman, the ST Racing livery there, bright yellow and blue. As they continue on their lap, this is the battle for fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And if anything, Nathan Edwards coming back into play, isn't he? he yes. that, that banging of the steering wheel goes unsorted there, for as far as we're concerned, from the 
The, oh, sorry, it was George Ralston, the 199, who was banging his steering wheel. Nathan yeah, Edwards, the 149, is still there on the back of that bright yellow and blue cart of Drew. JJ Plowman. Is that, Drew, is that, is that, or is that uh, Drew Davidson who we're looking at? Uh, the so there's the 149 is, ahead of... It's, it's Drew Davidson in the 170 who's at the head of this pack in fifth. But So we're looking at fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth. Uh, Max Gilman leads by just under six tenths of a second over Jensen Sale. Uh, then uh, JJ Plowman is in third position just in front of Fraser Anderson and they're the two carts who you briefly catch them. so we've got all the top leaders there's the two leaders going up the hill there's third and fourth on the screen right so that's, now. that's Plowman and Anderson that's Plowman and Anderson and just in front of them are Gilman and Sale there they are going down the hill great camera work there into the carousel so there are your two leaders uh, Gilman under pressure from Sale with 90 seconds to go uh, then you've got Plowman and Anderson uh, battling together, and then that scrap for fifth that we were focusing on, Davidson, Edwards, Jackson, Ralston, and Roach. So as we get towards the final minute, then still plenty of time for any time to kind of change of position. Gilman already through, Jensen Seal, gap down to three tenths, so this battle for the lead has come down from a second as Jensen Seal there. The number 140 right now on his bumper over the brow and they're fighting the wheel there in the Thule Motorsport cart of Max Gilman as he fought the cart into the corner. He made it round though and into the carousel at the bottom of the hill. He's, he's gained seven tenths in the last two laps. So if he can maintain that momentum, that momentum will carry him ahead. However, this is where the momentum is stifled yes. through the twisty bits. He's got to settle in behind the leader, Max Gilman. As they come through the final turn, plenty of time. So it's going to be two more laps, uh, Henry. Yep, two more two laps. Two to go, two to go. And, uh, you know, there's Gilman checking over his shoulder. Interesting, he looks over his left shoulder, not his right shoulder, because he was uh, expecting, he was, he was not worried about Sale getting at the inside. He's more concerned with Sale towing around the outside of him. Uh, now he'll look Another to look. the inside. Yep. yep, still looking. He knows he's there. Yeah, so, so I mean... He was a little bit wide coming out of that corner. He doesn't want to get an, an inch wide. An that inch could have wider. been a disaster. Yeah, that would have been a wheel on the grass. Now, I don't like the line that Max Gilman is taking into the final corner. I think that op that, that leaves him susceptible from a dive from right. Sale into this, this, this corner line here. here. Yeah. here yes. I'm not convinced that that will work for him on the last lap if Sale is right there. Well, he's going to be right there. Here he goes. This is his last opportunity. The, ch the opportunities for passing are running out. Here's the first. We've said this before, over the brow and into Spoon. No, taking the inside line is Max Gilman. And maintaining that momentum out of the corner and down the hill towards the carousel now. And Seal, I think that's more Gilman responding to the advantage. He looked over his shoulder. He saw how close Jensen Seal was. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of responded in the way that drivers can. Yes. Kind of having a little bit left in the back pocket, isn't it? So here's this critical last couple of corners of the race. If Gilman can get out of this corner with a two cart length lead, he's safe. But if not, then Sale will look not close enough. No. It and, was uh, a good uh, effort. Good effort to come back. Yeah, good last lap from uh, uh, from Max Gilman, I have to say. And it was JJ Plowman for ST Racing finishing in that third place. Fraser Anderson fourth, Drew Davidson fifth, Nathan Edwards sixth. George Ralston finishes in seventh. Then we had Thomas Jackson, Oscar Roach, Sandro Kemp in tenth was the last of our finishers. And Harvey Bacon, we lost on lap three. Now, it's the two heat points that get that combined. So that the heat race, the heat, the two super heats, the same way as the heat that the two heat yesterday's, there'll be an intermediate classification yesterday. That was one set of championship points. There's now going to be another intermediate classification at the end of the two super heats. That's going to be a second set of championship points, and the combined, uh, the intermediate classification will decide the grid for the main event. So we're going to see Harvey Bacon, who is a potential race winner, starting a long way back in Inter. Well, Max, the the point score, Henry, for the first two heats is forty for first, That's championship points. Sorry, yep. championship points. Yeah, forty for first, thirty-eight, thirty-six, thirty-five, thirty-four, and down over. For the super heats classification, yes, which is the points amount, which is how we finish after two super heats, yes, sixty for the win, fifty-seven 
55, 54, 53, decreasing by one. And then for our finals coming up later after lunch, the win brings you a one, 100 points, mm-hmm. 95 points for second, 92 for third, 90, 89, and so on, decreasing by yeah. one. So, so there's a lot of points to be championship points to be had over the course of the weekend, mm-hmm. but it kind of gives us three three. Three uh, different segments of a three race meeting. Three segments of a race meeting. Yeah. Which I, which I think this is the only championship that does it, that. It is. This is, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is a completely bespoke championship points situation, and it works well. So each a driver can gain a maximum of 200 championship points. If you win everything. Over the course <laughs> of a weekend. If you, if you, and you don't have to win every race to get those 200 championships. You have to win the final, but you have to be first in the intermediate classification at the end of the two heat races on Saturday to get maximum heat championship points. You have to be first in the intermediate classification on Sunday morning after the two super heats to gain maximum super heat championship points, and then you've got to win the final. So uh, um, so it is, do, It is. I mean, y- yes, it, it, I'm, I'm not sure we're going to see that. But you, you could, um, you could but get it is maxi- possible. You could get maximum championship points and only win the final. If you, if, it depends if, on how your other competitors yes, have finished. If you're it? second and second in your two heats, and you get the heat winner of heat one, then finishes fifth, and then heat winner finish if heat two finishes seventh in heat one, you've you've got a better intermediate classification because yes. you come second and second. It's yes. a, uh, we do need a sort of a diagram and, and right one, a flow a, chart, a flow chart, a lab coat, a whiteboard, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and, a, and a and a graphic that's to a, explain the, the the points. That's a whole new. T- that's a whole different TV show <laughs> yeah, altogether. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we should have a sort of a midweek magazine show yeah. for the car championship. Brian, Brian Cox to explain. Yeah, with Brian Cox to, to, to explain, explain yes. cha- karting yeah. championship points, yes. uh, nuclear physics, and karting championship points and heat yeah. points. Absolutely. Um, we have got the super heat too <laughs> okay, yes. for the mighty Bambinos. We had Johnny here yes, explain, Johnny. explaining a little bit about, giving us a little bit of insight about the technology on these carts, which was great. We'll, we'll certainly get Johnny in, in in later rounds to reiterate because I'm fascinated by what what has really impressed me is the lap times that these electric carts produce are exactly the same as the petrol engine Bambinos. Mm-hmm. They achieve the same lap time, but in very different ways. The electric yes. cart performs in a different, slightly different <laughs> way. Um, Ollie West will explain a little bit more in our paddock show coming up in the next. We've got, what, two more races to go before we break for lunch? Yeah. And then we've got our, my Henry and I wandering around the paddock aimlessly last night, uh, accruing intelligence and data. Um, it's and a great insight from Ollie West, who's driving both yes. this weekend. And I, I've got to say, when I went out to my little paddock walk, there was there was quite a few people, uh, mums and dads, asking me where my uh, my hoodie is. And I, I, well, you'll have to wait and see the show. I think, <laughs> mate, have you know, to you, wait and you, see the show. You, you got that in America. I, I think there's America. a market there. Yeah, there We're, right, we've anyway, got the grid, grid clearing. Ralph Martin on the pole from Felix Tandy. We saw Felix drop from the what, leading at, at several points in the set, first super heat. He ended up coming seventh after that uh, trip over. Uh, Henry and I could barely cope with the race, this <laughs> yes. the first super heat. Um, we're going to try and cope with this one. We've got a green flag, and we're about to go racing. It'll be the red lights come on. The five-minute warning board goes up, so the red light can come on at any moment. Now, there it is, and it goes out immediately. That's a very quick finger of Dan Ashton there, oh. who gets this underway. And it's, who is that? Is that uh, Ollie West? It would be Ralph Martin, Ralph who's Martin taking leading. the lead. Ah, that's uh, Felix Ollie, Tandy behind, yeah. Yeah, and then Ollie West is third in the bright green crash helmet. Uh, so, so Ralph Martin in the number 32 cart. Uh, Ollie West on the outside going up the hill. He's actually dropped back to fifth position uh, now behind Oliver Woodall and Henry Hales. Uh, so they've begin the descent down towards the carousel. Tandy chasing Ralph Martin with West. Uh, there now he moves back into fourth place. Henry Hales, who was so impressive this morning in Super Heat number one, already looking to the inside of Felix oh. Tandy. Uh, side by side. Here we go. Well, they've just picked up where they left off this morning. It's yes, they have. Good We're to back. see, Joe. That yeah. oh, has, yes. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Normal normal service has been normal has, service has resumed been. in yeah. the mighty Bambinos, and and Felix Tanny just having to sit there on the outside, and uh, of course that was to his disadvantage. As we've got to move for the lead, and Henry Hills 
he had a lot of speed coming out that final turn and he's carried that through turn one on up the hill they go that's Felix Tandy on the 28 behind Felix Tandy you've got Ollie West Heath Smith Junior Wright and Oliver Woodall the first two though Henry Hill's leading into Spoon yeah, and Oliver Woodall trying to cut through the between the two drivers of front, he's dropped back a little bit there now but he he did pass Oliver Ollie West uh, briefly now he's faded back a little bit but I mean Henry Hales so you know these these drivers six seven eight years old six and seven the majority of them uh, you know Henry Hales had a win this morning so he obviously he had his wheat a bit oh dear there's a uh, uh, oh. Felix Tandy and uh, Ollie West West uh, showing that he can be aggressive uh, uh, and moving into third place Henry Hales he took his win this morning and, he, and it has just boosted him so much his confidence he's come charging up to the field I'm not sure he would have made some of those moves yesterday but now he's had a race win under his belt yeah uh, you know he's, uh, well chest is chest is puffed out his shoulders are swinging and he think yeah, I, you know I'm I'm, I, I'm I belong here at the front I'm a winner just like these other kids well he's learned how to win yes he's learned, learned how to, how win, to win he's, he's continuing that behind him glued to his rear bumper is Ralph Martin and behind them, Ollie West has Felix Tandy for company right on his bumper. Felix Tandy learning all the time as well in his second ever race weekend, as, the, as is the majority of these six, seven-year-olds. Yeah, first, uh, second round of the championship on these electric carts. So the second weekend on these electric carts. However, we did have two mighties at one law, Ava Garrett and uh, I can't remember the other driver who was, who was there. Sorry. Um, we're out on their mighty Bambinos in amongst the C50 Coma engine carts. And yes. apart from shooting off the line better than anyone, the electric carts, uh, they were exactly the same, producing the same lap times. Um, so they, they can mix. I know we don't really like to. And here they are off up the Dragon Strait towards Spoon. <coughs> and it's absolutely <coughs> nose to tail for Henry Hills and Ralph Martin. I'll just fade you down, Henry, if you want to die. Uh, <laughs> Henry Hills, inside line through Spoon. Slides very wide indeed, or just lets the cart breathe out to the left-hand side. And almost side by side. Are you back? Uh, yeah. You're still alive. You're okay. still alive. Yeah, d dying is complete, and I'm back with it now. And yeah, side, just in time stuff. to see side by side action going up the hill. Oh, and oh. On the grass there for Ralph Martin. He ran out of road, basically. He would try to go around the outside of Henry Hills, and that's always a threat, isn't it? It's always a risk when you do that to actually run out of track. Yes, and uh, but but you know Henry Hales, he he didn't continue to drive out and and force Ralph completely off track. He you know he was he he was more focused on getting his line right than by to stopping another driver. As uh, the rest of the field come along, and look at this, they're two, four, six in a row. Oh, and. Uh, there's one. That's the number six. That is that Christian Doshi. Christian Doshi, yes. Christian Doshi in uh, on the grass. But uh, yeah, you've got Hales, Martin, West, Tandy, Smith, and Woodall. Uh, with Junior Wright back in seventh. Then James and James William, Jack Harper, Ava Garrett. Uh, the rest of the top ten. So six drivers. Three and a half minutes to go. Uh, any one of these three uh, six drivers will be thinking I can still win this race. As uh, we head up, as the green flag there past the incident of uh, yeah Christian Doshi, they're uh, coming Christian back Doshi. together actually, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They, they are. are coming back together. And uh, Ollie West, the accordion, is, is kind of broke away from yeah the accordion. They do extend and then come back together. Yes, Ollie West has broken free of the advances of Felix Tandy, and Ollie West almost on the bumper. And in fact, he is. I would say that is on the bumper now of Ralph Martin, as we've got a two card battle now developed into a three. As they head up the Dragon Strait, Felix Tandy just being left behind slightly with Heath Smith trying to get on terms with him. They're side by side for second. Ollie West down the inside of Ralph Martin. And but the green helmet there that's making the move. Ollie West. Yep. Ollie West has gone through into second. And look, But look now at Tandy, Smith and Woodall, how much closer they are. Yep. And you know, at the end of this lap, if Tandy, Heath and uh, Woodall haven't caught the top three. They will have caught them by spoon curve at the start of the next lap I think because he, yeah. Martin and West are now forcing Hales to be a little bit more defensive as uh, uh, there's uh, uh, Arthur Bath walking away from his cart. So Arthur Bath becomes the second retirement. But uh, now we'll see. So we're going to see we're going to see a great camera shot going through turn number one. 
of them pushing and drafting with each other, or, they, they, or, yeah, or, or Ralph, overtaking each other. Yeah, <laughs> Ralph, Ralph Martin tried to, and you know what, he tried to, to, to go down the inside. However, he backed out of it. Yes. And by backing out of it, it allowed Oli West around the outside. He's fallen back towards Felix Standy. The two leaders have, have broken away. And once again, Henry, we're going to have bat markers becoming a factor. As down the inside at Spoon has gone Ollie West. Ralph Martin, not so much forced around the outside, but ended up on the outside of Spoon Curve, much to his uh, disadvantage, as Ollie West makes quick work of the first of the bat markers yep. and the rest of the Bambino field go through. And they've gotten by. That's not going to be a factor at all. No, indeed. And uh, Ralph Martin there in third place dropped back a little bit. The bat marker helped. Helped him get back in touch. Tandy is with Ralph Martin. And now it's down to Heath Smith in the number 18 cart. And Oliver Woodall in the number 40 cart. To try and catch back up. Because we could have a four cart train. Just under a minute to go. So uh, this will be two yeah, laps to two go. Laps. Uh, West, Hales, Martin and Tandy. There goes Hales looking to the inside. as we, uh, And yet yeah, Hales has got the move down the Dragon Straight. There he comes. Takes the position. West tucks into his slipstream. Now Martin and Tandy close back in under braking. And the two become a four. Oh, Hales oh, runs wide, once again, though. Yeah, he, did, he ran wide before. That was when uh, Ollie West came down the inside. And he's lost out, hasn't he? Yep. He's lost out to Ralph Martin there, who's now on the bumper of the leader. He lost a lot of time to Henry Hills, going all the way around the outside of Spoon. And Ollie West has got the optimum line through six into turn seven. It's Devil's Elbow next, the right and left, taking a very tight line there. Now into the left-hander. They'll come through there, and then the, the, the track will drop away at the compression there. And there's a bat marker into the final turn, and the bat marker's just ahead of the leader, Ollie West. Will the bat marker become a factor, or will they be able to clear? Yes, I think they're going to clear e easily. Oh, the bat marker just n not quite getting in the way and staying out to the left and allowing this field of five, potentially six carts clear. Yep, six. And that was Arthur Thompson. Who, Hills uh, back it in, Henry. Here we go. Look at Incredible. this. Four wide up the hill. That was slipstream. Oh, brilliant. That was the drag factor coming into play. Hills went into that in, onto that straight in third. And he just had that slipstream that assisted him in getting by. He's leading into the carousel for the last time. It's uh, yeah, with Hales, West, Martin, uh, Woodall, Smith, and Tandy. So Tandy at the back of this group. Now we begin the descent. Will Ollie West look to the inside? He has a look, but Hales has enough speed and momentum to cover the position. Oh, there's uh, Oliver Woodall taking fourth position away from Heath Smith. Uh, Hales is offline. Is Oliver West going to have a little look coming out of this corner? Here comes Ralph Martin, wheel to wheel for second. Drag race for second to the line. Well, Hales wins. Cracking. West and Martin second and third. Heath Smith takes fourth from Oliver Woodall. Uh, with Felix Tandy in six, and I looked down, 1.6 seconds <laughs> separating the top six. Incredible. We had a gap of, would you believe, a huge gap of four tenths of a second for Henry well, Hills. Unheard of. A, uh, yeah, I unheard of. Yeah. Uh, unheard of. Ollie West had 97 thousandths of a second to Tom. Ralph Martin, who had four tenths to Heath Smith, who had four tenths to Oliver Woodall, who had a tenth, just under two tenths. Pardon me, to Felix Tandy. I mean, talking uh, about processional, a four-tenth four margin of victory? Deary me. <laughs> we, we need to perhaps make a note of how many lead changes we we, we get in these Bambino races, especially the, well, the might ease. The, 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 uh, the Apex, uh, oh, sorry, the Alpha timing system uh, will record, you know, sort of lap charts, but it only records lap charts at the start-finish line. So we'll be able to see how many uh, official lead changes we've had, but unofficial lead changes. Yep, you unofficial know. lead changes coming on the lap, you mean? Yes, yes yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah, many exactly, times yeah. the, the lead changed during the course of the lap? Yes. Uh, not necessarily who was leading at the end of the lap. Yeah, uh, because and that, that's what I mean. Yes, yeah, you, yeah, you're, you're going to run you're, out of fingers. You're and toes. out of ink. Yes. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get, get the, all the counting sort of abacus out as we, uh, we try, but, um, you know. This this will be another race to try and have a look. Well, will it? Because Alfie Mayer and Benedictus Masiokas have uh, run away with things a little bit in Micromax. This will be the last race before the lunch break, um, yeah, last ladies and gentlemen. Heats. 
So, but please, if you wherever you're watching back home, and we haven't had a chance to look at the uh, the, the YouTube, uh, the live chat on uh, the uh, Karting Live TV live chat, but we do appreciate uh, I, okay, your you comments. You know why? I in. haven't had a minute to. to well, to, no, it's to, been, uh, yeah, I'm going to do mean, that I've, now. Though I've been swanning around the paddock while the guest commentators have come <laughs> yeah. in. You know, but uh, um, so we'll we'll we, we do thank all the the, the viewers. Uh, for wherever you are in the world, and we'll try and make a note while you're watching the paddock show during the lunch break. Don't go away. That's in, that's an order. I've got right. So okay, uh, we're going to catch up on all of our comments on YouTube. Michael Burke. Ah, oh, from Bathurst, Australia. Evening or nine p.m. There. Nine p.m. So Morning. he's staying up late. Evening, Michael. Um, uh, Mars Kovekis. Let's go, Marigas. Mar- 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 Margaris. Um, we've got um, Keegan. Keegan Mitchell, Keegan Mitchell Rhodes, um, Jan Brune Anderson. I see that Ollie West is continuing his good performance. Um, and then we've got uh, Hog, Hoge Gonville or Hog Jörg. Hoge. Oh, Hoge. Ho- oh yeah, Jörg. Hoge Gonville. Greetings from Germany. Uh, 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 good Morgen, Hoge. Yes, good Narben. No, I see it's good Narben now. Yes, it is. Yeah, would you believe it's quarter past one? Oh dear! Time flies by when you're so, when you're having fun. Twenty-six Micromax drivers set to go out, Joe. Uh, who's going to beat Alfie Mayer? That's the question, Henry. Who's going to beat Alfie Mayer? Is it going to be Benedictus Masiokas who will start on the front row? Uh, is it going to be Buddy Hugo or Logan Rolf who are starting behind them, or is it indeed going to be the very pink cart of Chloe McGill? And uh, the uh, cart alongside her, Lewis Herbertson, who so, were on the third row. Well, as we watch a cart spinning there coming down the hill on the rolling lap, um, uh, at the risk of upsetting all the other drivers, I can only see two people beating Alfie Mayer, Benedict Masiokas and Alfie Mayer. Yeah, that's a good point. Here we go. Oh, we're go. getting another lap because of that spinner, I think. You know, uh, Alfie has been... Uh, he's not been dominant, but I, he's been able to I, assert his authority enough to mark himself as so, the driver yeah, to beat. Alfie Mayer making a mistake. Yes. At yeah, beating yeah, yeah. himself. Yes. That's what, uh, yes. Yes. That's not very likely. It's not. No, no. But, I mean, apart from Benedict I know, Masiokas, I, know what you're saying. I, I, I can't. I mean, yeah. Buddy Hugo, Logan Rolf, Chloe McGill, Lewis Herbertson uh, have all been quick, but they've not been as quick as Alfie Mayer and Benedict Masiokas. So it's, it's, it's going to be Benedict or a mistake. Now, you mentioned the paddock show that's coming up in the lunchtime break where we yes. had our, a little paddock walk. I'll be Jay Stubbs as a feature on that, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, Jade, uh, Jade Evans and Josh Cook helping RBJ. They're helping out everyone in the zip team, really. But, yes, RBJ Stubbs, this is one of his first meetings out of Bambino, and he's going to be starting ninth. Yeah, that's uh, starting ninth. The grid from the results of the set of the two heats that we had yesterday. Yes. This is the final super heat. The result of this and the first super heat will sort the grid for going forward after lunch. We start with our finals. Uh, but before that, we've got the last of our super heats coming up now. The red lights are on. We get the green, or the red lights go off, and we've got a cart off to the Already. outside of turn one. The 42, that cart, that, yep, Alfie Garrett. Alfie Garrett falling to the back. There are going down the order somewhat. As Alfie Mayer, it is, leading up the hill and into Spoon. We've got a challenge there for Masiokas as Logan Rolf tried to get down the inside. Oh. A coming together of about six, seven, eight carts. A few carts being able to resume. And that was, yeah, that looked as though possibly uh, the 20 cart and the 99, uh, or Elijah West uh, and Matthew Lee. I think Elijah West was one of the first, was, was spun, and then... Uh, yeah, Matthew Lilly didn't have anywhere to go, and a couple of other drivers further back sort of spun and collected each other in avoidance. Did you talk to Alfie Mayer last night at the uh, Zip Morning? We did. We talked to Alfie yeah. and to Benedictus. Yes, absolutely. Yes, of course. Yes, and they both said they were going to beat each other. Yeah, um, and they, 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 they're both trying to yes, do just that. Trying. But whilst making sure that a zip cart eventually wins. Yeah. Well, because it's, it's all well and good trying to beat your teammate, and then you're busy trying to beat your teammate, and somebody else comes swanning through and goes, thank you very much. It's, I, I absolutely am delighted to see zip cart back at the forefront oh, yes. and back at the front of any cart field. It's great. The job that Tuesday and Earl have done 
with resu- resurrecting the name because it dropped off quite quite a lot, didn't it? Yeah, uh, uh, there was there was one year where there were zero no zip carts really? on the yeah, uh, so. the British Cadet Grid. And who's who's the kid who's in? Is it seniors? Um, who's on the zip? Oh well, I mean, we, we did it. Kate McQueen did a Kate little McQueen, bit on, on a zip. The, He's yeah. moved over to KR Spot now. As he yeah, really are. Yeah, right. he, right. he, it was Kate McQueen a, who I'm thinking of. It was Kate McQueen. Yeah, they tried to do the, the zip. Tried to sort of like, yeah, move up into 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 the bigger classes, uh, uh, with um, mixed results. Yes, well, it's, uh, it's, it's, so a, they, tough, they, it's a tough yeah, field. You know, so we're gonna we, we go back. We're gonna focus on the smaller classes. You know, for so often it was just it was, you know, it was just Army Cadet and. Uh, and, and Honda Cadet. Now it's uh, Micro Max and uh, Intermax into as well. Yeah. 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 Um, and they had uh, for for some time. Yeah, they had. Uh, oh, name name escapes me now. Well, well but they, they they they've been they've been back. They've been getting back yeah. uh, up to speed. And now they've got a couple of really good drivers. They got the GP plate last year. Uh, you know, they've had they had a, a really a runner up finish the British Championship with, with Kenzo Craigie, and uh, yeah. Is, uh, the future it, the future does look bright, yep. but looking bright as well at the moment. Round the outside goes Logan Rolf for tried. P2. He not tried. Quite. Yeah, he tried. He tried to get. He's all over Masiokas. Masiokas doing a great uh, second driver teammate role in holding up the field, allowing Alfie Mayer to escape. Alfie Mayer's gap is uh, just under a second, seven tenths, just under eight tenths. Last time it's going to be bigger than that next time by. Yep. And Masiokas now. Doing a great job in holding back Logan Rolf. The is Logan Rolf an ambition or a synergy? Uh, he's on the he's the, the Vital Motorsports synergy right uh, yeah. team. He's, yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, he's on, on a and synergy cart, but uh, yeah, uh, Gary uh, Gary and uh, Kelly they run Vital Motorsport, which uh, is still in the paddock. Yep. And Logan and Logan Rolf has Buddy Hugo not that far behind. Here's another challenge though from Rolf, and this time he's got the inside line. He tried around the outside. Oh, it didn't work. This time oh, it has. Good this move. time it has. It was the outside line that uh, Benedictus Masiokas found himself on. He basically ran very, very wide indeed and went round a massive circumference yep. all the way around. And that left Logan Rolf, the inside line, the ideal for the left hand kink out of the spoon and then down the hill behind I... them. That's Chloe McGill who's made her way up ahead of uh, Buddy Hugo. And let's see if uh, if let's see if Cl- uh, Chloe can find the speed to get onto the tail of Masiokas as they cross the line. She's about half a second behind. We don't really need a timing screen to tell us. We can see the gap there, the pink cart there, just heading the number eleven of Buddy Hugo. Yep. And that's the gap there. That uh, that battle isn't over though, is it? No, 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 not by a long shot. There goes Buddy Hugo, uh, wheel to wheel, but Chloe McGill. Good respectful racing there from both drivers, leaving each other just enough room. However, you can see how much it slowed each other down. And this is a little bit of an experience, you know. They, With three and a half minutes to go, don't try and go side by side. You know, if you're going to maybe down a straight, we are not costing you, yourself any time. But into corners and going around corners, you need to be single file. So you can stay with the two drivers, Rolf and Masiokas, in front of you. Now, Alfie Mayer, he has extended his advantage to 1.4 seconds, although I say that last time around, uh, Logan Rolf and uh, Benedictus Masiokas were 13 hundredths of a second quicker than the race leader. Yeah, so they, they, by, by, I think what we're seeing is Masiokas has not challenged Rolf at all for maybe two laps. No. And so the gap is coming back to Alfie yes. Mayer. Ah, and there's so a yellow flag at the top of the hill was that? There is a driver halfway down the hill, uh, sat in their go kart. There is said driver. That's it's Carter, Carter Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, he's going to be pulled back on track there. So we'll get that cleared uh, pretty much straight away <coughs> and get that yellow flag in. Meanwhile, out at the front, they're coming towards the end of lap number seven. It'll be seven laps completed for Alfie Mayer. The gap was 1.4. It's out at 1.8. And a fastest lap ah. he's responded. Alfie Mayer pulls it out the bag of 48.5 for the fastest lap of the race here for the Super Heat, Micro Max Super Heat number two. And it's Rolf Masiokas, Chloe McGill still ahead of Hugo. Behind the top five, Dean Pahal, Alfie Garrett, Lewis Herbertson, Jensen Walker, and it's Albie J. Stubbs who rounds off the top ten. Yeah, with uh, Xavier Ramsey, Lewis Cacaldi, Sebastian Crawford, Freddie Blackshaw, Toby Biggs, Jack Mellon, and Victor Popacor. Uh, next with Ronnie Faulkner, Zach Andrew, and Jamie Walsh rounding out your top 20. Apart from...
Carter Jackson. Has Carter Jackson got back into the race? No. I think he was being pulled off. Uh, 25 of the 26 drivers still running, which is very, very impressive. We crossed the line 90 seconds to go. There's Rolf and Masiokas. So this is the battle for second position. Masiokas checking over his shoulder just to see that uh, he can try and make a move. They look as they're going side by side behind them as well for, for fourth, fifth and sixth. But uh, this is the chasing pack and they are still uh, about 1.9 seconds behind Alfie May. I thought we were going to see Logan Rolf pull away from Masiokas. That has not happened. No. Masiokas, having lost the second place, has literally sat glued to the rear bumper of Logan Rolf. The white and blue cart there of Rolf, the, uh, the yellow, black and red, the zip cart colours of Benedictus Masiokas glued to the rear bumper there. As the driver hangs on there to the cart through that very tight and twisty section of the compression. And here it is, then nine laps completed. Mare's gap uh, in the lead. Uh, Alfie Mare still at 1.8 seconds. The gap, but fastest lap, personal best from both Logan Rolf and Benedictus Masiokas. Uh, 48.612 for Rolf, 48.623. That's how close they are. Absolutely nothing in it, Henry. Yep, there's uh, another back marker there just driving off track. I think that was Leo Hunt uh, getting a little bit agricultural uh, up the hill. The clock will strike zero, so next time around they will get the last lap board. So last lap board coming up for Alfie Mayer. While this battle ensues, you get a feeling, is, is it a case of Masiokas waiting and biding his time? I think not, you know. I think Rolf is really quick. And uh, as if they're listening to me, Rolf has pulled out a bit of a cushion, taking that into the final lap. That's going to help him. Alfie Mayer, another purple lap time for him. Another personal best there for Logan Rolf, proving to be as quick as he needs to be to secure that second place. The question remains unanswered, Henry, as to who is going to beat Alfie Mayer in this Micromax class. Well, I mean, well, I mean, the, 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 the risk of disagreeing, Joe, the question is being answered because uh, we had two names <laughs> at the start of it. Uh, Benedict Masiokas was one of them, and uh, it looked, you know, He's not got the pace of Alfie Mayer, so the, the only thing standing between Alfie Mayer and I would say, a, a, you know, a victory here is, you know, a mistake, which, like you said, is, is unlikely to happen. But we're, we're not going to give him the trophy we, just yet. We, we can That's never discount it. it. And so look at that, oh. Logan Rolf, absolutely delighted with second place. And, and he's done that. So the last two laps of the race, Logan Rolf under pressure from Benedict Masiokas. He goes to the last two laps where a lot of these young drivers would get nervous. They might make a mistake because all they're doing is thinking about defending. He puts in a personal best lap and then the fastest lap of the race on the last lap. That tells me as a driver that he's maturing and he now he can withstand pressure. There are, he, can, he did he can, there. He can, Absolutely. He can withstand pressure and, you know, put the pressure back on the driver chasing him. A quick rundown of the finishing order in the second superheat for Micromax that concludes our superheat phase. Uh, Alfie Mayer takes a win. Logan Rolf second. Benedictus Masiokas third. Uh, Dean Singh Pal fourth. Jensen Walker. Chloe McGill. Le Lewis Herbertson. Xavier Ramsey eighth. Ninth was Albie J. Stubbs. Buddy Hugo was tenth. Just outside the top ten was Lewis Kakodi, Alfie Garrett. Just behind Alfie Garrett, Sebastian Crawford. Toby Biggs, Victor Popacool, Freddie Blackshaw, Jack Mellon, Ronnie Faulkner, Elijah Weston, it's Jamie Walsh rounding off the top 20. And then the remaining six, Matthew Lilly, Zach Andrew, Travis Giddings, Ruben Sagu. Uh, we lost Carter Jackson, who we saw on the grass, and Leo Hunt also on the grass, who we lost on lap nine. So, Henry, that concludes um, the super heats. That concludes all of our heat fears, because yes. the next time we see Cart on track, it's going to be for the all-important final um, what time are we coming back out for the final? The lunch break is until 2 o'clock, so it's 13.25 hours now. We'll see you back here just before 2 o'clock when Henry and I will take you through our finals. And it's if you think it's been intense for this lot... Oh, it, wait till you see the finals. There's trophies to be won in the finals and standing oh, on yeah. a podium, so it's going to get very, very dramatic, I Indeed. think. Enjoy the paddock show. Absolutely. Welcome to North Wales, Glanny Gores, for round two of the car championship. And I'm joined by a guest commentator. 
Mr. Karting himself, Henry Baudet. Henry, it's an absolute delight and pleasure to work with you finally at a proper at a proper kart championship, and it is indeed the kart championship. Now, this is your first time with the kart championship, isn't it? It, it, it is. Uh, it is. And first of all, thank you very much uh, to the everyone the organisers for having me, and it's, it's a great opportunity for me to come and have a, a look around what I think is a really competitive, professional, but friendly paddock, which I taken aback by the amount of laughter and you know it's very it's not exactly barbecue weather here but you know, <laughs> if it was you could you would hear the barbecues you're know, going in 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 the, in the fields in the background really nice and we had a great day of racing we absolutely have now just to give our viewers an idea of what we're about to do here now normally our paddock shows are, uh, are truncated with me interviewing people and then the clip is goes to the next interview and the next interview however You've, if, you've, if you're fans of, uh, of Henry's broadcasting of the Viva Tools British Championship, Anthony and Henry usually go for a walk around the paddock about this time of night. Yeah. We've had our first two heats, and Henry, to make you feel at home with the car championship, we're going to emulate what you do with the British Championship, and we're going to have a walk around, and we're going to do it as live. Hopefully there's going to be no outtakes. No. Nope. Can't never promise that, but here we go. We're going to have a start with the paddock. So... As Henry said, it's gone very, very chilly here. The weather we've had here at Glanny Goals today, we've had sleet, snow, rain, and then about 26 degrees sunshine at one point. Yeah, it's been very Welsh. Uh, uh, oh, like, right, yeah, okay. so we're in the, the, the Snowdonia foothills, uh, you know, uh, Pranam Da to everyone watching on the lunch break. Uh, good afternoon. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, somewhat uh, brisk. I think is the, uh, the, the the terminology that I would use. So we, we're gonna we're gonna shoot round the paddock and see who we come across. Um, firstly, the the first awning here on on the right here, Henry, um, Zipcart. Yep. Now Zipcart have had a bit of a resurgence when we lost Martin Hines, who was the name behind Zipcart, yep. who was Mr. Carting himself. Yep. Um, when Martin died, um, Zipcart sort of fell fell away, didn't it? But we've certainly had a resurgence. Earl and Tuesday, Tuesday being Martin's daughter and her husband, Earl, yep. um, have brought the Zipcard brand back to the karting, and not just back to karting, but back to the very forefront and the front of karting. And we've seen that today. Let's step inside and I see who we've got. Right, who have we got? Who's in here? Is Earl here? Is Earl here? Can't, can't, can't see Earl. I can't see Earl anywhere or Tuesday, but. Uh, some of these carts uh, have been very, very cool. We've got a couple of British touring car drivers floating around in the background. Uh, Josh Cook and uh, Jade Edwards helping out Al B J Stubbs. But uh, one of the drivers that has been really impressive. Well, there's Al B J Stubbs' cart. Uh, you see, he's just moved out of uh, Bambino's. But Alfine, oh, what? There's the pole sitting uh, Honda cart. That's yeah. uh, Kevin I Ivanov's cart. And uh, where's the number 15? Alfie Mayer. Is he not back yet? Or is he still in tech? Ah, he's, he's coming in a second, we're, we're told. There's a game going on. Uh, this is British Touring Car Catch. This is British actually. Touring Car Catch. This, yeah. is, this is how Karting Live TV brings you uh, grassroots, grassroots motorsport. Yes, Josh and Jade here looking after uh, Alfie J. Stubbs. Um, Josh, um, firstly, all right, you started in carts, yeah, all those years ago. He, you know, you're, you're a renowned... Uh, competitor in the British Touring Car Championship. How much of what we see on the track here at Glanny Gores can relate to real world touring cars, sports cars and everything else I've seen you drive in? How does it relate? Does it relate at all? Yeah, of course, this is the grassroots of, of motorsport. This is where certainly young drivers learn their craft. Um, it's incredible to, to be back here. It's been a while since I've been back at a kart track, but only sort of the last the last 12 months I've been back here, back here with, with Albie. Um, yeah. He's making in incredible progress, um, yeah, but is. yeah, you know the standard of driving is is really hard. I'm I'm glad I'm not in it anymore. Yeah, I mean, Jid, I bring you in, Jid Edwards, also a British touring car driver. Um, Jid, the standard of, of race craft that we see from the age of six out there on the track in Mambinos, through the cadets, etc., it, it 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 blows my mind. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, we were actually watching the electric little Bambino yes, race yeah. just before Albie was out. Yeah. And we were all stood there chatting away because we're waiting for the next race. Next minute, we were fully engrossed because there was about a five, six cart uh, battle for the lead. 
and they were changing positions. Now these kids are six to eight yep. years old, six to six, seven years old. It's unbelievable how mature they are to drive without that much contact and and, and fight for that lead. And it just carries on up the championships. And, and Albi, bless him, he's on he's on novice plate still, and he, yeah, he put it P3 in qualifying. And he was running the top five or six in both heats. So we're super proud of him. And it's just a case of not only being fast, but it's also looking after that mindset and staying calm as well. And seemingly, uh, even at a very young age, they can do that. Where is Albi, by the way? Albi is probably off playing something. Yeah, that's the thing. They, they get There's straight so out of the car, disappear <laughs> off, and you yeah. find them playing football. So, you know, the, the, you normally find the adults fuming about something. They're really angry. The kids, they're off. They've, they've yeah. got over and, it pretty and, quick. And they're playing together nicely yeah. with the kids that have just been battling, where if somebody did that to you out on the track in Park Fermi, you'd have the stewards on your back, wouldn't you? Absolutely. You don't talk for them for, to the rest <laughs> of the season, and you don't look at them. And But, no, they jump out of these carts. They'll be frustrated for 30 seconds, and they're yeah. off doing, yeah. doing yeah. all yeah. sorts yeah. of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. really cool atmosphere yeah who have we got in the awning then who can we talk to where's one of your drivers who's who's that guy yeah let's have a mechanic Mecha actually actually I do want to talk to right so what's your name firstly Harry Harry so Harry are you your LBJ Stubbs is mechanic I am, yeah. right so this is a great right so you've had the two heats super heats and final tomorrow so what ex without giving too many secrets away What's going on on this cart right now? What, what's the what's the preparation process? Um, really, just looking at everything, not letting anything slip through the net, and just doing the best you can, kind of thing. Performance of the regs and keeping it mint, giving it well, giving him the best equipment that he can have to um, to do his job. Uh, as long as I've done my job properly, I'm I'm all right. If, if he finishes first, if he finishes last, I'm all right with that. So. Right, be as technical as you want, right? Because I'm I'm a tech freak as well. So, and there'll be techy people and geeky people. So you're in good company here, uh, listening and watching. So tell us what what exactly are you looking for when the cart's coming? Because you know these guys behind us are in car racing. I'm familiar with car racing as well. We do a set down before we do a set up. Of course. Is it the same in carts? It's similar. Um, your basic principles, like warming it up, are exactly the same. Yeah. When it comes in, you want to get those hot pressures exactly the same. Yeah. Um, you'll look for anywhere between one and a half psi up to two and a half psi up, depending on what wheels you're running, depending on what track you're at, depending on what compound you're running. So many factors that play into it, and it's really cool to be able to do it on sort of a low budget scale and be able to just play around with stuff yourself, even with jetting and stuff like that. It's great yeah. to just have a mess around with it and, you know, the. Um, the consequences say you blow an engine in this the consequences aren't as much as blowing an engine in a touring car so. yes absolutely it's not not 40 grand is it so what 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 sorry henry no, I, I was going to say you've done a really good job today that deserves a high five <laughs> really sorry sorry <laughs> sorry right. there are a couple of drivers hiding over there right we should now Let, we, let's go and get them right you go and get the drivers because i want to ask one one more geeky techie question so what are the variables on setup? You know, we hear you guys talk about setup on a cart. When I race carts, there was nothing adjustable on the front. It was like if you had to jig your cart to get the setup right. So what exactly is the variable? Paul, if you want to try and get in here, because I think we're going to have something pointed at. Right, we've got drivers. We'll come to you in a minute. Oh, look at this. We're getting very, very technical now. Of course. So you can do your basics. You've got your toes. Um, you've got your so toe adjustment, obviously same as a car. You've got your toe links or track rods, as people call them. Um, that's quite an easy one. You've also got your caster, camber, and then there you've got shims that you can adjust ride height on. So if it's wet... You ride height? Ride height, of course. There's not much adjustment, <laughs> but if it's wet, you can you know, bring it up or, or you, can, you can actually rake it as well. So you can raise the rear up and have your front down. Um, and You're not going to tell me there's any aero on these things next, are you? I've seen slipstreams work, though. Of That's course. the incredible thing. You see them ducking. Yeah. You know? I mean, every little helps, doesn't it? Yeah. And then um, this is how we do it. We do it with lasers. Um, instead of, you know, tracking it with string, we just have lasers on the front end. Obviously, you can't track the rear because you've got a straight axle. Right. So yeah. that's it. Um, but, yeah, it's relati relatively simple. Just to stick the lasers on and 10 minutes, you've done a full setup. So Incredible. That's the same as your touring car, Josh. That ah, right. So who do you work for in touring car? Do you work for this guy? <laughs> Thankfully not. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, uh, yeah. I, uh, He's good for business, though, if you're running a team. Because he he's always crashing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
isn't everyone always crashing in touring cars? Yeah. I ran a touring car team, so it was good for business. Yeah, that's why I keep going back. I mean, last, last year I spanned Moffat, which was a good good partnership. Those three, just a total, total awesome crack to, to spend the year with. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I've come back for more, so it can't have been that bad. So. Right, so who were you with this year? Uh, I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, but... Um, it's going to be a big press. Yeah. Are you guys at Croft for the test? Allegedly, I don't know. All right, I'll see. I'll see you there. Right, right. We, we. This is behind the scenes, in the front of the scenes. Henry, I'm going to hand the mic to you. You found two drivers. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, yes, two drivers. So, Micromax, Alfie Mayer, and Benedictus Masiokas. We'll start with Alfie because you just come off the back of a very good day. Quickly talk about uh, how your how your day was and uh, how the zip cart's doing. Uh, in qualified, uh, I went out in fifth. I got away from everyone, so I was in my own there, and then everyone else behind me had, like, they had total. Qualified, I got sixth. In the first heat, I managed to get up to fourth in the first corner, and then going up to the top, uh, top corner, I got, I was in second, and then I managed to get Chloe McGill at the bottom of the hill, and then in the second heat, I, I got a good start, I got up to fourth again, and then I got into third at the top corner, and then going down to the last corner, I got Buddy Hugo, and then I got behind Logan o and Otoku. Then I started pulling the gap from him, and then he managed to close the gap because of the slipstream going down the top corner, and I managed to get away with it. Well, that's an excellent summary of your day. Lots of overtaking. Now, can we have a one-word answer to this next question? Can you win tomorrow? Yes. There we go. OK, but this man here might have something to say about it because Benedictus Masiokas, you were in the chasing pack, weren't you? You, you were getting close that last race. You pushed, uh, pushed Alfie quite hard. Um. Have you, OK, have you had a good day, number one? And is it going to be warmer tomorrow because it's absolutely f -f 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 freezing at the moment? So have you had a good day and is it going to be warmer tomorrow? Yes, and... I hope it would be warmer tomorrow. Everybody hopes it's going to be warmer. Okay, so how are you going to beat this man? Um, to just go as fast as I can and just push myself. Just go as fast as you can, push yourself, that's the name of the game. Uh, anyone you want to thank? I'm noticing a couple of logos on there. My dad, um, David, my mechanic, and Zipcott. Okay, there we go. Anyone else you want to uh, thank? My mum, my dad, Zipcar, RPM and David. RPM and David. Is that Mr. Bell Chambers? Is that they? <gasps> Socks are off. Bell Chambers is back in the paddock. Here we go now. Well, uh, there's uh, various things going on. So what, what do you think of having these two uh, idiots, I mean, touring car drivers around, around you helping out? You know, you watch them on TV and then uh, you see them. What do you, what do you think about having, having them around? Is that good, good for you guys? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. Right. Right. Come on. Okay. Yeah. They, they, some. Someone just called you Bobby Thompson, uh, Josh. So I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> right. Let's go this way. We're, we're trying to stay inside the awnings uh, because it's so cold. But thank you to uh, thank you to Benedictus and thank you to Alfie. Uh, first media commitment of the year done. Uh, lots of lots of. You can see uh, Luke Jardine's car going out there. But Henry's got the we, mic, which is great. What we got the? Put yeah, you can put your hand in your pocket. Right. Let's go. I'll let you out there, Mr. Cameron. There you go. Very good. Here's the. Uh, we'll we'll we'll. Go up to the uh, next awning as quick as we as quick as we can, just to get back inside for a minute. Uh, we've I got wanted, the. I wanted, I wanted your thoughts, Henry, on on the, um, the car championship. Yes. So it's a national series. Yes. It's it's purely been be between the ages of six and fifteen. Yep. Do, uh, you've 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 been around karting a, a lot longer than uh, as card broadcasting. So do you find that? the drivers that you'll see this year in your Vera Tools British Championship that you're going to be covering will have come from this kind of grounding in the car the car championship. It's the first year it's MSUK sanctioning, but it's been around for a few years now, this series. Yeah, it has. And I, you, you do see that because this is a great, great training ground, a great proving ground. It's a, it's a national championship. 
in its own right. So, you know, that's what we have to do. Uh, we'll go into the MP driver, or the M, uh, MP driver coaching? MP coaching, MP coaching tent. It, it is. Hello, we're coming in there because it's very, very cold out here and it's warmer. Right, here we go, let's go. Um, yes, it's Joe, to answer your question. Oh, they got a, we like this team. Um, you will see a lot of drivers moving up out of this championship. Say moving up, moving across. I don't think it's fair to say that this is a, no, because this is so good in its own right driver will move across uh, how we right talk a little bit about the mp coaching setup then take we it away basically bambino mighty e bambino coma and micro max we've got newman jensen james williams we've got christian doshi freddie pinnell ollie will uh, ollie west who's doing both mighty e and coma which is an absolute nightmare um, Ollie, Ollie is right here. Right. Okay, Ollie. there we go. Brilliant. Sorry. No, you go. This guy, as I've, the I've been, I've, I'm going to come down here, right? Because I've been, I was saying to Henry when we were watching your heats, right? Well, firstly, brilliant, utterly awesome. I watch car racing all over the world, right? But that mighty Bambino race that I've just watched is one of the best motor races I've ever seen. Now then, Ollie, the reason why I wanted to catch all of you is, you drive the C50. And the electric cart, is that right? Yes, it is correct. And I drive Miami cart as well. L. Wow, so you drive everything then? <laughs> I only drive. I mainly drive. I drive basically all the coma carts. Right, what I want to ask you, Ollie, which is the best to drive? The coma and the Miami. What about the electric one? Because they look really fast. I like the electric one too. Can you hear yourself think as well on the electric one? Because they're really quiet, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I can't hear myself think. <laughs> yeah. So is, is there any difference then from your petrol engine cart and your electric cart from when you're driving it? Do you have to drive it differently at all? Um, not really. We've got the same tyres. Right. And when you put the throttle down in the electric, it just goes immediately. You see his eyes light up there, everybody. See, see that? All his eyes light up there. It just goes. Is it really that quick? Yeah, it is, because wow. it's electric. Yeah. Yeah, so, so gathering from that, then, that electric car must be really good to drive, is it? It is really good to drive. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Ollie, I'm going to uh, give Henry the mic back, because we've got some questions to ask uh, the, the adults as well. Uh, and it's going to take me a little while to get up from here. So if anyone can help me. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say, well, uh, yeah, there we go. We're up here. So, I mean, Ollie will drive anything. He'll drive his dad's Audi home, given half a chance. Um, talk about, just, just quickly, before we, before we, before we have to, to move on, uh, but the difference between moving the components over, the mighty on the same chassis, is that right? You, you know, the, the chassis, you can use the same chassis, just, just change the power unit, is that uh, correct? Correct, 100% correct. Obviously, the mighty just opens up the platform for all the engines, literally every chassis, from your right Bambino straight to your RCE, your Synergy, all of them. Um, obviously, car number 28, he's running on a Birrell. Uh, yep. it, it just opens the platform up for all of them. And, and the other thing that was, was sort of not held electric karting back, but it's been a, a stick in the mud, is the weight of the power unit. How much does uh, Coma Bambino weigh, uh, engine and cart, and then a mighty Bambino? What's the difference? Because that's important for families, you know, independence, you know, can mum and dad lift it out of the back of the truck at, or the back of the van at the end of the day? There is, being brutally honest, there's differences in the chassis and the way in which they're developed with the materials that they use. The, the RCE is slightly heavier than the right because the right was designed and built, developed for the Coma petrol engine. The RCE, being involved with my TE right from the start, has developed itself to work alongside the electric engine that slight little bit better. So there is a slight weight advantage, but you're only talking five kilos difference. Um, other than that, there is literally nothing. Everything's exactly the same. Components move over the whole lot. It's it's the the electric platform for me is the future to be involved in. It it's it opens it up to drivers, set up your dad and lads. Yep. They don't necessarily have to be in a team. You get that coaching support and all the rest of it. But your dad and lad could literally get it out the boot of their you know Vauxhall Insignia, put the table out, get the trolley out, and go racing. And that's 
It's fantastic. It's the, for me, it's the way. I'm, I'm sticking with my TE for the rest of the time. Oh, wow, so good. To you. Again, so it's accessibility is the key uh, to members of the planet. Now, uh, oh, we've got to go outside. Uh, you can Joe, bring him in here. you, you can bring him in here, right, oh, young man? Okay. There's a there's a young driver there. We can't go outside because it's so. Here. Okay, right, come this way. Uh, he's not uh, he's sponsored not sponsored by Nike. Other uh, training and running school brands are available. First of all, name, rank, serial number, go kart number, and how your day went today. Go. Jensen Pritchard, two three five, junior max, and uh, in quality we were P two. Uh, should have been P one, but we got held up. Uh, it was a really good day in the office, um, P6 in Heat 1, um, but then in Heat 2 we got P10. Uh, it's all right, uh, special mention to Zach Lapsey and Matty Hingley for the coaching. I've seen Hingley there, the ultimate RT going out. Now the last time we saw, I saw you, we were you were racing somewhere far warmer than it was. I mean the scenery wasn't quite as nice in uh, in Dubai, but it was, uh, how, what's it like, you know, being able to travel around and, you know, do a race here, a, ra a race there? It's good fun, like um, you get to see loads of scenery, it's good fun, like nice and hot, it's good fun, yeah, I like it. Now, question, you, you've you got the mighty E Bambinos, yeah, you're a junior, yeah. so you could potentially do an e, uh, you know, Rotax E20 junior, things like that, uh, what would it take to get you off your combustion engine cart, or more, 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 than, more than that, what would it get you as a parent to get off the combustion engine cart to go electric karting with Jensen at his age? What are the main factors that you would look for as a racing dad who might have to lift the thing up and down? Yeah, well, to be honest, I think as long as it's more widely known and widely sort of raced, if you like, I mean, at the minute, I think it's sort of just started in its infancy. So I think, like, once it picks up and the numbers, obviously, and obviously the, the grids that we've got in junior road tax, yeah. if they go that way, then obviously we'll probably go that way as well. So it's not that we're road tax and we're, that's where we're staying. It's just, it's just, obviously, if the opportunity is there and obviously everyone else is jumping ship, then obviously we'll do that as well, hopefully. Yeah, what, what, what do you think? Will you get an, an electric car given half? Given well, of course you would. You're a driver. You're like, if someone else is paying for it, I'm in it. Yeah. Um, whatever the best grid is and where I can learn the most from, that's probably where I'd go. Yeah. OK, last question. Where are we going to see you when it all shakes out tomorrow? Oh, P1. There we go. P1. Great, great, great answer. Great answer. All right, Joe, there we go. You've, you've, you've had your hands in your pockets and warmed hey, things hey, up. Hey, no. <laughs> I've warmed my hands nicely. Um, Henry, that you know what? We've soaked up about what? How many minutes, Paul? We've soaked up 23 minutes, so we've got to wind it up. Okay, yeah. Um, we've had, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask your thoughts. You know, you see yeah. a lot of karting. You see a lot of international karting as well. Um, the racing we've seen today, especially, you know, I taught Ollie West there about, about his racing. But, yeah. you know, from my point of view, um, I would have to go quite a distance to say I'd seen a better motor race than we saw from that Bambino, electric Bambino race. Yeah, the, 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 the second heat in the mighty Bambinos, five drivers all crisscrossing uh, over, you know, taking different lines, you know, undercutting and overcutting, you know, getting the, the crossover moves and keeping it all on the tarmac. And, and it's great. That's great. That's a really good grounding level uh, for these drivers. The four strokes, the Hondas, you know, you've got to be smooth. You've got to maintain momentum. So you can't just fire it off into a corner, flick the back end out, press the gas pedal and expect it to go because you'll lose so much momentum. So that's, you know, keeping things smooth. Um, I like Junior Primo as well. I think that's yeah. a great initiative uh, to help drivers, uh, number one, who you know, may be a little bit younger, uh, maybe a little bit less well-funded. They can, you know, they can race. They don't have to just jump out of uh, a small, you know, cadet uh, size cart into a full size cart you know uh you know with with juniors um, but also i want to say you know there, there was uh, um maya steven as uh, it maya and uh, yeah. bella fairclough yeah, yeah. second and third you know the girls that's that's it's really good to see as well we just saw jade edwards uh, talking you know but uh, to see to see young girls you know doing well in karting you know in the junior level because traditionally you get a lot of drivers a lot of female drivers in cadets or in inter micro but then when you move to juniors and it gets more aggressive it gets more physical that's when yeah. they start to drop away simply be because oh you know it's it, it's it's just yeah it, it's getting smashed off all the time you know yeah, so yeah. They, so and that, that's really good to see as well
Well, Maya Stevens and Bella Fairclough will have already had their superheats when you uh, when you see this go out tomorrow lunchtime. We're about to go into the finals. You can find this uh, little grid walk of Henry and I on Facebook, on our Facebook page. But uh, he's to another great day's racing. If it's half as good as today's been, then we're in for a treat. Hey, Henry, see you tomorrow.
Welcome back, everybody. We are just about to get going with the first of our finals. Uh, my name is Joe Bradley. Nothing's changed here. I'm still with Henry Baudet. Henry hasn't run away. We still haven't frightened you off, Henry. <laughs> not at all, not um, at all. We've got the winner of round one at Wilton Mill, who's on the pole position. Uh, Ryan White is his name. He's carrying the number one because he is the MSUK British champion in this class. Yes. And it's Archie Cadden who is going to have a go at taking that race win from Ryan White. He's alongside. Second row of the grid. I think that's on their list of things to do as well. With Ralphie Branscombe and Cian Sullivan. Yes. Luke McGall, Ricky McIntosh are on row three. Row four is Elliot Bork and Ed Spain. Uh, Riley Blakemore and Ronnie Smart are on row five. Row six is Ashton Horsepool and Magiris Kovekis. Then we've got Luke Jardine and Oliver Ratton on row seven. Row eight is Archie Loveridge and Noah Clare. Uh, Otto, Amy and Kevin Ivanov are on row nine. Look out for the number 50 coming back through after that DNF. Absolutely. Um, Ella Dixon and Jack Wikes are on row 10. Row 11 is Jacob Letherby and Daniel Barton. And then we've got Tyler Banks and Finley Thursfield, Freddie Budd and Sophie Morris, Albie Smith and Ollie Knox, Jane Prakash and Rebecca Ristol. Row 16, Harley Bradbury Stretton and Jerry Duffersey. James Pearson and Reggie Duffersey round off the 17 rows of Cadet Cart Grid. Honda Cadets, Henry. Um, yep, and a race within a race. We've got the best novice trophy as well because there's a bunch of novices in this race. Right, and that will be... We haven't got any kind of signage on the uh, well, that script from the timing and scoring. For those of you watching, it's the 41 of Noah Clare, the 77 of Otto Amy. Uh, and then Sophie Morris, the 29, the 28 of Ollie Knox, J.M. Prakash, Rebecca Restall, Jerry Duffersey, Reggie Duffersey, Harley Bradbury Stretton, and James Pearson. And right. I had, yes, and uh, I spoke to Otto Amy's family uh, during the lunch break there. They got Tom Smith International. Uh, he's put the TSI setup on that uh, uh, number 77 cart as well. So, again, it's, it's, we're looking at the front of the grid, obviously, Joe, and we're yep, about to start. We will keep our eye on yeah, that uh, novice battle, though, Henry. We'll keep our wary eye on that. We're about to go the five-second grid. Warning comes. We've got the red lights on, and then we will go racing when the red lights go out. And Ryan White gets off the line in fine style, but that's Ricky McIntosh around the outside from row three. Wow. And already up to second down the inside of Archie Cannon and on to the tail of Ryan White goes Ricky McIntosh into fantastic the spoon for start. the first time absolutely fantastic start you know the, 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 the gap open to the outside he had the momentum used it crossed over to the inside of the track and that is a net gain of five places incredible incredible Four places start. rather yeah great Brilliant start can and he hold on now that's well, the question can he hold on to the rear bumper of Ryan White and can Ryan White hold back remember our finals are a bit longer. Ten yes. minutes and one lap here for Honda Cadets. Ten minutes and one lap. Two more minutes of racing than we've seen so far in our heats and super heats. So that's two more minutes of entertainment, certainly for you and I, Henry. Certainly. As this Honda Cadet train comes through and there really are nose to tail. It's Ryan White, Ricky McIntosh, Ralphie Branscombe, Archie Cannon, Luke McGall, Elliot Bork, Kean Sullivan, Ed Spain, Majerus Kavekis, and it's Riley Blakemore, the rounders off, rounds off that top ten. Uh, and Kevin... Ivanov up seven places from 18th to 11th. Archie Loveridge, uh, watch for him as well. He's down in 12th position. Uh, you've got the likes of Ed Spain down in 8th as well we're looking to. But some new drivers coming to the fore. We haven't seen Ricky McIntosh. We haven't seen Ralphie Branscombe this far up yeah. all weekend. Oh and now yeah. they're there. They are very much there, aren't they? And I know, I know at this stage of any final the longer race we are we do tend to play a waiting game McIntosh sliding a bit wide there I notice that's allowed uh, that's allowed Branscombe to get a little bit alongside and he's dropped off a little yeah. bit from I say a little bit oh it's what two carts lengths which is probably going to disappear by the time we get the spoon yeah because right you can see Ralphie Branscombe he's just on the rear bumper of Ricky McIntosh pushing him back up yep and there we go it has disappeared and actually McIntosh looking to the inside but no we could see Ryan White moving across and said no no I'm going to break and uh, let the field uh, uh, go single file again he didn't try and make it uh, you know too wide at this stage which could have potentially ended a disaster because he could see ryan white was moving over to defend now i uh, did see uh jm prakash and freddie budd uh going off track early and ollie knox one of our novices is already retired so of about there's about 10 to 12 novices in the field and at the moment uh you know well, we concentrate on this fantastic battle for the race lead i think the leading novice is the number 41 of Noah Clare uh, in about 18th position. 
So still all to play for. Seven and a half minutes have ticked by. There's a, a challenge for second oh. down the inside over the brow of the hill. And Ricky McIntosh a little bit hung out to dry as Archie Cannon and Ralphie Branscombe go through. And that's what can happen there, isn't it? If you find yourself on the outside, you just cannot get back to that right-hand apex like through the Spoon. Thing. Absolutely. Rick, uh, Ricky McIntosh now in fourth. Ryan White hasn't pulled away at all because now it's Archie Cannon and Ralphie Branscombe who are pestering him. Yes, and uh, oh, behind, uh, behind Ricky McIntosh there, you can see uh, Cart's... Uh, just sort of bouncing over the curbs a little bit. That was, uh, I think, Ralphie Branscombe and Luke McGall. Uh, so Luke McGall was, uh, obviously, Luke McGall and Kean Sullivan that were just, uh, uh, you know, trying to go side by side. You can see where the top four have now opened up a little bit of a gap. Uh, you can see the, the number three sticker flapping off the rear bumper of that all-black livery plain bodywork for... Uh, uh, Ricky McIntosh. That tells me two things. Number one, they haven't got a sponsor. And number two, he's concerned about the weight limit. He's a bit see, tall, isn't he? He is a he's, bit tall. Look how tall Ricky McIntosh is. He's, he's growing, isn't and, he? And graphics kits weigh 500 grams. They weigh 500 grams. So half a kilo. Half a kilo for a graphics kit. Mm, and right. so, you okay. know, you, you, you take them off if, if you are struggling to meet the weight limit. You see a lot of that with taller yeah, drivers. Yeah, yeah. yeah half, 500 grams, it makes a difference, I, ladies and gentlemen. I actually like that plain black livery it gives us the kind of the, 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 the oh I'm, well. I'm not saying he's got a sinister character <laughs> but <laughs> you know the black helmet the, man and in the black. black livery the man in black ricky martin and he's got the number three twice and, on and his car yeah he's got so he's triple three double three a double three he? if anyone any nascar fan yeah that was a dale earnhardt reference the yes man the in number black. three yes of yes <laughs> yes first three talking of threes this uh, first three Ryan White, Archie Cannon and Ralphie Branscombe beginning to break away slightly from Ricky McIntosh, who's falling back towards Luke McGall, Ed Spain, Keane Sullivan, Elliot Bork. The number one has led from the start. He's had a couple of challenges, which he's kind of took in his stride. But I just get the feeling there as we're just a few seconds away from the half, the half distance mark, Henry. Yeah. I get a feeling that all of these drivers have kind of just... Oh, so yeah. if, I'm not going to say treading water because they are flat out, but they are. There's a little bit left in the toolkit for oh, the last two minutes. Absolutely, this has been a very smart tactical race so far. No one has shown their full hand just yet. You could almost see if these uh, they're too young to play cards, but I, if you uh, lift up the visors on these drivers, you could see them all using their poker face. Right, yes, at the their moment. snap, their snap face. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're snapping. Yeah, yeah, snap. Yeah. Yeah, so Uno. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's about it. But yeah, yeah, Uno they, face, yeah. Uh, but I mean, you know, so McIntosh in fourth place is falling off a little bit from these three. So White, and, Cannon and, and Branscombe. It's clear to see the first three are, you know, seasoned Honda Cadet drivers. Yes. And they know by, by not challenging one another and working together, they can break away. Yes. And, and the three of them are going to break away. And it's not until the final two minutes that it's going to be... All bets are off. And, and, and Ed Spain, in fifth position, has sort of recognised the danger uh, that he's in uh, and has tried to pass. I think he has made the move. However, that would have temporarily extended the advantage that these three drivers on your screen hold. However, Spain thinking, OK, uh, sorry, Ricky, but uh, I'm faster than you and I've got to go and I've got to go now. Well, coming into this second round here at GYG, uh, Ed Spain was our championship leader. Mm. He finished second to Ryan White in the final at Wilton Mill, but he had a great points haul in the, in the heats and the super heats, maximised that, yeah. 40 points and 60 points. That With that second place, puts him in the, in the lead of the championship. So Ed Spain will want to get on terms with the two, the three carts ahead of him. So we'll see if he... I mean, he's got the legs. Look at that. He's, yeah. broke, he's broke free he's already. of Ricky McIntosh, as has Luke McGall and Elliot Buck. They've gotten by Ricky McIntosh. So Ricky McIntosh, after that fabulous start, yep. he's then gone back to where he perhaps was on the grid. That's so, right. The, yeah. the, the, the pace that but he was running... Crack, the crack, crack and start. Crack, crack, crack and start. He's, he's given himself... A, Ricky, what that start did, he, that gave Ricky McIntosh every opportunity to finish as high up as his package. That's right. As yeah. his, his cart and engine package allow, would allow him to. You know, he's maximizing what he's got at the moment. Um, but uh, you could see Ed Spain, the first of those ambition motorsport carts, the turquoise. It's uh, Paul James's team. And I know that last year he had Jason Dredge helping him out. Um, I've seen, I haven't seen Jason this weekend. I've seen Paul. Um, bouncing around the paddock. It's good to see uh, Paul back in the paddock. But yeah, Ed Spain in the number 72, 
trying to close in. And, of course, these three, like you said, experienced, seasoned campaigners in Honda Cadet, as uh, they were playing nice just as uh, Archie yeah. Cannon what? starts to move around. How much time have we got on the clock there? Two minutes. Two yeah. minutes. This is when it starts to get... Well, from our point of view, this is when it starts to get good. Yeah, yeah. It's, if you're it's Ryan a, White, this is when it starts to get a little bit of, an, of, a, of a, a, a little bit too fussy, this really, because he's going to have them chomping at his heels. And fastest lap of the race came yep. a couple of laps ago from Ralphie Branscombe. That's the cart in third place behind Ryan White. These three here are now beginning to separate somewhat. So as, as we get towards the... Ed Spain, sorry, Joe, oh, half a on. second quicker than the three leaders on this last lap. Brilliant. So he's going to catch them. He's Brilliant. going we're to catch them. So that means, Henry, three-card battle becomes a four-card battle. Is that number 72 there, yep. Ed Spain, current championship leader coming into this round, is chasing off after them, and we could have a four-card battle. At the moment, though, it's very much a three-card battle. Ryan White, Archie Cannon, Ralphie Branscombe, that's the three. That's the top three. That's the podium right now yep. with about a minute left. And uh, I'd say Kevin Ivanov has uh, moved up into eighth position. So he's gained lots of uh, places, but again, track position not on his side. And now the gap. So he's not going to be a factor, even though he has gained quite a few places. So we've got some familiar names and some new names who are going to fight it out over the final minute plus a lap of this Honda Cadet final. We head down Dragon Straight. With the first time you see Ryan White start to move to the inside, uh, def the defensive line down Dragon Straight. And now Ed Spain is going to catch them hand over fist. He is because Ryan White, as you say, now beginning to think defensively. We are going to have two more laps. Uh, oh. We are going to have two more laps and, uh, after this one. So. Oh. Yeah, I know. I, You're getting I, excited, aren't I, you? I, I, but, you know, <laughs> but, but also, you know, we're going to say, guess, yeah. what's, guess, what's, up, guess what's in front of them? Traffic. Oh, we've, have we got traffic We've coming into play? We, we had, didn't we have traffic coming into play in one of the heats? One yes, of the super in, heats? in almost every uh, heat after race. eight minutes, yep. So and the traffic is... Oh, it's a little bit ahead of them, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's 10 seconds to go. So two laps now. There's the traffic. And yeah. they're going to have to negotiate. But you know what? It, it, the, the, for the back markers, they're now being caught at the end of a 10-minute race, whereas in the heats and the super heats, they were being caught at the end of a seven-minute race. So they've upped their pace over the course of the weekend as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, Ryan White was very clever in the super heat uh, when he did have to deal with the traffic. Yes. And I suspect that Ryan White will still have that head on his shoulders, that experienced head, carrying the number one. We've got the current British champion here in the car championship racing with us he came second he's the vice champion for the 2023 kart championship so we have got the cream of the honda cadet crop there at the front of this field and all the way down the field to be honest it's oh, the yes. one lap to go board now oh ho, game uh, on the dinner bell has rung the ryan white just looking over his shoulder there he's gonna have to time this he's got the bat markers gonna come into play at spoon if he's not careful he could end up tripping over as he goes down the inside of the number 14 and there is Archie Cannon going with him and Ralphie Branscombe as well, as well as Ed Spain. Yep. So they've cleared defensive into the carousel. Yes, indeed. And he's going to have another two carts to deal with. That's going to be uh, Reggie Duffersey and uh, Jayam uh, Prakash uh, towards him. And the 24 cart does get out of the way. Oh, he... So one cart, one corner to go. Coming out of the compression corner now. Oh, Cannon gets sideways. And Ryan White... At the inside, takes the win, just... <laughs> Look at that second place, though. Archie Cannon went sideways, as you said, yeah. through, the, through the compression section of the track. That allowed Branscombe right with him out of the final turn. They were side-by-side side across the line, and it was Ryan White who took the win. Just, what, that's a tenth of a second ah. to second place Archie Cannon. 47 thousands of a second, side-by-side, side across the line, second and third. That's the podium, White Cannon and Branscombe. But not that far away was championship leader Ed Spain, Luke McGall fifth, sixth was Elliot Ball, Kevin Ivanoff seventh, Kean Sullivan eighth, ninth was Archie Loveridge. And then uh, a bit of a recovery drive in this uh, final was uh, the drive to 10th yeah, for sure. uh, Magiris Kovekis. Uh, just outside the top 10, Riley Blakemore, uh, Ricky McIntosh, Albie Smith, 
and then I've just lost the Oliver time of the scoring next, there as we go I, to the next event. So. But I did notice that uh, unofficially the leading novice home was the number 77 of Otto Amy in about 17th or 18th position. So congratulations uh, to, I think what, what won it for him was the farmer's jacket that uh, Tom Smith is wearing. Um, every <laughs> every uh, Surrey-based estate agent's uh, uh, attire, uh, Tom Smith. <laughs> and, uh, I'm only saying this because a couple, uh, many years ago uh, at, at, a, at a world finals, Tom Smith was mechanicking. We were in Brazil. And, of course, me being the clever so-and-so that I am, I was jokingly asking, I said, so, Tom, what's in your toolbox then? And he turned around and his answer would have got, could have got us all ejected from the circuit. Um, it was something with <laughs> narcotics and firearms, oh which, there wa which there wasn't. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, he yeah, thought, yeah. I will outsmart Henry, yeah. who's trying to be smart himself. Yes. But, he um, should never try to be funny. Uh, yeah, no, no, he should never. Uh, See, you're naturally funny, I, I, I'm, I'm naturally funny in the head. <laughs> <laughs> funny but, peculiar. Uh, yes, but, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Tom Smith's answer, which will live, will live with me forever, is, is one of those. Luckily, we're only on a circuit broadcast, not a live stream. Tremendous. Uh, yes, but you, you sort of... And we were in Brazil where there were uh, armed security guards around yes. the circuit. Did you have them escorting you to your hotel? I, 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 yes, we did. Yes, yes yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, we did. did. I've we, been we, there with the World did. Endurance Championship. We did. We, uh, I had to take a different route back from the circuit yeah, hotel yeah. every yeah, day. Really? Yes. yes. Was yeah. that Where were you? Sao Paulo? Uh, no, we were in Pariaba in the north oh, right. of Brazil. Oh, the nice part. The no uh, yeah, we used to be part of lovely flavellas. There was a nice farm in the middle of a roundabout with one farmer and three somewhat dilapidated looking cows <laughs> Incredible, in, in the middle it? of a roundabout. Yep, it was a, 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 a different world is Brazil. It's intoxicating and incredibly uh, it's scary, I think, and it's in infuriating uh, yeah. in all those words. And but, scary. Uh, yeah, and scary, yes. And yes, scary. yes, yes. Um, um, however, talk, moving swiftly on. Talking of scary, um, uh, Daniel Hartley. Yes. He took maximum points at round one's heats. Yes. Maximum points at round one's super heats. And maximum points by winning round one at Wilton Mill. And I have to say, a good Matty Hingley and Ultima R are running him this weekend. Matty Hingley is, you know, he's the younger brother of Ultima R team boss Ben Hingley, who is with other drivers in their stable at another circuit, uh, the far smaller events than this weekend. Um, uh, but so here's the, but they've entrusted. You know, Matty with the uh, the tools and the keys to the ultimate R van uh, for this for this round. Oh and Matty goodness, is, is Matty Hing 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 now old enough to drive? He is old enough to dr uh, drive a, a Mercedes Sprinter. Yes, I I did want to say though I um I I know that Bonner and Julie their parents are watching at home. Was there a massive scrape down the side of the Ultima R van when Matty left? <laughs> Or is that something I'm, I'm Is this uh, Henry Baudet being mischievous? <laughs> Me? No, but um, again, but you were saying, Daniel's doing a great job, and so is Matty. Uh, oh, Dan, I tell you what, he's, he's certainly the class of this junior primo field. Uh, he's under 14, remember, yep. which is, allows him to be part of the junior primo grid. Uh, he's on the pole position with maximum scores in the heats and super heats. Alongside him is a very strong, uh, he's had a very strong weekend, Alfie Forrester. Yep. He lines up on the long side, uh, uh, on the front row. Uh, Maya Simpson, an equally strong weekend, puts Maya in third and on the second row alongside Ethan Bath. Tyler Davis and Thomas Butcher on row three. Then we've got our commentary colleague, Eddie, Eddie Stewart. Stewart, who's uh, be very happy with that seventh, mm -hmm. no doubt. Leighton Kelly alongside on row four. Ewan Stevenson finds himself on row five with Bella Fairclough, who you remember had that mechanical yes. in the first superheat, lost a side pod, dad a DNF, that's put her where she is. So have a, be, be aware, the number 15, the bright yellow card in the midfield will be coming through and, and trying to overtake, and indeed overtaking, some of those drivers ahead of her, no doubt. And, uh, and Bella is working with Ollie Varney and the Kart Smart, ah, Ollie right. Varney's Kart Smart driver training, coaching program yes. as well. So look for her. Uh, yeah, yeah, obviously, Ellis Dealey, Sophia Caldwell, Laurie McVie and Riley Mason Lewis, Oscar Pitt. So, ah, oh, there's the number 14 car. That's Sophia Caldwell. Um, I should get to it. She's away. Yeah. So, Oscar Pitt, we saw him uh, drive so well in Super Heat number one, finished sixth. And then he didn't go out for heat number two. Uh, we wondered why. Uh, and it's because the yoke on the Tony cart that he's using snapped. And that was game over. But thanks to uh, Kieran Crawley at M Sport and uh, uh, Cato Adams, who's got the welder and the, uh, the jig, yeah. that cart is now uh, back. The dad, dad picked it up on Wednesday. And uh, 
Oscar broke it on Sunday. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. But Nathan yeah. Chafer, he's got he's got Chafer tune uh, as, yeah. on this. So watch for the welded. And but want to say very quickly, that's great. So Kieran Acquire's M Sport team, you know, Nathan Chafer, they're running Oscar Pit. Kato Motorsport is a rival, but he makes sure that the kid is out there racing. That's what uh, that, that that's the spirit. Yes. That's certainly the spirit of the car championship. Where, yeah, intense rivalry on the track, but, but uh, camaraderie off the track. Here we go then. It's, they're getting the wave around. It's a false start flag that we're going to see yes. from our marshals post. The, uh, the yellow triangle and gone green background. But, uh, yeah, you, 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 want to, you want to win one of these races by beating everybody on track. Not because half the drivers couldn't go out and race because uh, they had problems that, you know, you could have helped with but didn't. That's yeah, the, I, I mean, mean, it's, it's it, you know, obviously, if, if it's not possible to get somebody we, out there, we, they won't. But if, if it we, was, they You know will. what? In fairness, we do see that throughout karting. I'm not sure at the, I would call the Vera Tills British Championship the top level of national karting. It, 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 it is. It's the it, British it, Championship. Yeah, it's, okay, yes. And you, would you get ever see Dan Holland welding a KR Sport or a um, or a strawberry car? I mean, I know they've got their own resources to do that, but it's not unheard of. No, I know. But I know. But, but also, the at, that, at the lap level, the big teams are so well equipped themselves. They That's can right. deal with yeah, they anything. Deal with just about anything apart from a tornado, a flood, or locusts. But I mean, you know, they do carry some good bug spray. However, here we go. Second time of asking. Hartley, Forrester, Simpson and Bath. Now the lights are out. Now we're off and racing through Clubhouse Corner. We go down the Dragon Street under nice sunshine in the Sunday afternoon here in the North Wales countryside. Up the hill towards Boonkiv. Hartley getting away sideways. That yellow cut, the first of two yellow cuts, that wasn't Bella Fair Le- Club. Leighton Kelly, I, I think. think. it was Leighton Kelly getting a bit, uh, you know, high, wide and handsome going through a, a spoon curve. He's in fifth position as uh, Hartley tries to do what he's done all weekend and just drive away from the field. Now, that's Maya Simpson on the Tony cart. That's yes. gotten ahead of front row starter Alfie Forrester. Mm. Again, starting behind Daniel Hartley. She was able to stick with Hartley through turn one and all the way up the straight. Here they come then, one lap completed. Hartley, Maya Simpson, Alfie Forrester, Butcher, Bath, Davis, Fairclough, Kelly, Eddie Stewart, Ewan Stevenson. Where is Bella Fairclough? She's up to seventh there. I hurried past her name. She's already cleared Leighton Kelly and Eddie Stewart. Mm. And next on the list is Tyler Davis. Keep an eye on the bright yellow cart there just down the order. Yes, indeed. Now, the top three come down the hill into the carousel on lap number two. Hartley, Simpson, Forrester. It was, you know, can Maya Simpson match Daniel Hartley's pace? If she can just stay in his wheel tracks, you know, relatively, then Hartley will unintentionally sort of tow Simpson around. You'll know this, Joe. If, you, if you're following somebody in a cart, you end up, you can pick up pace just by literally following their lines, following their wheel tracks, and, and you know, then you're not in the slipstream of them, but they are towing you around and towing you away from the rest of the field. She's quite literally got her head down yep, to and to... charging through, but you know what? Daniel Hartley's got that cart skipping oh. across the track. Yeah, it, I, mean, it, I mean, that was a balance thing. A balance thing again at the, c- at the in, carousel. Coming into the spoon there, you yeah. saw the back end, and it was a perfect power. It was a perfect slide. He, even though the back end was stepping out, he was entirely 100% in control. And that's getting the car to rotate, yes. to straighten up that rear axle, to get it firing out the corner. Yep. They don't like going through... S- to constant radius curves no, to no. carts because of the solid rear axle. So you've got to get it to change direction. We saw Maya Simpson do Maya Simpson doing exactly the same sort mm-hmm. of thing. She'll get her head down again, getting behind the fairing. Wow. There's a challenge for third as Thomas Butcher comes alongside Alfie Forrester. He doesn't make the move though. He has to slot back in at Spoon, firing down the hill towards the carousel. And Simpson there just tugging the wheel to get it to turn. And yep. the rear end going with it. That's the technique that we're seeing here at the front end of the field. And uh, so, well, this is second, third and fourth on the track. Ethan Bath, Ty- or Tyler Davis is now up into fifth position uh, with uh, six places rather. With Bella Fairclough, Leighton Kelly, Eddie Stewart and Ellis Deedy right behind him. There's the chasing pack. But uh, these three carts now know the tail. And this is where Maya Simpson, she's now lost the... The toe yeah, yeah, of Daniel Hartley. So Hartley is now out on his own, and this is the main game. It's the battle for second. Yeah, she's uh, kind of lost that toe. She taps her helmet 
indicating to Alfie Forrester, let's work let's together. Let's push me. Let's leave me on this second step of the podium yeah, yeah. Uh, until <laughs> yeah. the flag. Uh, however, Alfie Forrest has dropped a little bit away from her, so she's got nothing to worry about. They were very, very close together going into this lap, and now that we've got uh, Mia Simpson beginning to just break away, again, not quite enough to get onto the back end of that cart of Daniel Hartley. He's disappeared at the line. It was 1.7 seconds. Mm. And has just set the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, so he's, he's not hanging back, is he? Yeah, 42.772 seconds. That was six-tenths quicker than Maya Simpson and now Maya Simpson with six minutes to go it's early st- we were not even we're at halfway about I know, we're now. Not, are we? yeah uh, but uh, still a minute from halfway a minute from halfway yeah, yeah. sorry I think it's 12 minutes no, it's only 10 <laughs> yeah. minutes and and yet here we are Simpson now uh, will have to fight a rear guard action although as we look back she's got to be careful because last time around Tyler Davis Ethan Bath and Bella Fairclough we're all quicker than Maya Simpson. That, that is what we see all the time, isn't it? Because these three carts coming together for second, third and fourth now. And now we see a little bit of challenge coming from Forrester. They will start in very costing themselves tens of seconds mm-hmm. in corners and breaking areas, etc. That's going to allow Tyler Davis, Ethan Bath and Bella Fairclough, fifth, sixth and seventh, yep. onto the tail. And that will give us... Not a three-card battle for second, but hopefully a six-card six battle. Because Bella, that's what we like. And Bella Fairclough will be thinking, you know, she, she'll be aiming for second place. You know, second place is where <coughs> she has run uh, between her and Maya Stewart. Uh, Maya, Maya Stewart, Maya Simpson, sorry. Um, you know, Bella and Maya have been battling over second position for most of the weekend. Yeah. And, and Bella will be thinking, OK, I'm, I started back 10th on the grid. Um, you know, it, it's, she's been patient. The race, she's going to let the race come to her because she hasn't forced the issue. She's working with the drivers around her to try and close this gap because as they're going to start battling now, Tyler Davis yeah. in the turquoise cart and then the first of the two yellow carts drive with a bright blue race suit, the yellow uh, go-kart. That's, that's Bella Fairclough. And uh, they say working with Olivani, who's still racing and is the NKC senior Rotax champion, I believe. Uh, yes, he is. Yeah, yes, you're yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And... and uh, I'm just keeping an eye on Eddie Stewart as well, the 45, mm. who is keeping with yep. uh, Ethan Bath and Bella Fairclough. He's not. He's, he's right there. There's that challenge for second. It's been coming. Alfie Forrester almost took Thomas Butcher with him, but Maya, Maya Simpson, she was having none of that. She now has to get that second place back because she's very much under threat for the final step of the podium. So going towards, we're, we're well inside the second half now. We're about three and a half minutes away from that final lap. So Ooh. still plenty of time. And if anything, there, Henry, Forrester beginning to break a little bit of a gap. As I, as I say that, she closes back up. Well, yeah, last time around, Maya Simpson a 43-6. Alpi Forrester a four. I think Maya Simpson's tyres, the setup might be going away, but she could stay in the slipstream. If she can harass and hassle she is. Uh, Alpi Forrester, which she is... Uh, then she has a chance, and that's also going to play into Bella Fairclough's hands because Bella Fairclough is the next cart in line. She's now trying to bridge that gap between the group chasing her and the group she is chasing. But, yeah, uh, if, 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 yeah Alf, Alfie Forrest certainly looks like he, he could possibly get away unless Maya Simpson can keep pegging I, him back. I thought he was. I actually thought he was. I thought, oh, there's Forrest. He's going to check out. He has not. No. Right on his bumper. Maya Simpson, Thomas Butcher, Tyler Davis. Now four carts. Four carts battling for that second place. About to become five carts. Yep. Two and a half minutes to go. And we've got Maya Simpson looking like she was about to challenge at Spoon. She takes a bit of a... Well, I think she was oh, escorted she was, yeah, wide ever I, so slightly by... Yeah. Uh, Thomas Butcher, who now falls back. He used a tin opener there, didn't he? He, he, did, he did, indeed. Yeah, he had a little nibble. And, oh, at the side of the circuit, that is the number 78 cart of Leighton Kelly, sadly out of the race. So Riley Mason Lewis and Leighton Kelly are now retired. We've got 15 carts left running. Oscar Pitt is in that 15th position. And Bella Fairclough has now caught this group and made it a five-cart battle for second. But... On this lap, Forrester has uh, done well. Simpson's trying to signal to Tyler Davis, work yeah. with me. And oh, there's the slipstream effect over the yeah. crest. I love that camera shot. It's one of my favourite camera shots in British karting. 
It yep. really is. It yes. really is. I love how they, they come over into our site, almost sideways on the brakes. It's fabulous. So we've got to change. Let's bring everybody up to date. All right, Daniel Hartley, five seconds up the road from this battle here. Alfie Forrester is uh, now got Maya Simpson right with him. Underneath is Rhea Bumper. Then behind Maya, Tyler Davis and Thomas Butcher. And there's Bella Fairclough. She's joined the party. She got an invitation. She was a late comer. But she's now very much a part of this as they head up Dragon Straight towards the spoon. And Maya Simpson here, Henry, will want to perhaps have a go because time is running out. Yes. We're almost inside the final minute. Almost inside the final minute. So Bella Faircliff has got to go and she's got to go now. There's no point in her sitting now. If she's, if she's got the speed, she's got to make the moves. Uh, you know, clean, quick, decisive. She's already passed Butcher. Oh, That's there's good. Davis. And uh, Davis is already now on the back of... Uh, Simpson, but uh, Bella Faircliff, she's going to have to make a move on Davis coming into the final corner of this lap, or at the very worst, at the spoon curve at the start of the next lap, because she's got to pick them up and put them down. She doesn't make the move at the final corner. She's got to get in the wheel tracks. Forrester and Simpson run second and third. Then it's Davis. Faircliff's got to go now. She looks to the outside, then the inside again. But if she doesn't make the move now, the gap they're is going to be go. too great. Yeah, they're going to go. They're going to go. And you know what, Henry? Tyler Davis is uh, defending well. They're lapping in the 42s, and it was inside of 42 seconds there as Daniel Hartley crossed the line. So this is the penultimate lap. Yes. Daniel Hartley will see the last lap board when he comes across the line. He's 6.3 seconds up the road from this lot. But this is anybody's. Oh, yeah. This is absolutely anybody's. It's Alfie Forrester. Uh, but looking composed, I've got to say. He looks very composed, under immense pressure from Maya Simpson. We know how quick that Tony Cart can go yep. with Maya Simpson behind the wheel. And here we go then, into the final lap. And if anything, Simpson has broke that bit of gap to Tyler Davis. Bella Fairclough, likewise, is going to struggle to challenge Tyler Ooh. Davis on this last lap. Into the spoon for the final time down the hill. It's going to be Daniel Hartley. We're going to have to break away from this and pick up Daniel Hartley in a moment. As we get towards the final stages of this lap, Maya Simpson will try and hang on to Alfie Forrester. Let's see if we can find Daniel Hartley, though. He's going to come through, and there he's already beat us to it. Oh, well. He's took the chequered flag. Daniel Hartley, 100% record so far in 2024. Yeah, and... Uh Everybody else crosses the line in the order, so there were no last corner hijinks uh, between the chasing pack. Uh, so Alfie Forrester and Maya Simpson unofficially complete the podium. But, I mean, Daniel Hartley, wow. Uh, and you can see the celebration. That's going to make, you know, for the Ultima R team, congratulations. And, and you know, don't worry, you, you can tee cut the van. It's not a problem. Let's if that's if, only metal. But, let, uh, yeah. Let's see if the boys can pick up Daniel Hartley on his, on his slowing down lap. And uh, there yeah, he is, the yeah. number 63. We've kind of neglected him. He was almost eight seconds up the road. And he should be delighted with that performance there. He was, he's been, he's proving to be the class of the field. I'm yeah. not sure what his plans are this year, Henry, but you may see him well, in, in your British Championship rounds, I think, with that pace. I, I mean, certainly I would recommend that the old plate next weekend, which is, you know, it's, a, it's an open championship, uh, you know, to go and... Uh, also, sort of be a, be an ambassador for for this championship to say you know yeah. look look we're, we're we're good here at the kart championship we've got top line drivers as well and uh, we can go and uh, mix it up it's a one off uh, event well I think you know all right he's in the younger primo junior primo here yep uh, he can I think Daniel Hartley with that kind of pace that we've seen would see him towards the front certainly certainly of, on of pace, a junior yeah. rotax and, field and of, of a, any caliber and then it would be a case of how sharp is his, are his elbows. Uh, to deal with, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the the big teams, the Strawberries, the Dan Hollands, the yes, KR Sports, yeah. um, uh, the Sam Pollitt Racings of, of this world. Other major teams are available. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, yeah, obviously the pace is unquestionably there for Daniel Hartley to go on and compete for not just a kart championship title, but for a Motorsport UK British title he's, as well. He's very good, yeah. Alfie Forrester... Did come home in second place. We fought, we fought, we had to neglect Daniel Hartley in that lead because Alfie Forrester was under immense pressure from Maya Simpson. Tyler Davis was fourth. Uh, you, you, you podium, by the way. Daniel Hartley, Alfie Forrester, Maya Simpson. Uh, fourth is Tyler Davis. Bella Fairclough through to fifth. That was a good drive from Bella. Got it, to say. it was, yes. Uh, yeah. Thomas Butcher, sixth. Ethan Bath, seventh. 
Ellis Dealey, Sophie Caldwell, Eddie Stewart rounding off the top ten there. We have our, well, if you thought that race was intense. Okay, um, right, so I've got my I, tablets here. Yeah, George, absolutely. Uh, quickly, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we need something bit to... to uh, uh, we'll, dim, we'll dim the lights and uh, yeah, <laughs> calm ourselves down because the Bambinos, the Coma C50 Bambinos, the British Championship, let's not forget, for this class, the official Motorsport UK British Bambino Championship. Um, you could see, now, obviously, you would have seen uh, the paddock walkabout. We uh, went into Ollie West awning, and Ollie West is part of the MP... Uh, that's the Mike, uh, Mike Peabody uh, co driver coaching program. And um, yeah, we just said the drivers are so buzzing that we came in uh, and spoke to them. And it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's great. Yeah. You know, they're not shying away from the media. They understand that, uh, you know, it's part of it. It's isn't part it? Yeah. of it. And they love it, don't they? They love it. Yes. Yes. They love it. That generation is going to be it's a it's a it's an even more of an, a TV generation. Uh, we're the TV generation, but we were never on it. These that, guys yeah, are the, never off it. We're the TV generation. Yeah, they're, they're the new, yeah, new school TV. We're old school TV. Uh, so coming into this yes. round here, the C the Coma C50 Bambino Championship is being led by Will Wainwright, who took the win at Wilton Mill in the final. Second was Ollie West. Third was Noah Wicklow. Um, I'm going to leave you to do the grid. Certainly. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm going to... Put that down and blow me nose. Oh, fair enough. There we go. It's, a, it's your I've turn. Got this jo, it's just Joe's turn to die now. Uh, so while Joe's dying, I will do the grid. It is Ollie West and Ernie Wade on row number one, Benjamin uh, Sliva and Jesse Bailey on row two, Logan Hodgetts and Will Wainwright on row three, row four, Louis Wilson and Carlman Simon, row five, Arthur Bowers and Noah Wicklow, Henry Hales. Watch for Henry Hales coming through. Obviously, there was a, a, an issue after one of his uh, heats, but he's been on top form this morning. And John Stevens, they go from row number six. Wraith Owen and Freddie Purnell on row seven. Hendricks Falat and Arlo Gamble are on row number eight. Riley Aston Wilkins and Max Armit on row number nine. Jack Swang and Max St. Hilaire are on row ten. Santo Amico and Nauman Fierzan, uh, uh, Fierzan on row number 11 as uh, it's hard to pick a fit i mean ollie west uh, will start from pole but if the uh, if, if if the earlier races are anything to go by uh, you can pick any one of about 10 winners a lot of it will depend on the first lap uh, because you know the nature of these bambinos they'll have a standing start if you lose a lot of ground on the first lap then it can be tricky to make it up unless things are happening in front of you. So that'll be uh, one, you know, consideration. But really, Ollie West, Ernie Wade, uh, we haven't quite seen what Benjamin Slivar has been able to do because he started both heats. Yeah, he had a at poor the time of, qualifying, didn't yeah. he? So he yes. started both heats yesterday from the very back and moved up, say, half the field. He's, uh, he's, he's got to be in contention for an overall. Started mid-grid yeah. for the two heats this morning. So this, this is the first race where he has probably been where he deserves to be on the grid. Yeah, this is the highest grid position. Yes. We've seen him on all day long. So, yeah, I'm expecting a lot from um, from young Benjamin uh, Shiva. Um, now, I'm not quite sure what happened with Henry Hales, because I'm sure he won both his superheats this morning, because we were talking about him having his wheat mix, but there may have been uh, issues. a, a post-race issue yes. uh, with, with wagon or motor or driver. Uh, we, we don't know, but uh, uh, and while we say that, I mean, there may have been some sort of exclusion or penalty given out. Uh, and certainly, uh, looking at that race, we're looking down. Um, let's have a look. Henry Hales was finished, finished ninth, ninth this morning. There's not any indication there. Well, anyway, regardless, yeah, he's yeah. been on top form. And yes, yes, he has been so, so, so we'll look for and, him. And, yeah. and yeah, and and keep an eye on Will Wainwright. Yes, who right at the very end, bright yellow of, card of the weekend, the bright yellow row. card on the third row. There, we've got the uh, the board going out. We've got the red lights go on. When the red lights go off, we will get underway, and we are indeed underway. Ollie West in the bright green helmet, the blue, predominantly blue cart with the red helmet of Ernie Wade off into second. But it's Ollie West with the green helmet. There, off up the hill, Dragon Street. Benjamin Shivard just on the oh. left there. The number 76 has not got a great start, but he pulls alongside and he slots back into that third. 
It's down the inside for second, if not for first. He's not going to have a look at the lead, is he? He, no, he, I, he, he, I, he was I, thinking about I, it, it looked like. Oh, and there's Will Wayne Wright in that right the car. They're getting sideways, and the back of the field is 63. Oh, that, what, Louis Wilson in the Tim oh. Wilson Motorsport number uh, 63, uh, sort of going for a heart. There was a couple of drivers that came together in front of him, and I think he made, just sort of stamped on the anchors, and uh, she rotated. Yeah, yeah, got it. It spun off all wrong. So, Ollie West and Benjamin Shivar have kind of pulled out a bit of a gap. Mm -hmm. Shivar not exactly on the rear bumper of Ollie West yet. And Ollie West, we know how quick Ollie is, and we did a great... I hope you enjoyed the paddock walk. Well, no, that's not Ollie West. That's uh, Oh, that's Logan, not Ollie West. That's it's Logan it's, Hodgetts. It's Logan Hodgetts. We talked about... Oh, there's Ollie West in the green helmet. How yes. did he fall back there? It's a fourth place. Well, I mean, obviously, while we were looking just at the Louis Wilson recovering uh, from his spin... Uh, Ollie West lost the lead ah, it's and, and track position. That, that's what it's a green helmet. Yes, it's, it, it's, with uh, Logan Logan Hodgetts leading out of Spoon and then down the hill. Shivar looks over his shoulder. There's no one there apart from Ernie Weir. There's a few cart lengths back. Uh, four carts who are coming together for third to seventh, and then Shivar losing that space between himself and Ernie Wade, coming up to the back end though of Logan Hodgetts and considering Henry that mm. we've got this extended length of race yes. for our heats 10 minutes for these youngsters mm -hmm. I couldn't cope with an 8 minute and 1 lap race <laughs> last time and I'm certainly struggling to, I'm going to be struggling to cope with 10 minutes yes. and 1 lap um, But so you've got, six con you've got the 6 contenders at the moment there they are going down Dragon Street all be very sensible, single file, trying to make sure that it's just those six that are disputing the lead. In seventh position is Calman Simon. Now, he's 1.8 seconds behind this group, who oh, now goes a move. side by side. Ollie yep. West back into P2. Uh, behind Calman Simon, there's another one second gap back to the recovering Will Wainwright. Uh, Freddie Purnell, Wraith Owen. Sadly, Henry Hales has gone the wrong direction and is down to 14th. Uh, so he's got a lot of recovery work to do in the 57 car. Arthur Bowers, another driver that's been, you know, very competitive all weekend as we go side by side with the leading contact. I shouldn't say yeah. the C word, but that was unavoidable. That was uh, uh, Ollie West going for a gap that was closing. And, well, West emerges in second and uh, Hodgetts I'm, emerges in fourth. Yeah, I'm not, gonna, I'm not quite sure how the stewards will see that one. We we'll leave that to them. I hate saying the C word. Yeah, right on here, yeah, but, it uh, was though. That was that was uh, the, the number fourteen in fourth being forced onto the grass as well. Logan Hodgetts um, looking like he wants to force the issue back, as down the inside of Shivar, who had taken the lead for a moment there, Shivar comes out of Spoon in second place. Ollie West back up into that lead that he was challenging Logan Hodgetts for. Now behind. Shivar, the number 78, that orange helmet is Logan Hodgetts once again. Uh, sorry, no, that's Ernie Wade, the number 11. Behind him is Logan Hodgetts. So things changing all the time. Now they're in a yellow flag area. Oh, we've ah. got a cart. Now we've got a cart off to the left there, or the right there. Yes. So I'm not sure where that yellow flag was shown, but that could be Shivar passing under yellow. I mean, you, you, we saw, you saw the cart being moved to the side of the circuit. And uh, we'll have to say, well, well, well we, we, we can only speculate. We cannot confirm. That's why, you know, we have a panel of stewards here, race directors, and uh, sort of, you know, uh, actual camera system monitoring that. But all we can do is call the action on the track as we see it. And uh, as you can see, the viewers, Ollie West is <laughs> your new leader. How many changes of leading? I we forgot. I, we're up to at least 12, half a dozen. So yeah, we're up to at least half a dozen, maybe more. Shiva back to the inside of Wade, and Wade holds on for P2. And not far behind the rear bumper of Shiva is the number 74 for Logan Hodgetts, and there's no Wicklow coming into play as well. Well, good recovery from Wicklow, because we saw Wicklow yeah. fade in the second superheat with a problem. Now, there is the number 94 cart of Max Armit. Uh, now, you can see him being guided to a safe place. The cart being uh, also moved to a similar safe position. Uh, these six, we haven't talked much about Jesse Bailey at the back of this field. There is Jesse in that uh, number 77 
cart as we go potentially three wide. Well, if they fan out. <laughs> and uh, 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 four minutes and 38 seconds Yeah, we're ago. inside the second half, Henry. We, our heart rates can't take yeah, much more of say, this. I'm just going to look, look at the window. Ah, yeah. the, the ambulance is still there. They've got the defibrillator. All right, okay, that's good. And it's not far from one. us as well. No, no, yeah. The, oh, look at this. Down the hill to the carousel. And that's Shivard down the inside of the number 11, Ernie Wade. And look who's going with him. Logan Hodgett's trying to go with Shivart, and he does round the inside of the carousel. Ernie Wade from second to fourth. However, he's not going to stay there. He's already challenging back for third, and he goes back to third. How many, how many position changes have we had? I think we're up to about 140 well, at yeah. the moment. Uh, we and are... we've still got four minutes left. Coming towards the end of lap six, there will probably be more overtakes in this race than an entire season of Formula, Formula One. One. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I was going to say. Here's do, another yeah. one. Yeah, here's another one. This time oh. for the lead. Shiver down the inside. Here and look who's going. Oh, oh. They're gonna, please don't squeeze each other onto the grass, please. Three Let's wide. keep it clean. Three wide. Hodges Four wide. going round the outside. Well done. Logan Hodges. But now he's going to get freight trained a little bit. Can he stick it up on the outside? And look at Wicklow. Look at Ollie West down the inside of two. Three, three wide. wide through the spoon. Unbelievable driving from this lot. This is unbelievable. You know what? Six to seven years old. They haven't even seen the textbook. Yes. The textbook says you can't go three wide through Spoon. These lots say, what textbook? Oh. Brilliant stuff. Ollie word. West. Ollie West leading. Now it's Ernie Wade back into second. Shivar third. It's Logan Hodgett's fourth. Wicklow, I think, is the sixth place cart there. And Jesse Bailey has moved up two places there. And, and do you know something? You know, I think that every primary school that has a, a has a Bambino driver in this championship attending it, they need to be sent videos of this race. Uh, it's on Monday morning. So when they're saying, "Right, children, let's get the Oxford reading tree out," uh, Jack and Jill. <laughs> oh, thinking, where's he going? Oh my word! You got these kids are far above that. This is what they do. This is what they're capable of. And it's West uh, Wade, Wade Schliva West. The, Bailey, Hodgetts and Wil Wicklow. Forget SATS tests. This lot have got a degree in racecraft oh, already. Yes. And they're not even seven. Or well, they're not even eight. This is unbelievable. Shiva down to fourth. He's down to fourth. Not, 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 only a short moment ago, he was first. Ernie Wade's now our leader. Logan Hodgetts is, our, is in second place. Who's that in third? Is uh, that that's Jesse Jesse's, Bailey? Yeah. He was Sw keeping a watching brief in yep. sixth. And, and he's now just, moved to, he's the podium. Like stealth mode. Stealth mode for Jesse Bailey up into third. And there, the number 11, sliding a little bit wide through the compression. They're still all together. Yep. And do you know what's even more impressive, Joe, is the fact that Will Wainwright is four seconds behind this group in seventh. Even though this lot have been battling so much, they haven't slowed each other no, down. No, they haven't. This is what I mean by racecraft, Henry. That's incredible. It has been, oh, and there's Shiva. Oh. Shiva's got a problem. He's pulling oh, off to the left. No, he's pulling out of that. Oh, he's pulling out that six car train. And Benjamin Shiva, who spent all day making his way up the oh. grid, will have that retirement to contend with here in round two. And that's a, you know, um, oh, the, the carting giveth and carting taketh away. And uh, Shiva, that is an absolute desolation. But it's a, it's a character-building weekend for Benjamin. But it's a character-building sport, Henry. You've oh, got to yes. learn how to lose to learn how to win is the saying that I was taught. And I tell you what, there's not more true a saying. Right now, though, Ernie Wade, he's learning how to lead. But Jesse Bailey, Jesse, who was sixth, is challenging. For the race through lead. The, for the race lead. They're inside of one minute. So that means we're on to Super the penultimate go. lap. Yep. A no. train of five carts now. Is there a yellow flag? Yes, there, there is a is yellow flag. For Schlieve's cart. Do they stay single file? Yes, they do. They pass the incident. There's another marshal post here that will have a green flag. There it is at the right-hand side of the... Now, and now game, there's game Ollie on West. Again. Yeah, Ollie West. Looking down the inside of that second place, Jess Bailey. He slots back in. It's weird. Bailey, West, Hodgetts, Wicklow. Down the hill to the carousel. West on the inside. On the inside of Bailey. Will he come out in second? He does indeed. The green helmet chasing down the orange helmet of Ernie Wade now. Bailey still in second. Wicklow through to fourth. They're side by side into Devil's Elbow. And Wicklow has finally made that move on Logan Hodgetts. And up to fifth place. Still the leader is Ernie Wade. It's going to be one lap to go board that they see. One lap to go. 
Time is running out for anybody to improve. The first five are together. They're slow. They are so close. You could pitch a tent over all five. Yep. Up the dragon still straight. Yellow still a yellow flag flying. As still the drivers stay single file good driving you can't imagine how far the adrenaline is surging through them and yet they remember to obey the rules now it's game on again oh, Ollie West down the inside of the number 11 Ernie win and it's who's going to come out down the hill it's three wide four three wide. wide four wide it's Jess Bailey who leads into the carousel for the final time and that's Hodgett's up to second it is Ollie West in third Wicklow now up to fourth it's still side by side for Western Hodgett's into turn seven. Oh, my word. They're going to go three wide at the devil's elbow. Not quite. This is now Jesse Bailey's race. <laughs> West to the inside. He's going to try the crossover. One corner to go there. Three wide again. Oh, goodness me. I can't hold my breath any longer as Ollie West comes through into the lead at turn one at the final turn and crosses the line. And all five. Cheering. All five well, punch yeah. the air. I tell you what. That's the race of the weekend. Absolutely. If not the race of 2024. Uh, that's How are we going to better that? That is, that is going on the shortlist for the race of the year, regardless of any post-race. I mean, on track, that was the race of the year. How, how, what order they appear on the podium? I do not know. We don't I know. I do not know. But, because, uh, yeah, over to you, Dan Ashton. Uh, yeah, yeah, make, yeah, yeah. Make, make sense of that one. Um, make sense of that one. But, I mean, certainly, you know, at, at one point, you know, Jesse Bailey has not led an entire lap all weekend and was three corners away from winning the final after moving into position. Ollie West certainly uh, some aggressive moves there. Had to fight back every time that uh, Ollie found himself losing a position. Had to grit his teeth and move forward again. Logan Hodgett, Noah Wicklow, Ernie Wade. Who st I, did Ernie Wade start the lap? No, did Ernie Wade start the last lap leading and come home in fifth? But, I mean... 0.565 of a second, 56 hundredths of a second, separating the top five at the end of it. I tell you what, Henry, I don't usually have time to watch any races back. I'm watching that one back. We're already, you know, thinking about next weekend. Aren't yeah, we, yeah, yes, business. yeah. Um, I'm going to go home tomorrow and I'm going to I'm going to watch that back. That oh, no, is absolutely. outstanding. Ab outstanding. Outstanding. Um, a quick run down the rest of the. Uh, the rest of the top, the rest of the finishers outside the top five. Will Wainwright finishing in sixth. Calman Simon seventh. Freddie Pennell eighth. Wraith Owen ninth. And Arthur Bowers rounds out your top ten. Jack Swan moves up to eleventh, followed by Riley Aston Wilkins. John Stevens disappointment for Henry Hales in fourteenth. Hendricks Falat. Louis Wilson recovered from that opening lap spin to finish sixteenth ahead of Arlo Gamble, Santo Amico, and Max Saint Hilaire. Sadly, Benjamin Schliever and Max Armit failed to finish. Well, I'm really glad that Coma Bambinos decided to uh, go easy on us because uh, <laughs> Junior Rotax is up next. Oh, Thanks. God, yeah. Guys, let's not yeah. forget, one of those drivers we have just seen will become a very worthy and exceptionally well-deserved Brit M Motorsport UK British Bambino karting champion at the end of this year. Wow. I tell you what, I would like to have a bash at saying who. Right, so... Round one at Wilton Mill was won by ST Racing's Addison Smith, who looks on good fettle, doesn't he? He does. Because he starts from pole. Yes, he does. You've got uh, James Kell, second. Uh, Harry Hurstgrove. Now, Harry Hurstgrove, he's got, uh, he's got uh, Mr. S uh, Louis Smith's, uh, he's got Chris, uh, Louis Harvey, Chris Harvey, uh, looking after him. Louis is looking after the X-Cart, or helping to look after the X-Cart team here. Um you know, Louis, a former British TKM champion, junior mm. TKM champion. Um, do, do wondering, you know, why uh, why mum, mummy Harvey is not here. Why Charlene's uh, decided to stay at home, um, you know. To watch she, us. Well, I mean, to watch us or, or to perhaps not be at a kart circuit. Uh, for, for the a change. For a change. Now that Louis' sort of career is now. The, so last year, Louis retired from driving and, and sort of. Was was mechanicking straight away, right. and uh, and Chris just just basically after being at a kart circuit for about twelve years and saying, oh, I'm, you know, time to give this up, time to give this up. Then he was sort of I miss this, <laughs> and now he's found a way back into the uh, the paddock as a mechanic. Um, uh, I think Sister Lily is uh, is is around he, the paddock somewhere. You know, never, he can't think. 
ever lose. No, but Mar- this Charlene has decided. I think I've I've done my time. I've served my time in karting, and I'm watching back home. Apparently, you know. Chris has had to promise that every penny he earns as a mechanic in karting has to go towards their first holiday since <laughs> about the year before they bought Louis's first go kart. Wow. Uh, yeah, sorry, anyway, there that. we go. Every weekend's a holiday when you go kart. Exactly, we Absolutely. live the dream. I mean, Absolutely. we've had sunshine this weekend. So, yeah, we have. We've had all seasons this weekend. Yeah. Uh, so the championship yes. in Junior Road Axe coming into this second round was uh, is Addison Smith leading. He's got an eight-point lead on Kasper Tomalewski, who came second at Wilton Mill. Oliver Fabricus uh, finished 10th in the final at round one. However, he's third in the championship by his heats and super heats finishes. Fourth was Harry Hurst Grover at round one. He's fourth in the championship. Uh, ben Horner was on the third and final step of the podium uh, at Wilton Mill. He is fifth in the championship. So Ben Horner, if I remember rightly, Ben Horner came through to that very fine third um, it, at Wilton Mill. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be... Intense at the front as huh. Addison Smith. He's on the H- HRS motor of uh, Nigel Horner, of course, uh, running with ST, John Stewart's team. James Kell alongside. Harry Hurst Grover, the 2023 vice champion, alongside Callum mm-hmm. Gosh. Kasper Tomalewski. He's not going to be there for much longer, is he? He's going to be wanting to move forward. Yes. As is Jack Robinson, as is Andrew Dixon and, and Max uh, Haller on uh, row four. Lewis Sumner and Jensen Pritchard, great uh, grid position for Jensen. And, and that's going to be and the fact that his teammate Daniel Hartley in the in the uh, Ultimate R team has, has just won a race. That's going to give Jensen a big boost. Yep. Uh, Riley Morgan, and then we've got Addison Smith's teammate Charlie Vary, uh, also with ST on row six. Row seven is Marcel Popperkull and Ewan House. John J. Buchan and Ed McDonald are on row eight. Ben Horner. Down the order somewhat in 17th mm. there on row 9 with Braith Murdoch. Uh, Luke Sawyers and Sam Green Gomez are on row 10. Row 11 is Molly Pugh and Lewis Holt. Then we've got Gregor Reid and Calvin Moffat on row 12. Row 13, Leon Barlow and Logan Howes. Uh, Archie Doty and Aston Brown are on row 14. Then Harrison Purnell and Elliot Foster are row 15. And then rounding off what is a 32 cart field. Looking great there in the collecting area is Emily Cooper. Ah, ah. Emily Cooper's not here. Yeah, she's... Uh, well, so, hello, Emily, at home so, with yeah. a light concussion. How are you? So it's 31. Yes, Christian Stefanov. Christian Stefanov. He's going to round yeah. the field out. I hope Emily is feeling a bit better after that... Uh, that I, was, I was told that she's that fundamentally should. fine. All right, but okay, yeah, great. Yeah, you know, a knock great to the story. head, you know. His parents think you might have knocked some sense into her and she might want to take up netball or something like that. No, no, no that's no, terrible. No, 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 get off your phone, Emily. Yes, and watch. Yeah, watch the racing. Yeah. Sorry, I said that out of just you. I'm used to saying that to my teenagers. Yeah, exactly. Just get off your phone. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Well, no, I'm not on the phone. Oh, yeah. So oh, not. sorry, sorry. I just yeah, you, yeah. you walk into a room. Get off your phone. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't yeah. realise that you were studying uh, yeah. or actually looking at a piece of paper or or something. But it's just a natural reaction. Yeah. You sit yeah. down, don't you? I love our family chats. All three of them. So. Yeah. As we. <laughs> uh, I. I, I my son did once ask for a drink via text message from his <laughs> bedroom, <laughs> which, uh, as, I rung, as I rung him warmly by the neck afterwards. <laughs> that is yeah, funny. That are we, is are funny. we only living in a flat? We that didn't have stairs. Yeah, he didn't even have to go upstairs or downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah ping, that's ping. Funny. That's funny. Dad, can you get me a drink, please? That is funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, with we we've got a bit of delay, and that's because we're recovering carts oh, out okay. on the track. So just to remind everybody that so we're at round two here again, yes. GYG Glanny Course. At round three, end of April, is uh, up to Warden Law, and then from the northeast coast we head across to the northwest, and Rowra up in the uh, Lake District. That's on the weekend of the twenty second and twenty third of June. We have a bit of a lull between June and the middle of July, where we go to Fulbeck for round five. Yes. 13th and 14th of July. But that gap is truncated by a very special Bambino event. Indeed. It's the special MSU Bamb- MSUK Bambino event at PF. Now, PF International, uh, as we've seen, those Bambinos are pretty much suited to everywhere. Yeah, they, they absolutely that, are. And PF will be a, a, a fantastic event. Oh, through the, the fast right underneath and the, the bridge, bridge, up onto the banking. It's, yes. it's going to be flat chat for about, about half an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, do you need to. No, no, no. Right, I can, okay. I, at the end of this race, I can. Uh, uh, 
Are you sure? Uh, yes. Just the, 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 uh, the cold, the cold, the cold wind. The the, the, lo- the large amount of fluids has a certain effect on all commentators. Of a certain age. Of a certain age. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Only those in their twenties and thirties, like myself and Joe. Uh, now, ah, uh, problem. Yeah. Uh, who's that? One cart towards the back of the field. Who is that? That has not started. Oh dear. Oh, well, she, oh there's a there's the mechanics getting Thank kicked. you, Paul. It's, it's cart two forty one. It's gonna be that is so look, that's Calvin Moffat. And they're gonna oh that's that it, is a ship. Yeah, if, well you might be, if you pick it up and bang it, sometimes that uh, knocks a coil back in or or, or Oh Calvin Moffat hand, hands on heads walking away game over so very they, sadly the, the drivers going out there they've been told they've got two laps yes they've been told yeah I, right. I uh earlier on i was down on the debbie grid and, and dan ashton was telling them okay okay two rolling laps uh, and that's a, a to get the tires uh, you know relatively warmed up and uh, that's very sensible actually yes it's, we, it's we quite are dealing, a short lap here at, well we at are Grand dealing Coast. with children the kart championship is about children yes of, you know kids age and it's all about safety. Safety is a priority, and giving an extra rolling lap just to get everything get, up to yeah, temperature, everything a bit up more temperature gives is them a smart. more. Con- uh, they're not sliding around on the cold tyres. They're not risking spinning off into turn one nope, and being nope, yep. clouted by the whole field. And now Addison Smith gets the opportunity to uh, get everybody together and gather everybody up. He's had a blast round at the front of the field. The bright yellow and blue livery of ST Racing showing. Uh, something to be very proud of for ST, John Stewart, senior and junior, on the pole position going into this second round after a win in round one. They'll want to emulate that one for sure and come away with the championship lead again. We are racing. We've got a green yes, flag. Yeah. And side by side, up the dragon straight towards Oh, uh, no, Spoon. suddenly it says false start. False start, is yeah, it? Yeah, the marshal there on the outside of the... Ah, yes, the, uh, there the, it is. I see that. There's the... Uh, the Yellow and uh, green chevron flag. I'm not. I did see Addison Smith not in the tram lines there. He was more to the left. Ah, but well, th- th- that could be a very fortunate false start. I, I do. Why? Because around the outside, it's very similar to Turn One and Ward Law here. Yeah. It's a very fast first turn. Yes. And when you can have a massive amount of speed around the outside. And if you and if you if you stay sort of just outside the racing group but before you get on the marbles, you can right. maintain yeah. that yeah. momentum. And, uh, and pin the person on the inside line a bit towards the, the, the and curves. I, and I think Alison Smith is fully aware of that. Yes. And that's why he moved across on James Kell before the line, though. And I think that's probably why we didn't like that. That's you still, see how he's out of the yeah, tram line he's out slightly? again. And this time he does sort of get the drop on uh, James Kell. James Kell can't get around the outside to the extent that he did. In fact, Kell has lost. Second place. If Adams and Smith, I think, has lost a lead. Is that? Oh, and that's Adams and Smith has lost a lot. I think he's been nudged, uh, hasn't he, by his, by yes, his body that, language? That was uh, that he, does, he was not. He did not do that on his own. Oh, he's down to almost last. last. Okay, well, let's have a little look a at how far he can recover. But certainly, uh, I and I couldn't quite see who the person was rushing away from the scene of the that, crime. That happened beyond the bra- over the brow of the yes, hill just to us. Off our cameras. Coming, yeah, coming into the uh, the breaking area. That's left four carts free of the wreck. Oh, and there's a change for second there, right at the very last corner. Let's see who it is. It's Hurst Grover leading Tomalevsky. It was that snatched that second place. James Kell, Callum Gosh, Lewis Sumner, Andrew Dixon, Max Holler, Riley Morgan, Jensen Pritchard, and Charlie Vary keeping the ST Racing team in the top ten there after that tragic incident there that got Addison Smith pushed out and off the track. Well, let's, well off the track. Yeah, let's see. So we've got 20... I mean, I'm I, I, not... not I'm inclined to maybe not trust the uh, the timing monitor on the side yeah, of our screen. Yeah, it's not being scraped very well, is it? But uh, our, our our timing screen, let's have a look. Where, at the end of lap number one, just for posterity's sake, where is Addison Smith at the end? 27th. At 27th. Uh, so we did have a couple of non-starters. Uh, t- 29. So uh, we obviously we lost Calvin Moffat. So that was down to 30. And somebody else hadn't started either. But so 27th, let us see... Uh, how, how long it takes him to catch up into a, a second last of it, a, te- yeah, he's, but he's already up to twenty fourth. Um, uh, yes, you know, six by yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying he's going to catch this lead group, but we're looking at uh, Harry Hurst Grover and Kaspar Tomalevsky uh, trying to pull away a little bit from the cutting edge racing uh, number two uh, eight eight of Callum Gosh. Uh, then it's James Cal in fourth, followed by Lewis Sumner, Andrew Dixon, Max Haller, who was just uh, Andrew Dixon just set the fastest lap. 
Haller, Riley Morgan, Jensen Pritchard uh, and Ben Horn are your top ten. Uh, oh. I have to say, though, oh, and there's a few more. That's the 245 cart. Is that uh, Lewis Holt? Oh, that was... No, that, 245... Let's have a little look at the... Uh, yeah, that's Lewis Holt. Oh, he's devastated, isn't he? He's had, a cart over the, he's had a cart over the front of his, the 245, the fairing loose. Yep. And, so that's uh, an indication that he's had heavy contact there with something. And Yeah, that's coming out of... that. That's where the drivers are now. So it's coming into this corner. Uh, you can see we're obviously one driver up yeah, over the are. other. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and st still Lewis Holt is... Um, he's got, Lewis, you've got to just go and find a tyre barrier to kick. And yeah, um, I think and has. then has then have to just you know look 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 forward to the next one. That's all you can do. Right, Tomaleski, he's the cart in second place behind the number two. Tomaleski, second in the championship, coming into this second round. He's got James Kell right with him though. Tomaleski challenging that number two of Harry Hurst Grover down the hill to the carousel. They go. Tomaleski looking like he wants to get by. He knows who's behind him. James Kell very very quick indeed. And he'll want to clear Harry Hurst Grover. Harry Hurst Grover says, nope, I'm quite fine here, just holding you all off. We've only got six and a half minutes remaining, so we've still got more than half of this Junior oh, yes. Rotax final to go. Uh, no. Jensen Pritchard has dropped the 30. Oh, there's, there's the a lead. change. There's there the change. Goes. Tom Oleski and James Kell. Oh, no, oh, he's not. Oh, that is tragic again. Oh, and there's a big hit. A big hit there. And that's a big knock. I'm not quite sure of the number, but it was... It was somebody like Andrew Dixon or Lewis Thunder. I think Thunder. it was. It was a 225 of Andrew Dixon. And uh, what happened was, is, is uh, oh, and he's uh, yeah, lucky Yeah, he doesn't there. know what happened there. But, I mean, as, as you, you know, as Tomanowski went for the move on Grover, Callum Ghost tried to make uh, a look. I think we're going to have a little yeah, look back at, have that a look at that now. and see what happened. They come off, they connected. He went up on the back of one another and conjoined. He, he, he sprang off. And was kind of not really in control there as yeah. the cart went to the right. Yeah, yeah as, as Callum Ghost's into, cart was released yeah. off the back bumper of Tom Olavsky's cart. He fired into Dixon, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, Dixon was committed at the inside. And, uh, you know, it, 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 the only reason that Callum Ghost got caught up on the back of Henry Hurst, Gro Harry Hurst Grover's cart was because Harry Hurst Grover was a little bit slow coming off the final corner because he'd just been passed by, by Tom Olavsky yeah. yeah. for the race lead. So, uh, kind you of know. that concertina effect, Yeah, and, and Tom Olavsky, he just went for the move. It wasn't anything untoward. No, that it was, was clean. That was yeah. clean. Uh, uh, so, yeah, and Harry Hurst Grover sort of ran a bit wide then sort of came back online and Ghosh just had the momentum uh, and was there and uh, just it literally sort of well, yeah, rode up over the back of him. We, we say this all the time, don't we? These, these, these drivers are absolutely flat track. Yes. I mean, the top speed there going over the brow is about 70 miles an hour here at uh, Granite Gores. So at this point here, these yes. cars are doing 65 to 70 miles an hour as absolutely. they go into that braking area. Yeah, and, absolutely. And they, and they are literally inches and centimetres apart. So when they do have a coming together, we kind of take it for granted that they're going to go round and round, but then, oh, you know, yes. there is a coming together. And it's not deliberate, it's just racing. And yeah. that happens. Yes. And the, you know, as a driver, you have to get used to the knocks and the disappointments. Indeed. And the character building sessions that you're going to have forever in motorsport. Yes. Um, hey, one, sorry, sorry uh, Joe, on. is that Addison Smith is now 17th, and he is about, well, he, he's did have a 1.4 second gap between him and the 16th place cart of uh, Ethan House. That gap is now half a second in the space of one lap. So as you're looking there, like the camera can just sort of like, you can see all the carts flashing across and then there's a gap there and then you could see Addison. So Addison Smith is going to catch a whole group there's a, of yeah, drivers there's a, there's a potentially train, for a top 10 there's finish. There's a train of carts just off the back of these three. If we can just try and grab them uh, our cameramen. There they are. Yep. That and, group there. And, and then there's a gap. There's Addison Smith. There, no, there's Addison there's Smith. There's Addison there. Smith. He's about to catch them. So there's one of the drivers in front of him. That's the train we want there. That's just the ahead of that one. And the, the driver, the blue race suit, uh, at, at the yellow, the, the, the yellow, uh, the yellow car, the blue race suit, coming across the line now. Uh, there he is, the back of this group. So he's now on the back of this group. There's the uh, number two. Uh, it's the two one five cart of Addison Smith. He's up the inside. Now, this will be a good example. So he's fired up. He's a lot quicker than these drivers. This is where we talk about not losing momentum. You've got to catch a driver, pass them straight away. So you've, you've got to pass them straight away. So his next victim uh, will be the number 226. Uh, that will be Ewan House. So uh, 
He's got to go at the inside, coming into, not this corner, but into the final corner. He's already moving his cart around. He can't afford to lose time. He can't make the move, so he's going to have a look into turn number one. And now he's lost momentum, but he's going to have to go. So he's got two carts in front of him, and uh, we've got two and a half minutes left. I have to say, I thought that he'd be picking his way through the carts a little bit quicker. Well, he goes it, up the hill. To be honest, Henry, that just shows the class. Yes, it does. And, and it the does. quality that we have here in the car championship, because... Yep. Yeah, he's not moving through the, no. the, the field as readily as we perhaps perceived he might. That just shows the quality of the grid here. And as Addison Smith continues to make that progress, he's up to 16th place just behind Ewan House. From 27th. From 27th. That's the, a recovery drive that he's trying to uh, damage limitation regarding mm. points haul, isn't it? So we'll... Uh, He's, he's, he's had to follow you in yeah, house now for two now, laps. Yeah, he's now sort of caught at their pace. Yes, uh, he, you know he's where the, he's where he's where he's at. So you know, so, Tomaleski and Cal still lead half a second, but uh, this there's, there's a good example, and now he'll look oh, to the there inside. He is. There he's so gone. it's been Another. a good recovery. Um, it's I thought it might get him a top ten finish, but I think it's sort of these last two laps it sort of stalled out a little bit for he's, Alison Smith. But uh, he's got Jensen Pritchard ahead of him now, and he's just. He's kind of made that gesticulation of let's work together. Ah, one of those gesticulations. Normally not... that gesticulation comes just before the driver overtakes the driver. He said, let's work together. Yeah. Okay, but only when I'm leading. So we're getting towards the final yep. minute, Jim. So let's head back yes. to the front of this field uh, where Kasper Tomalewski is just holding off James Kell by about three tenths. The rest of the field yeah. come down. Well, that looks like a lot less. Than th that, look that looks like, you know... Uh, you could almost uh, throw a bogey over them there till uh, they're yeah, so that, close together. Yeah, it's not that look. That does not look like three tenths to me. No. So that could be James Kell coming back into this. Uh, uh, to, yeah. Towards uh, Lewis Sumner. Checkered flag. And Lewis Sumner and Callum Ghosh running in third and fourth. We haven't mentioned Lewis Sumner much, and he's on course for a podium. That's a smart. Do you know what that is a smart drive where you you don't get that many mentions, but yet you end up on the podium. On, in a class where there have been sort of incidents and, you know, drivers you know, going off and, you know, getting involved in stuff, you, you know, just make your way through and end up picking up a big, big bucket full of points at the end of the weekend and, and a pot. Great driving, great driving, left it to the final, hasn't he? Yes. Now then, they're right on the cusp of getting to the line, <laughs> right on the time Ooh. when we run out of time. We've got 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7. Six, five. I think it's going to be last lap board. Let's I think it's going to be look. last lap board. Oh, look at that. Right on the cusp. Oh, my oh, goodness. That the, was right on it. Well, they, not, did they it's get last the, lap. It is last, last lap. lap they didn't but, get the last lap board, no. but they would have seen the... Uh, maybe the board didn't go up, but there is that digi screen. We didn't see whether the digi screen uh, showed the last lap board or not. Now, if James Kell thinks he's going to sit there until the last lap board, well, he's going to be disappointed to see the chequered flag yes. next time by, because the last lap has been defined by the timing screen. So they were literally microseconds oh. off the line when they crossed the line. So it is the last lap, and this is Kasper Tomalewski about to take round two and the lead of the championship going into round three. Here we come then across the line, Oh, and it Oh. oh, no, it's it's checkered flag. Well, they haven't, flag. they haven't seen the checkered flag. No, they have not. So the drivers are still racing. As a race driver, you race to the checkered flag now. Oh, and can, that, you, can and you smell controversy? No, I can't. I'm not sure whether the digi board showed the checkered flag. I mean, we'll the see check, now. The, the manual checkered flag yeah, didn't fly. Yeah, we can't fly. see the digi boards. I mean, James Cal certainly made the move. I mean, and they certainly show no signs of easing back. Are we going to see Tomalewski? I mean, Tomalewski's going to try and make the move. Tomalewski is there. They're not going to peel into the pits now because they think they're still racing. And now let's try again. Now the checkered flag comes out. So we will have to see... Uh, one timing screen says Tomalewski, but the drivers will you know, say, I, we race to the chequered flag. Yeah, the drivers may race to the chequered flag, but the result will be called from that previous lap. And the problem was that the drivers were crossing the line yes. right at the point, literally microseconds before the last lap board came out. Yes. And, uh, and then our flag marshal was caught out with the fact that he was a bit dropping the last lap board as he picked the checkered flag up, but they'd gone through without showing it. But the the result 
from my experience, will be, as we see all the time in screen, the chequered flag flew on, on the official timing and scoring, which shows Tomalewski taking the win, James Kell second, Callum Ghosh third, Lewis and Sumner fourth, Ben Horner, Jack Robinson, Harry Hurst Grover recovering to seventh, Marcel Popperkull eighth, ninth was Braith Murdoch, and then tenth was rounding off the top ten, Max Haller. Right, um, if you could, if you just, if you just uh, 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 listen very carefully, if we <laughs> quite through the airways, you can just hear the radio message saying, uh, "Race control to Dan, race control to Dan." You've got two drivers, two dads, and two team managers waiting uh, to speak to you at pit exit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They totally are, yeah. done. There, there is. He he's, is. On, he's on his headphones. Yeah. Yes, he's on his earmuffs. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, yes, he's walking towards uh, a thing. Right. Uh, well, anyway, let's call the results as we see up on yeah. the timing screens. You John. might want to mention that Addison Smith came through from the back to, to 13th. 13th. Yes. And that was, you know, that was a cracking drive back through the field because you could see when he got to the midfield, that progress was stifled, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Because of the quality of the drivers that we have in the Junior Rotax field in the car championship. Uh, easy to see um, why that happened. So Junior Rotax ending a little bit of controversy, uh, easily sorted out. The The result on the official time and scoring was indeed Tomaleski and James Kell. We just didn't get our fingers on the buttons in time. So next, what have you got next, James? We've got our Intermax final to come next. And let's just have a look at how the championship looked coming into this second round. Uh, Josh Cormack took the win at Wilton Mill to take the final after a good points haul. He's got a two-point lead in the championship from Max Gilman, who had a maximum points haul in the superheats, came fourth in the final, did Max Gilman. Uh, Adam Turacek, who isn't here this weekend. I've not seen the name of Turacek all weekend, so Turacek... Not making an appearance. He was third at Wilton Mill. Jensen Seal was a fine second. JJ Plowman came fifth. Um, the championship has Turacek on 187 points. Jensen Seal on 179. JJ Plowman on 176. And then Sebastian Clark in sixth place in the championship into this round on 174. So the podium at Wilton Mill was first Josh Cormack, second Jensen Seal, and third Adam Turacek. The grid for the Intermax final shuffling of paper sound effect coming off now (coughs) is this Max Gilman on the pole, Max Gilman on the pole position for the Intermax 950 final, Jensen Seal fourth in the championship behind Max Gilman in the championship alongside second row of the grid is JJ Plowman and Nathan Edwards, and then on row three, Drew Davidson and Fraser Anderson, Harvey Bacon and Thomas Jackson on row four, row five is Oscar Roach and George Ralston, and then on row six, and rounding off the 11 cart into Max Field, is Sandro Kemp. So that's the grid. They're already formed up in the collecting area, as you can see, just to the right of the screen. Uh, Just to mention that the... Five round championship for the car championship rounds off in July at Fulbeck. Um, however, that's not the season over, as we've got a three round winter series that kicks off in July. Uh, sorry, July in September, that kicks off on the at the end of September, the twentieth, twenty ninth weekend off at Wilton Mill. Uh, we then go to the northeast of England and Warren Law for the sixteenth and seventeenth of November, and then the three round winter series for the car championship uh, finishes. At a venue to be confirmed, so still working on a calendar for that one. That's on the weekend of the 7th and 8th of December, and that'll be the third and final round of the Car Championship Winter Series. So action-packed year ahead for our Car Char- Championship competitors. It's all about the Summer Championship, though, uh, heading towards July. Our next karting live broadcast will be round one of the NKC, which will be coming from Clear Pigeon. Uh, Clear Pigeon will see round one of the NKC, which you can find live uh, coming next month, middle of April. And then we head to, I think, two weeks after, after the first round of the NKC, we head back 
to Warden Law for round three of this championship, the Cart Championship. So we're just gathering up the errant carts from the circuit that have been just being recovered back to the paddock. We have had uh, pretty good weather considering. Uh, I think we've been very lucky. There was a little bit of rain forecast that hasn't come. There's still a chance yet. It is getting chilly. So chilly that Henry's putting his jacket back on. But he has just been out for a pit stop. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Fuel uh, and tyres. So how... Um, <laughs> I said splash and dash. I thought, <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah, you were yeah. going to go. Yeah. Um, how cold is it? It's a, a brisk. Brisk. It's a... Certainly, the wind is there, but the air has cooled, and that's uh, that's significant in terms of jetting and tire pressures. So there's there's not there's not a, the, the breeze is you can see the, the the flags sort of gently fluttering in the breeze, but the air has cooled considerably uh, from what it was this morning. Yeah, it did yesterday, didn't it? If yes. I remember rightly. Oh, we're being handed a piece of paper in the commentary box. What is it's, that then? It's the grid for uh, race number forty-two, Micromax. Oh, splendid. Uh, is that, now, have you already got We've the grid? Already got that. So that means a shuffling of paper, uh, soundbite. No, we have not. No, we haven't. So that's be, our we, final. We, that's our that last, final. last race. So we have got three, three races, races to, to go. go. I've already read the grid down. Excellent. So we're, we're aware of that. The grid forming up nicely, uh, just coming through the compression. Watch for Harvey Bacon on the inside of row four. As we come to the line, lights are out. We're off and racing down towards. Uh, no, we're not off at racing. That's a late absolutely, call with the yeah, false start. Absolutely, false start. They, there, looked being a, they looked a tad quick. Uh, that's what it'll be. Yes. It's, they were tidy, but they were too quick. Yes, too and quick. One of Dan Ashton's pet hits, we worked, he was our clerk of the course at Ward Law last week, and I was yeah. working literally side by side. Yes. So inside the workings of the mind of Dan Ashton oh, was a dangerous massive, place to was, be. I felt really, it felt really dirty, and, to and, be honest. And, and, cr and, <laughs> and cramped, and, because it's quite yeah, small, mind. No, but I did. Back. I, I've, I've now formed um, a, 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 a massive insight. He doesn't like people slowing it right down and then and booting, then it, booting it before the final yeah. turn. You've got to be slow out of the final turn and, bring and the give speed it a boot up. as you get to the line. Yes, And yes. that's exactly what we didn't see yeah. on this one. See, uh, that one there. Yep. You might not like this one either. We'll have a little look and we'll wait for the march. No, yeah. he didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See that? See oh, the inside God, I got you're, last you're week? inside Dan Ashton's head. It's I'm like, inside oh. Dan Ashton's head, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, he, now, uh, he, gave, he gave a class two chances at this yesterday, uh, and, and then he stopped them and thought, right, no, no, we're having, not, not having this. But, I mean, the drivers know because he's so consistent with his calls. Just keep, they, just do not know. accelerate until you come out of the final turn. Yes, I don't want to and see And as you go towards the line, then he, then he likes you to accelerate. Yeah, yeah. That. He doesn't want to see the throttle going in before you turn no. into the apex of the final turn. Because that is what then gives the, the front runners such an advantage That's over right. the middle. And also, it means the speeds are generally much quicker going into turn number That's one. That's the main thing he's looking and, at. Yeah, and you, you don't want them to be flat chat going into turn one straight off the start because that's where, you know, accidents accidents can happen anywhere. Max let's Kilman is going to be given another chance. This is a little bit better. This that is a bit is better. better. Yes. I think he's going to let them go here. Yeah, because they, he waited till yeah, those two waited, orange yes. cones. And, and look at that. It still worked for him. He still uh, got a big lead after, you know, on his uh, his final warning before he goes to the naughty step. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> and look at the gap he's got. He, he really did well there. Tooley Motorsports, Max Gilman leads down the hill towards the carousel for the first time. I really do love this left-hander. It's a 180-degree sweeping left-hand turn. It's probably got about two apexes that you have to clip there, one yep. going in, one coming out. And Max Gilman showing everybody the way around. Jensen Seal, it is, on the number 140. He's in second as the Intermax. We, we tend to be stringing out here. We're still all nose to tail, but not bumper to bumper. No, and uh, but again, we saw this in the first half of the Super Heat 2, where they were all sort of like, you know, and then they all sort of caught up with each other towards the end. Uh, and uh, we've still got that driver. Uh, who was that? Is, uh, in, let's have a little look. Two, four, with the gelée on. There is that Harvey chilly. Bacon. You said it it's is chilly. chilly. And fair play, you know, obviously. He's not worried about weight. Mum and, so dad, not, mum and dad know. are thinking about, we can't have, we can't, oh, it's Easter holidays now, isn't it? Uh, a lot of the people are in the Easter holidays. So we yeah, don't school, school are, yeah, at school absolutely. on the Monday morning. 
Um, but uh, it is Gilman from Sale, Plowman, Anderson, Jackson, Edwards, Bacon, Ralston, uh, Davidson, Roach and Kemp. So if anything's going to happen here, I think it's the, the uh, cart of JJ Plowman there with the bright orange overalls and the gilet. Is that the cart that's wearing the gilet? Uh, no, no, no. That's just All a, right, that's that's a, just rib, a protector. rib protector. Yes. Right, that's Fraser Anderson, yes. who is just quite happy to sit there on the bumper of JJ Plowman for now. Mm -hmm. He's just looked over his shoulder. There's nobody there. He doesn't have to hurry. So he's just going to sit there. And this is what we find. And it's a little bit sort of processional at the moment. But I feel, Henry, yep. that everybody's just sort of, you know, gauging it. High speed yeah. game of chess is what I call it. We're just biding our time. Ten minutes in one lap, remember. So there's extra time on this on this heat. So there's plenty of time to start pushing and, and challenging we'll, we'll and making mistakes if needs be. Yeah, we'll have to pull away from this camera shot very shortly so Paul can mark off his uh, Joe Bradley uh, karting bingo card. Ah, uh, yes, we've, of course. We've, we've, heard, we've had high speed game of chess. Twice. Um, twice, twice. Oh, so he's already, already filled twice. it out. Um, we've had a few momentums. A few momentums yeah. and of course, uh, we've had a pitcher tent. A pitcher tent. Um, we've yeah. now got a... So wait we've had one tin opener. One tin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll wait to see if uh, any driver is hugging down behind the NASA panel to create maximum aerodynamic efficiency, which is uh, another one. As, uh, well, uh, Jensen Sale doesn't need maximum aerodynamic efficiency. He has got enough waft in the motor of that uh, Ambition Motorsport car to close right back in on Gilman as indeed, they come he? through Pitts Bend to yeah. start another lap. This will be the beginning of lap number five. You need the cart well set up there to be able to go through that first turn flat out. Yes. Clubhouse Corner is a very fast sweeping right-hander, and if your cart has got not enough grip to get you through flat out pretty safely and without any fluster, then you are going to lose time up the straight. And we saw that there with Jensen Seal being able to keep his foot hard in, as did Max Gilman, and he was able to stay with Max Gilman all the way up the hill now. Into turn seven, into Devil's Elbow here. This is the more technical part of Glanny Gores. Yep. Now into the compression. Easy to lose time there with the cart sliding away from you. And they're here completing five laps now. So five laps in the bag. Still first and second, only two tenths in it, but we really don't need the timing screen to tell us that. JJ Plowman's fell back about a second, and then, well, seven tenths, and then another nine tenths as Fraser Anderson, who I thought was going to challenge, but that just hasn't come, come off, hasn't manifested in any way. No, because, well, of course, with these, with the way that Gilman and Sale are, are racing, pushing each other along, then they're not giving the others an opportunity to even put themselves in a position to challenge because, uh, you know, they're, they're just working together. Last time around, Gilman did a personal best lap of 44.869. That was quicker than everybody else uh, apart from well, everyone else in the top five at least. Using um, much more road there, isn't he? Yeah. Just Jensen Power to sail. He just uses all of that execute, whereas Gilman doesn't have to. No, no, that's the sign at the moment. Is that a different line through that first turn, maybe a later apex for, for Gilman? And it could be a, a, just a slight sign of, of how the, 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 the rear end of the cart is, is, is set up, you know, the pressures or, you know, the, 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 the spacing on the rear axle, just to, to sort of, you know, let it float a little bit more. Yes, yeah, um, I think for, so. For sale, whereas Gilman has got the drive to, you know, he doesn't, have the, the the back end's not quite as free, but the cart's not bogging down either. Yeah, yeah he's a, he's able to just to just hold that tighter line. Here they come. We'll get a little, another look at them through turn one. We'll see where he turns in. Now nah, turn in exactly the same spot, yeah. and uh, Seal being caught, I think, by Plowman. Plowman beginning to make ground. Yeah, six tenths quicker, fractionally. Yeah. Yes. But, the, but six tenths can become three tenths very quickly. Very very quickly. And then three tenths can become nothing if once you're in the slipstream. So uh, yeah, the 171 car to JJ Plowman is working very hard and uh, is keeping himself in contention. And I think the slipstream is the key word there, Henry. I think he's about to start picking that up. Yeah. If he, if he, he's going to be starting to be dragged along. And those, that big hole that those two cars are making in the air, yep. Plowman is about to ta start taking advantage of that. Uh, yeah, he'll get he, sucked he, into the vacuum. I mean, you know, these are not racing cars with big wings and aerodynamics, but they have got aero on them. Yes. And they do punch a hole in the air. And this is where Plowman will pick it up on the straight here. Yep. And I wouldn't be surprised, even from that far back, 
you know, we'll have a little look. It's gone back out to eight tenths, however. It's gone. It has gone back out to eight tenths. But you look at the designs, and you get the NASA panel on the the front of Max Gilman's car. You know, we've unkindly called it the drain pipe uh, design. <laughs> but there is a there is a channel that feeds air up over the top of the steering wheel, over the top of the driver's helmet. Yeah, to create that aerodynamic, uh, to, to, to create the you know, the yeah, the, the aerodynamics, and to obviously push the air so that there's a more of a hole behind the driver that uh, you can use the slipstream on. So, uh, the, yeah. So is that, c- that 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 channel at the it's, front of it's that It's a deliberate panel. design to create, yeah. you that, know, airflow. Is that going to benefit the cart behind, though, by putting the, well, I mean, the air if, over the cart behind? If the driver behind can hunker down behind the NASA panel and get lower in the seat than the, the leader can, yeah, the air just goes over the top of him. Yes, yeah. Because that's a different panel. On it is the, a different on, side on of NASA sales, panel. Yeah. That's the flatter the smoother, NASA panel, which deflects it? air sideways. Sideways. So, you know, you, you, you need sharp elbows, but you need your shoulders to be in. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, I see that. They, we are, they have come together yeah. for the lead. And I think Jensen Seal has been kind of playing that waiting game. Because now, coming up to that key two-minute mark, and remember, these drivers underneath that mark, above, where it says GYG, be on the other side, that's a digital yeah, information a digi- board. Yep. And that's telling the drivers exactly how much time they have left. So they're fully aware yes. of where they are in this 10-minute race. And, and, uh, absolutely. Now, sadly, we've lost Oscar Roach from the race in the number 196 car. He is out of the race. All uh, We've got 10 drivers left. Gilman, Sale, Plowman, the top three. Anderson, Edwards, Jackson, Bacon, Ralston, Davidson and Kemp the rest of the running order and uh, even though there's no but this, this been watching lots of overtaking it's a, it's a critical cat and mouse game of like yeah ready get your dabbers out high speed game of chess <laughs> ding ding you can have that yeah, one yeah, 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 I want to hear that next week oh, okay thank you very much <laughs> yeah, yeah courtesy of Joe Bradley <laughs> yeah yeah here we go though it's uh, getting down to 90 seconds Henry this is what it's all been about all weekend <laughs> since we got here on Friday yep. we've been practicing we went qualifying we had two heats yesterday. We had two super heats this morning. And it's all come down to this last 90 seconds for Max Gilman, Jensen Seal, and JJ Plowman. JJ Plowman's going to get ST Racing a bit of a podium after the disappointment in the junior field of Addison Smith, who uh, ended up from yes. pole position going to the back of the field. He'll have, that is a small consolation for John Stewart's team, but it'll be something that they'll take. And a great drive from JJ Plowman, who's broke away from the rest of the field behind him. Here they come then. One minute on the board, so probably three minutes of racing, I would say. Yes. Uh, sorry, three minutes. Three, three, three laps. laps of racing to go. And, uh, you know, as far as JJ Plowman is concerned, he, you know, hey, he's, he's, he's there. If, uh, if things go wrong yes. between Gilman and Sale, then uh, he's there to pick up the pieces. And he's, you know, he's got enough time to react uh, to, to anything that happens in front of him. But uh, Gilman with the, uh, o- the overflow pipe yeah, is that on the, the radio. Yeah, the radio yeah, overflow pipes come up. Yeah, yeah, just come, just come detached a little yeah, at bit. one end. And that, that's not going to cause, that's not a technical issue. That's just a distraction. Yes. Uh, more than anything else. That just clips on, doesn't it? Yeah, so there's a little bracket that has obviously uh, worked its way loose. But uh, and of course it is just a tiny little distraction for the driver. But he's uh, Max Gilman is not letting it uh, distract him and uh, chooses a very good moment to put in a very good lap, a forty-four nine eight compared to a forty-four uh, five zero six for sale. And suddenly the gap opens up again. He's not out of danger by any stretch, but you know instead of letting the pressure get to him. He's now putting the pressure on the driver chasing well, him. Well, like I said, Henry, they're fully aware of how much time is left. And Gilman knew he had to, if he's got anything in his toolkit, he needs to get it out now and use it. Yep. However, he's using all he can. However, Jensen Seal, still on his bumper. He's got one more lap as they come through the compression. They've got one more corner to go. And then they will embark on the final lap of the weekend. Here they go, then. It's the Intermax final here. And it's Max Gilman leading up the Dragon Street. He looks over his shoulder. He sees Jensen Seal. What has Jensen Seal got? As a little bit of a defensive line into the spoon corner. Gilman is very fast through there. Yep. Very fast indeed. Now, at this time a lap ago, Gilman ran wide coming out of the carousel and almost put a wheel on the, on the grass at the outside. Does he do the same thing there? No, he doesn't. No, not so quite. So he corrects. He was a little bit more contained. Yes. Opportunities are running low for Jensen Seal to have a go at Max Gilman for the win. 
Here they come then, the last three few sequences of corners. They've got one more corner to go. Gilman's got this in the bag as he comes through on the exit curb. Tooley Motorsports, Max Gilman takes the win for Intermax. Jensen Sale, a fine that, second, I've got to say. Uh, yeah. Great drive. And here's one thing that we haven't said all weekend. That was a light to flag victory. Yes, it was, absolutely. For Max Gilman. Yeah, yeah Max Gilman. The, incredibly Spot well on. controlled, but... Uh, yeah, you know, there's there's always going to be one race, and that may have been it. Yeah, but, uh, that, you know, so Josh Cormack, who led the championship at the end of uh, the Wilton Mill round, he's obviously not here, so he's, he's not, not, a, here, not a factor. A, Adam Turacek isn't here. So, so Gilman and Sale, who are second and fourth in yeah. the championship, J.B. and Plowman, who is fifth, they're going to go ahead of them, of course, Absolutely, with a massive yeah. difference in points there. Um, so let's have a look at the order. Max Gilman took the win. Jensen Seal second. JJ Plowman with a consolation for the team. ST Racing taking a podium there with JJ Plowman in fine style. Fraser Anderson was fourth. Harvey Bacon fifth. Thomas Jackson sixth. Nathan Edwards seventh. George Ralston was eighth. Ninth was David, uh, sorry, Drew Davidson. Sandro Kemp was tenth. And then we lost Oscar Roach very early there, uh, less than half distance ago. Oscar Roach went out on lap six. So that is the Intermax final done and dusted. What have we got next? We've got uh, oh, Mighty I, Bambinos. Sure. I can't cope with this, mate. Ah, oh, the sound of silence. That's <laughs> what, Simon and Garth on Gore's head. <laughs> it was indeed. I tell you, it might be silent in, in, in noise, <sighs> but it's not silent in drama and contention, is it? Absolutely awesome racing from these electric carts so far. Yes. The championship coming into round two... Ralph Martin, who took the Wilton Mill final in great style from Ollie West in second. We had Felix Tandy rounding off the podium in third, and then Heath Smith in fourth. The championship is Ralph Martin on 200 points, mm -hmm. Ollie West on 190, Heath Smith on 181. Then we got Felix Tandy and Jack Harper, both on 175, and then Junior Wright on 171. Uh, Jack Harper isn't here, I think. Uh, no. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Sorry. Yes, he is. He's uh, in the number 57 ninth. cart, but has been ninth of the grids. Is so, Junior right here? Yes, he is in the number 11. He's in the bright blue. There he is. Uh, third machine, row. Third row, outside of the third row in the, uh, uh, the, the turquoise blue, turquoise. Turquoise, yes. Yes. So uh, the, 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 ch the, uh, the championship is wide open. Absolutely. Then. And, of course, you know, you're, 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 you're looking at, the, obviously, Henry Hales. Ah, no, it was, it was the mighty Bambinos that Henry Hales has won two events that... He was winning this morning. Ollie West, we saw him winning in the other Bambino class, the Coma Bambino class, earlier on. Um, Oliver Woodall, they're in fourth on the grid. Ralph Mart, uh, oh, pick a winner. Any one of, I mean, yeah, Heath Smith and Junior Wright, they've been there or thereabouts. Felix Tandy uh, has, been, has been right up there. The top seven, I would say, have probably separated themselves from the rest of the field in terms of fighting for overall honours. However, uh, you, you know, this is probably going to be a, well, this is going to be a 10 minutes plus a lap. Henry Hills took the win. Yes. Second super heat. Yes. Yes, he did. Um, Ollie West was second. There was nothing in it. That was the one, remember, Felix Tandy. Did Felix Tandy get spun out of the second super heat or the yeah, first? Yeah, he went, he, he, he went rally crossing uh, during that race. Right. Yes. Right. And that's, he ended up sixth. Heath Smith was fourth. So all the all oh. of the championship contenders after one round. I mean, as we get through the season towards round round three, four, and five, the championship will be taking form. I think it's four rounds out of five that qualify. Oh, okay, so yeah, yes. I think there's a drop score comes into it. Um, so I'm pretty sure of that. Well, I might we'll, be wrong. We'll, 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 we'll double check the. Uh, there's a uh, d -d 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 five while events. You, while you do that, oh, all f ah, all five championship rounds to count towards the overall championship ah, scores. Right. Yes, of course. I did commend Darren and his team for that, and I said the reason for that is because it's much easier for us to work out. Yes, uh, drops, drop um, scores. Drop scores. We have no idea whose no. who's worst score was. Right. Yes. So let's have a look at the the grid order. Uh, front row of the grid. Then Henry Hills. We'll start on the pole with Ollie West alongside. Pick a winner from them two if you can. Uh, Ralph Martin and Oliver Woodall, they'll want to spoil the party on row two. Heath Smith and Junior Wright are on row three. We've then got Felix Tandy and Maximilian Makalski on row four. Row five is Jack Harper and Eva Garrett. Row six, Etienne Gardner, and I think the first of the novices there. Yes. Even though I think Felix Tandy is a novice. 
with ah. only his second defence. So, so we'll, we'll have to see. But yeah, obviously, well, I mean, if 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 Nick hasn't filled out the entry form properly, I mean, what can you do with these five? Well, he has people to do that for him. Surely, oh, he's I'm a professional sure racing that, yes. driver. Uh, <laughs> so Jensen James Williams starts on row six alongside Etienne Gardner. Row seven is Hugo Williams and Hadley Jarvis, and then we've got Frank Pearson and Nico Mohan. Christian Doshi and Kai Ergensoy with Arthur Thompson and Arthur Bath rounding off the 20 cart field. It's a standing start again. So as the Bambinos uh, make their way onto the grid. And that was, just, we'll just embarrass uh, Mike Peabody uh, there just standing in front of Ollie West's cart for doing the big muscle flex on the <laughs> outside of the front row of the grid. Now, I know his drivers are very uh, happy that we came in and chatted to them, but uh, they'll be very happy that we've made fun of their driver, coach and team boss for uh, doing the f muscle flex on the starting grid in front of the TV cameras. Uh. <laughs> yes, he's going to love you for that. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. How to make grit, friends? Grit. And, how to make friends and influence people by H. Bodet. Uh, Mike yes. Peabody, though, great interview. In yes, the Paddock Show with with you last night. It was it was again great insight as to uh, yeah, showing the accessibility of this class. You know how yes. the, how the carts can you know the the, the 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 power units can be changed. And uh, now there's the mechanics race. Good beard game by the one I man. There, great beard game. Um, so, so Nick, how 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 are you not? Why are you not driving at Le Mans? Ah, well, it was the as I was running in the mechanics race off the grid I at the mighty Bambino, I tripped and twisted my ankle. So, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Well, yes. Here we go. Here we go. Then let's have a look and see when we get the green flag flies at the back of the grid. The red light comes on and we'll go off, and then we'll see these electric carts literally fly off the grid. Oh, a little bit of a little bit of a hesitation there mid down the order. Not quite sure who that was, but off and into the lead has gone Henry Hills, followed by Ollie West. Ollie, easy to pick out with that bright green helmet. The field of mighty Bambinos on up the Dragon Street, up the hill now towards Spoon. They'll appear over the brow in great order. Look at that, absolutely glued together. Four cards there. Fantastic, fantastic camera work as well. I have to say, to, to, to show, when we say about drafting and slipstreaming and uh, resting your nose on the front bumper of the cart, or the, the rear bumper of the cart in front, that's what we mean. Here's Felix oh, Tandy. Felix Tandy. <laughs> oh, well, oh. He, well, I mean, you know, he went, he said, right, well, I, I got pushed onto the grass earlier, so the grass is, is okay there. I'll just use a bit of it to, uh, I, you know, create my own line. Yeah, so has, he, the, has know, he let him back through as well? I'm sorry, mate. I'm going to let you back through, and I'm going to have another go at that. Yeah, po po possibly. Uh, well, I'm not sure. Let because or, he, well, he looked across at him, and he kind of. I think he said, "Well, well you, you know, maybe he thinks that was probably a little bit over enthusiastic, and to avoid, you know, incurring the wrath of the, those uh, those in charge." We got change a battle of lead. Change of lead. Change of lead. That's Ralph Mart. Oh, yeah, sorry. oh, he's on it. Yeah, he's had him on oh, the grass. Hello. He's mm. had Hills onto the grass there. Ollie West moving across to the right. And that's allowed Tandy up to second. Hills drops to fourth. Tandy, and who's that going through that's into the lead? That's Ralph Martin. Is it? Ralph is that Ma who that is? Ralph Martin takes the lead of the number 32 carts. The, Unbelievable. Uh, uh, Tandy awesome. second, <laughs> West third. And, uh, you know, aggression is one thing, but uh, if there is a cart alongside you, I mean, luckily these carts aren't, you know, uh, that uh, Henry Hales... Is uh, is fine there, but uh, he's back to fifth position now yeah. because the first of the carts with the red bumpers, uh, the red rear bumper. Oh, there's a move! Yeah, uh, for the lead. Wh what a move! Tandy holds the inside line through Devil's elbow. They're side by side into the compression, and Tandy will come out in the lead. Ralph Martin now second, Ollie West right on his bumper, and, and it is Henry Hills who gets back and resumes in fourth. Still eight minutes to go. So still a lot of racing from these mighty Bambinos. Here they go then. Look at little Felix getting his head down there. He knows. Oh, and there the slipstream comes into wow. play. From first to third. His dad will be proud when I say it's a NASCAR race, this. Yep. It really is a slipstreamer. Absolutely awesome. As Ollie West back into the lead and ahead of Ralph Martin once again. I mean, the, 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 the motor-based performance uh, and uh, British touring car champion Ash Sutton will be quite upset with us because all we said is all the Napa sponsorship, it looks like a NASCAR, forgetting that it's the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the there's a large team in British touring cars with the same thing. But no, it's NASCAR. He's a, he's a Chase Elliott fan, uh, yeah. and that's that. Yeah, absolutely. Here he goes, Felix Tandy, back up to third, ahead of Ralph Martin. He did that to Ralph Martin the previous lap, yeah. but that was for first. This time it's for second. 
little bit of a uh, little bit of encouragement on the back of Felix yeah, Tandy there, <laughs> Unav- unavoidable. Unavoidable. And likewise, a little bit of encouragement from <laughs> Felix Tandy on Ollie West as they go, absolutely attached to one another. Yep. It's a four-car train up the Dragon Strait towards Spoon. They'll appear. They'll pop up over the over the brow of the hill. I mean, these are electric. Is there such a thing as kinetic magnetism? <laughs> that might be what we're seeing here. Yes. We'll stay with that angle there. It's a great angle as we see them come into the braking area and go side by side and then sort themselves out as they come down the, uh, the hill towards the carousel. We're inside of six and a half minutes. Ollie West, Felix Tandy, Ralph Martin. We've dropped Henry Hill slightly. I say slightly, maybe two cart lengths mm-hmm. at most. And this is where we've been swapping position. We're not really supposed to be doing that at this part of Gladigors, but we are. Oh, oh, and that's a coming together. That's a coming together of Ollie West and Felix Tandy. Ollie West is still in the lead. Ralph Martin second. Felix Tandy recovers to third. Gathers his composure and hangs on to that. Henry Hill's all over the rear bumper, though. Yeah, all three of them are sideways, coming down through Devil's Elbow there, and all three of them caught the, 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 the power slide. Now Henry Hale's is trying to work with Felix Tandy. And, you know, Ollie West, uh, you know, he does have to be careful. There's, there's, you've got to be aggressive and you've got to defend your position, but occasionally you've got to, and you've got to realise, OK, I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to be passed here. This, I've lost this corner. Um, you know, no, no, no racing driver wants to be overtaken, but, you know, there are occasions where, you know, you, you, you've, uh, you, you have to concede. I, I think it's something you were saying earlier about the, the lack of periphery under the yeah, edge of... Yeah, there is. The there is 12, did you say? Uh, yeah, yeah it's 12 to 13 is when a human when being... the periphery uh, The peripheral vision is, is, is completed, as no, it were. No mirrors on a cart. No. Nope. And so, you and, know... And you've got no engine noise... And no, to, yes, absolutely. To, to, sort of yeah. to, to signify That's where your point. rivals are. That's a good point. So, unless you're fully alongside... You're not going to appear in the peripheral vision yes. of any driver, and even more so at the age of seven. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. But uh, the six of them at the front. <laughs> now, now uh, Hen- uh, Oliver Woodall is the first of the drivers, the red flicks on the back of his rear bumper. Heath Smith is the second of those drivers. Jack Harper runs seventh, then James Je- uh, Jensen, James Williams, Junior Wright, Ava Garrett's your top ten. All 20 starters still running with Arthur Barth and Arthur Thompson at the back of the field. Yeah, there's no um, attrition with, uh, without a petrol engine, I suppose, is the yes. thing. The battery's fully charged and oh. are good for all day. Yep, not enough space there to go through. Ollie Just. West still leading. Ralph Martin second. Just testing the structural rigidity of their yeah. side pods there. I think it worked. Yes, yes. I think it worked. Felix Tandy just eager to get back on terms with the leaders, and I yeah. think he is there. Out of the compression, into the final turn. Then it'll be six laps completed. West leading, Martin second, Felix Tandy now on the rear bumper yes. of Ralph Martin. And Felix doesn't hang about, does he? He's already kind of forming a personality on track. And the yes. personality of Felix Tandy is he catch, doesn't hang about. Catch them, pass them. Pa- catch them, pass them. Simple as. You know, yes, yes. It's, uh, you know, and, and the other drivers will start to learn this as well. And, and you know, every driver is different. Uh, and uh, as the more these youngsters race around each other, they'll realise, OK, this driver, I, I know will sit behind me and work with me. This driver, I know that he, he or she will try and go right past me. So maybe I will learn to try and just follow this driver instead of defending halfway through a race. Well, bizarrely, these three youngsters are proving me wrong by just sitting with each other. Uh, yeah. we've, seen, we've seen them trip over one another at this part of the track there. Devil's elbow. Mm. Now we go. That's, that's the compression. That's compression. That's board. where Felix c- kind of finds himself out um, of position, sort yeah, of. That was a wrong line yes, through there. Yes, yes. So it's he, cost him a little bit. But he's, he's going to get it back. He's going to get that back. So watch this. So from, Watch the toe. Watch the toe now. By the time they get to spoon curve, they're going to be... Absolutely nose to tail, the three of them. That's incredible. You can actually see the tool working there yep. and Felix Tandy just drawing up behind Ralph Martin there. It's the there green it. helmet there you see of, of Ollie West. In the spoon. And the st- you know what? They, they've, they've learned a big lesson, haven't they, in the early oh, yeah. stages. However, we've got the two-minute <laughs> mark coming up. 
Yeah. Now, 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 in American sports, you have the two-minute warning, which is usually <laughs> where they stop the game to have a TV commercial. Yeah. I th- I'm a great okay. proponent yeah, after yeah. this weekend. Two-minute warning. Let's all have a little quick break just yeah. for the commentators. Yes, to catch to, our breath. Yes. Three carts, first, second, and third, together. Together now, through the final stages of the lap. They've got a left-hander to take. And then it's sweeping downhill off camber through the final turn. And then underneath us, they're inside of two minutes now, one minute 45. Yep. And Ralph Martin, who sat on the rear bumper of Ollie West in showing great patience, mm. is now perhaps beginning to think of when he's going to challenge. Oh, but you know what they say about patience? It always wears out eventually. I thought you were going to say it's a virtue. Uh, well, it, 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 it is. <laughs> it is a virtue, but in, in karting, patience wears thin. Uh, the closer to home you get, and by home I mean that chequered flag, not the uh, not your driveway at the end of the motorway. Well, these two working together, ah. as they will do going forward into Cadet, whether that's Honda engine or Rotax engine, Cadets le- needing to learn how to work together and use the airflow. Felix Tandy draws back up once more onto the rear bumper of Ralph Martin into the compression. It'll be nine laps completed. This is the longest race these youngsters have had all weekend. And here we go. We are inside the final minute, which means for these carts, this is the we point. are into the penultimate lap. Yep. So one more lap after this one. And and they've done an excellent job. They pulled away from Henry Hales in fourth, from from Heath Smith in fifth, and Oliver Woodall in sixth. It's going to come down to these three. These are your three potential podium drivers. What we don't know is uh, which step each of them will get on. And this is assuming they all get home, and I hope they, they, they do, and this doesn't suggest they won't. But it's a case of you, you, you've got your three podium drivers there on screen, but yeah. anyone's guess as to which order they will climb onto the podium. And here we've got a variation on, on, of, of an opinion regarding line through turn six and seven into Devil's Elbow. There's still line astern. Nobody moving out. And here we go. That was the side-by-side action. Felix Tandy threw the compression in a yep. second. Ralph Martin made the move and it didn't come off. And Felix Tandy pounced. He's into second going into the final lap. Ollie West leading. Now then, can Felix Tandy fit, pick up that tour yes. from the leader? He does, and he's taking Ralph Martin with him. It's becoming intense. They're bumper to bumper, quite literally, together. Over the brow in a moment. Any moment now, we'll see them appear over the brow. And into our view, here they come. Ollie West, Felix Tandy. They're breaking a little bit away from Ralph Martin. That's going to be useful going into the final stages of his last lap. Down the hill to the carousel. They'll go through... There's very little speed difference between the straight and this corner here at the carousel. It's a flat-out challenge. And now, with a back marker appearing oh, just dear. in front of these three, is that going to be a factor? Well, watch T- Tandy sizing him up for a move there. There he goes. Oh, Felix that's the move Tandy the lead. into the race lead. Great stuff. Now, can Josh, uh, can uh, Ollie West fight back? One corner to go, Joe. Into the final corner goes Felix Tandy. His timing was perfection. He claps his hands with both hands off the wheel. You're only seven. Get your hands on the wheel. Incredible. Oh, my God. I tell you now, Nick Tandy will be a blubbering wreck on that track side. Uh, yes. The apple does he will not be a fall far from the Blubbering wreck. That, that was is, excellent. That was... Uh, you know what? Round of applause, not just for Felix Tandy so for the win, of, all three but of Ollie West, Ralph Martin, Henry Hills, Oliver Woodall, Heath Smith, Jensen James Williams, Jack Harper, Junior Wright, Eddie and Gardner. There's your top ten yep. in the uh, in the mighty Bambinos. That those three at the front, and I'm sorry everybody who was behind those three. That was an intense, t- an intense situation for the race win. Well, yeah, for I- the round two. Final it, exactly. win. Exactly. And, and, you know, this is why this is why it's great that we cover the, the heat races uh, on the Saturday as well, because that gives us a chance to talk about some of the drivers, some of the stories about the drivers, that when it comes to the import, the, 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 the main events, <clears throat> and we don't feature them because they're running away from the lead, at least they've had a bit of camera time. They've had a chance to tell their stories. We, yeah, we will. We, we, do, we do. We do try to do that. It, it, it's very well, hard when you have a bumper to bump of race yeah, for the, yeah, for the you overall win. You can't take your eyes off, off a battle for the lead because they're not just circulating nose to tail. They're thinking, plotting, planning uh, uh, all the time. Fantastic.
And that brings us to race number 42 we, we are, on the programme. When we finish, we are going to have to go and, and see Nick. Uh, yes, we shall. We, we shall. We yes. shall. Do you know where they are, by the way? Uh, d- 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 RC, what, RCE? RCE? I'll, yes, I, yes. The, the se- second second uh, row of the thing. In the, uh, no, the first row, the Vital, the vital Motorsport Awning with Vital and RCE. I think they're together. We'll, right, we'll, okay. We'll I th- find I them think, out. But, um, I think Nick's with them. Yeah, so, I mean, race 42... Uh, it's the last oh, race. Well, race, last race of the weekend. Well, what, it's the answer to life, the universe, and everything. According to 42, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, I've got, I've just got just, a, just a quick personal moment. This is, I mean, this is the first time I've been able to be at uh, a, a kart championship, the karting championship uh, event, uh, and do and commentate on it in all its guises from the Bambino Kart Club upwards. And I have to say that I am... Number one, very grateful for the for the warm welcome that I've received from everyone in the paddock. Everybody loves you, uh, Henry. And, and number two, I'm just so pleased to see uh, so much laughing, joking. Again, the, you, you, you look out and you think, oh, stop kicking a football around the paddock, you know. But the kids are having fun. They're having fun. The product has been absolutely superb. The structure of the events, the communication systems, all excellent. But the main thing that I, I, I take away is... Apart from the racing, is the smiles. The smiles that the paddock that the, this championship has generated, uh, such uh, camaraderie, such uh, a keen sporting etiquette, which mm. I like. Well, you know, Henry, uh, Darren, Joe, and Matty, the organisers of the, of the car championship, will, will take something away from those comments because you are part of. I hope of... it's not my paycheck they're going to take well, away. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, uh, no, no, for those comments, though, they'll take they'll, they, what. You know, you have a lot of credibility considering the karting that you're involved with. You're involved with the the very top level of British Championship karting at national level. You're also involved in the world, you know, the world finals, the Rotax World Finals, international karting, the American scene. You, you you're involved in uh, yeah, that. I, you yeah, see so a lot of karting. So for I, you to yes. say that about that championship, yeah, no, it, it's, it's, is it's, they're, they're, you know, you you have got a lot of credibility. This is a really in, good in, in part of it. I've enjoyed in. my weekend here, and uh, I hope it's. I certainly hope it's not the last. Uh, has well, Nick, has might, Nick got another daughter that he can well, marry off? <laughs> uh, Maybe maybe the weekend of fullback. I was about I think to say. I'm free that I was about to say you've you've kind of made it very hard for uh, for well no, you know what no 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 when, Nick and Joe are the voices of this championship and they you yes. know and I and that's however that. but uh, if, however there are occasions Henry <laughs> and I need you to get back to us with with the calendar have a look at the calendar and. Uh, that, oh, you're free for that one, are you? You're I'll free. be a pit lane reporter. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll take over your job at, at, at uh, yeah, the Mon, yeah, and yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll okay. report for the pits. You and Nick can do the commentary, that, that's a nice... and I'll, I'll, be on, I'll be in the pits. You know what? That, that's something that we need to work on, isn't it? Um, uh, right now, at this point in time, handing down to someone like uh, yourself in that well, collecting area and being able to talk the drivers through their helmets... That's what we need to work on technically. Yes, I, um, I'm, to, sh- to I'm sure that. it's that weekend. Yeah, that's, that's, not, we- that's not unrealistic, is it, James? No, oh, that's good. Go, James, no, the tech, our techie here is saying that's really doable. Well, well, it's the weekend between the Sodi World Finals in Genk and the L- Rotax International Trophy at Le Mans. So I think Genk, the home of champions where Max Verstappen started karting, Le Mans one of the most famous names in any form of motorsport. If I could squeeze Fulbeck in between the, between those two, I think that that's a that's a dream. Three massively historic venue. Three, oh yes, yes. Um, the, <laughs> road the, racing, the, where the road, toilet block uh, at Fulbeck Ma- being the most historic piece of the ball. Le Mans, where, where <laughs> Le Mans was where road racing was born Began, yes, in 1923, yeah. and, and it was just just uh, last year's during the international trophy on the Saturday night. Uh, no, the Friday nights before the finals on Saturday, Roger Dorchy passed away. All right, uh, yes, uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I, I made a point of saying to the kids, said, listen, you know, history was made just beyond those trees. And if you yes. close your eyes and uh, you listen, you can almost hear the sound of the engine. Well, the tracks is on the outside uh, of the Porsche Curse. Yes, yes. And say, you know, we're sitting here at a place where... Era, you know, era nautical history where automotive history me- has me- been made. It's a mecca. It's a of mecca. Yeah. And um, you know, they none of those people would have heard of Roger Dorchy. Uh, no, but I, no, made, I made not. sure that they 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 did because they should all. That's a good education. That's a good education that you're giving them. Uh, here we you go know. then. Uh, Alfie Mayer leads the championship coming into this one with a second place 
at Wilton Mill in round one. Logan Rolfe second in the championship after taking the first step of the podium at Wilton Mill. Benedictus, Benedictus Masiokas finished third at Wilton Mill and is third in the championship. It's Alfie Mayer and Benedictus Masiokas on the front row of the grid here for our mm-hmm. Micro Max final. Uh, Logan Rolfe and Dian Singh Pahal are on row two. Chloe McGill and Buddy Hugo row three. Row four is Jensen Walker and Alfie Garrett. Then we've got Albi J. Stubbs and Lewis, Her- Lewis Herbertson. Uh, Xavier Ramsey and Lewis Kakodi are next. Row seven, Sebastian Crawford. Uh, great, uh, great, yeah. great position for Sebastian, who's learning all the time. Uh, Elijah West uh, alongside row eight. Freddie Blackshaw, likewise for Freddie on row eight. Jack Mellon. Uh, Victor Popacool and Matthew Lilly are on row nine. Ronnie Faulkner. And we're going to get them going round again because we haven't read the grid. Well, that's great. I mean, uh, you, know, you know, I mean, because you're inside Dan Ashton's head. I, I am. He, 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 now, very, yeah. he knows what you're thinking as well. It's a, it's a mutual, be- it's a mutually beneficial of So it's he's a, inside your bit, head as well, Joe. It's a very, it's a bit scary. Yeah. yeah. So he, he knows. He knows. So I was at row nine. I'll say yes. it again. Victor Popacool and Matthew Lilly. Row ten is Ronnie Faulkner and to- Toby Biggs. Row eleven is Zach Andrew and Jamie Walsh. Row twelve, Travis Giddings and Ruben Sagu. And then rounding off 26 carts. And we have got 26 yes, carts on track. Carter Jackson and Leo Hunt. Now we will wait. You can see that the uh, the late afternoon sunshine. Next weekend, the clocks go forward. So it'll be getting lighter and lighter in the evenings. But uh, there are a couple of shadows just emerging over the, uh, the, the fields in the background. As uh, everybody who's not putting carts away... Uh, has a little look over the fences to see the last race of the weekend. And could this be, is this going to be a zip cart parade? Or can anybody, the mm. question was asked earlier, can anybody hold it? Oh, and, uh, oh, oh, dear. That's, that's going to delay the start a little that, bit. That's number 26. Uh, is the, and Zach Andrew. Zach Andrew, one of the novices. We, we might not get this away. Uh, or will we? Uh, no, we won't. No, we won't. And, no. and again, that's, that's a, uh, you know, a, uh, that's a call from the race director to get one of them, yeah, get one of the, uh, the track officials over to get that cart, and it's you can see all the rain that they've that we've had here, and there we go, and uh, now you'll take a couple of corners just to get all the muck and detritus off the uh, 26 cart. Those uh, side pods are at uh, a somewhat jaunty angle, I have to say. Uh, but uh, obviously, that's you know that's uh, just the way that the setup has worked, and they now they will give that driver the hurry up to catch up the back of the field. Yeah, I, I, I th- hopefully he will catch up the back of the field, or else he's going to be tailed off uh, and have a very lonely race. Will Zach Andrew? Yes, and uh, you know, that, that, but he should you know should catch up, and uh, you just saw on the left hand side of you that's our cameraman out there that has uh, been bringing you. You know some great, great shots from up and over the brow. I think that I think that shot coming up towards Spoon Curve as they they emerge up over the brow. That's the kartings version of the the famous angle at was it Franz, Flansgarten at the Nurburgring, where you see the cars just crested the rise and almost yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, that's our version. Of that, so. I mean, that's probably the Flansgarten right there, the compression. Oh, yeah, the compression. Where the lifting but, wheels. But, but there's the, the one where they yeah. come up over the brow, and there's yeah, yeah. yeah. You could, there's that famous uh, angle, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to, yeah. to... We'll wax lyrical about that another <laughs> time. This is the on-track action for the final time this weekend. Oh, We're off and racing. Gets very busy on row two there. We had a bit of wheel banging going on as they were fighting for position behind the two zip carts. However, I think we've got somebody... No, it is the two zip drivers that are at the front of this field. Alfie Mayer and Benedictus Masiokas. Is it in that order? It is indeed the 15 yep. of Alfie Mayer from pole position, Masiokas. We saw that in the superheats, didn't we? Uh, Alfie Mayer being the driver to beat in Micromax. It's the number 23 of Diane Pahl in third, just pulling away now and going with the zip car drivers into the devil's elbow. And it is Alfie Mayer who we've seen in this position all weekend long. And Masiokas going with him. We'll see if anybody's been tinkering with the settings. Well, yeah, and, and they would have been able to compete with Zip. Well, they would have. They would have had to. So Dian Pahal uh, and uh, the number eight of Buddy Hugo, third and fourth. Uh, Logan Rolf runs fifth. Then Chloe McGill is sixth. Now I'm not quite sure uh, 
why why we've got Buddy Hugo uh, not showing up as a lap. He's there in fifth position ahead of. Uh, I've got him in Clover. fourth. I, yeah, I've got him. I've, in I've got again don't take take no notice of the timing screen on screen. The live yeah. timing and scoring is slightly different for some reason. Don't know if you're hearing that, James. Um, but I mean, I'm not sure why. Well, Just... Dean Bahal's got the bit between his teeth. He has, uh, yeah. And and he's first of all. The, the, does he work with Benedictus Masiokas, or does he try and pass him and set off after Alfie May? It's going to be a very tough decision that he's going to have to make if he could even stay with the two leaders. He's going to get help from Logan Rolf. Yeah, I was about to say, Logan Rolf might have uh, more, uh, different ideas yeah. to that because Logan Rolf has come up onto the rear bumper of Pahal. Oh, and, and, and oh, pushing down him the inside through. has gone wow. Pahal, yeah. So, and Logan Rolf is going to go with him. The zip Side. stranglehold broken. <laughs> Masiok is tapping his yeah. helmets in. Stop fighting with me. Yeah. And let's, let's well, go. in fairness, uh, Benedictus, right. the drivers have, the drivers behind you were, but you were dropping back away from uh, of Alfie Mayer. And now we see Dan Pahal going ahead and into second. Yeah. Oh, and getting a little bit sideways yes. there. Oh, that's going to cost, cost him a bit of time. But to be to be fair though, Dian Pahal he's thinking, oh, and he ran wide coming up the final corner. Now Benedictus Masiokas oh. needs to push uh, the push the number twenty three RCE cart, and he is doing it. I mean, Dian Pahal's probably thinking, well, Benedictus hasn't been able to stay with Alfie May, you know, all weekend, so I need to pass him to try and do it myself. And do you know what? He's actually pulled a little gap there, he has. so he's recovered from that well. Uh, a 48.62 last time. New fastest up the race for Alfie Mayer. A 48.94 for Dian Pahal. Alfie Mayer has been, is proved very, very hard to beat in this Micromax class pretty much from the outset, pretty much from Friday when we start practicing here. He's been the class of this field, the zip cart driver. Uh, his teammate, Masiokas, has, uh, has been not that far away from him, but this time he's got uh, Dian Singh Pahal in between them, and then Logan Rolf. You can never discount yeah. Logan Rolf, who is now onto the rear bumper of the number 12 of Masiokas and looking like he's challenged, and likewise, Masiokas looking like he's coming back at Pahal. Yeah. And, and you know what? Alfie Mayer's not pulling away that and, readily, and is he? We've got a new fastest yeah, lap of the race. Pahal. And it's not the race leader, it's Dian Pahal, 48.566. And he's towing Masiokas and Rolf up to the leaders. Behind them, Buddy Hugo, Chloe McGill, 5th and 6th, Alfie Garrett, Jensen Walker, Elijah West and Lewis Herbertson, the top 10, out of RBJ Stubbs in 11th. So here we come then, out of the compression, it'll be five laps completed. We are a minute away from half distance, Henry, so there's still plenty of time for action to develop. And if anything... Alfie Mayer, he's got a cushion in that lead. Dean Pahal has got a cushion in second place. Third place, however, is still two drivers in the mix. Massey Orkers and Rolf behind these four. Buddy Hugo, Chloe McGill, Jensen Walker, Elijah West, Lewis Herbertson, and Albie J. Stubbs, as you said. So whether or not well, the, the gaggle of carts behind these four Ooh, another, are not far away from no. catching... Pahal has caught the leader. Has caught the leader. Now, whose team is Pahal with? He's a, you... he's a Richard Chassis engineering uh, driver for the RCE team. And so uh, this is game on. And last time around, it was a 48.53, new fastest lap for Pahal, uh, made at a 48.78. And uh, this is oh. so Benedictus Masiokas is, is, is actually push, pushing. Uh, a rival up towards his teammate, but of course Masiokas is in this to win this as well. Yeah, the and fastest lap for him as well, 48-3. He pushes that fastest lap even further. Now they're on to the back end oh, of oh. Alfie Mayer. For the first time this yes. weekend, we see Alfie Mayer being challenged. Yes, indeed. Uh, as we, We've not uh, seen it. We're not used to seeing this. No, no. Well, this would be a test, a, a test of his metal, as it were, because you've got... Uh, you know, Alfie May, he's had things all his own way. Now he's going to have to learn how to defend. Um, good we, battle yeah. behind four cards, well, but uh, yeah. I said defend. Uh, he's defended very well there by pulling out a gap. Yeah, he's very, very quick through he that. He is. D Devil's elbow and compression corner are easily his two strongest corners on this circuit. And this, it, it's the slipstream yep. effect that we get on the Dragon Straight that draws them back together as they get towards over the brow of the hill in the spoon. I mean, and this is where that. the last time they were right on the bumper of Alfie Mayer. Yeah. And look at that, once again. Yeah. They're within, back within there. Within two cart lengths. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very strange, that, isn't it, how that works. And Alfie Mayer's cart 
clearly very, very good. I mean, there's, that, that's gear, there's, a, there's a mixture that is gearing, and the rest of it is potentially set up. Uh, but as they come down, now this is the two corners. So you can see May, he takes a different entry line, but coming out of here, he seems to go over the curb a bit more, and he's just so much better than everybody else through that corner. Different line, and it works. But Pahal will not, <laughs> Pahal's not going away. No, and Logan Rolf, personal best lap time for him, 48-4. So there's still four carts in it, and three just, well, we, we're over, we've still got over three minutes We haven't of even this run the two-minute two warning. No, nah, the two-minute <laughs> warning still to come, Henry. Yeah. So prepare yourself for that. Oh, looking over his shoulders, Pahal, he can feel the presence of Masiokas. Masiokas, likewise, can feel the presence of Logan Rolf. Now into the technical part of Glanny Gore here, into the six and seven, now into Devil's Elbow. They start coming downhill here, and it's downhill momentum that you've got to keep going. It's like a floor, left and right, left and right. And, that, and look like, at the gap off yeah, in there's pulled out. Well, I I'm, I'm can't understand why the Pahal, Masiokas and Rolf have not just copied uh, Mayer's line. It's, the diff it's a different line, it's isn't it? You spotted that last line. lap. It's a much, much different line, and... Uh, you know, obviously it works for him because if if, if they can peg uh, Mayer back through that section, and here they go. Now, they've got to try and get ahead before the exit of the carousel. You know, Mayer is pretty much unbeatable through the second half of the lap. So from, if, if yeah. you're going to make the move... Once they get to that point when, there... Once you get to this point... Mayer's going to pull Mayer, away. Mayer's, yeah. Mayer's gone. And you will see this now again. It's, you know, this corner they're about equal. Uh, and then through the left hand of their equal, but now, now this is the difference. Yeah. It's over the curb there, using a lot more wider track, uh, and then cut it back, and there's it's, the gap. He's able to keep speed. Two yeah. minute warning bell has just sounded oh, oh. into the final two minutes of the weekend. Then it's Micromax out on track at the moment, and there we see Alfie Mayer. The gap that he had through turn one is about to disappear up and over the brow and into Spoon. They close up again. Masayokas is right on the bumper of Pal. He knows how much time is left. He knows he's going to make a move if he wants to catch his teammate up ahead in the lead. Sadly, Chloe McGill has retired. Just oh, that's a shame. Stricken cards coming outside of Spoon. That's the first retirement of the race. Now back to the leaders. Can Pahal, you know, can Pahal sort of keep pace with Mayer through this section again? The gap's two cart lengths coming into this corner. Three cart lengths maximum. Let's have a look. Tight and line, not as quick. Yeah. Tight the line again, proving not as quick Five as lengths. Alfie Mayer. Yep. One minute to go. Oh. We've probably got three laps. Three laps of this Micromax to go. Four cart battle for the lead. It's absolutely intriguing. Behind them, behind them, fifth is Alfie. Is that the move? That That's is the move. the move. That is the move of the weekend in Micromax. As Dan Pahal takes the lead and he's got that lead snatched away from him by Alfie Mayer into the carousel he knew and this is where Mayer will pull away this is the section of track he did what you said he had to do yep, he and get by before the carousel however if he does that again next lap it's going to have to be defensive driving yep. into the carousel now uh, Mayer has had a bit of a wake up I think yes I, that's I, the first time he's been overtaken all I, weekend and Pahal was a little bit wider. He sort of did half Alfie Mayer's line, but Mayer still gains a couple of cart lengths. It's he's not as close as he was, is he? No, he's, he's not, as, not close. as close as he was. He's if anything, Masiokas looks like he could challenge for second if they're not careful. Interview, he does. He does try. He's and got a lot of pace over that brow. Yep. And Mayer yeah. looks over his shoulder, so Mayer's going to defend into this corner. So, okay. It's it's going to boil down to one more time into Spoon Curve. Yeah, they, I think they're so. going to get the last lap board next time around, and it's going to be Spoon or Bust and that, for Dian Pahal. And that Spoon Challenge is going to start at the final turn. Yes. Out of the final turn, but, through turn one. Wow, this is... I mean, Alfie Mayer's yeah, got a bigger that. gap than he's had at any look point. At that. Great, great lap from Alfie Mayer. Outstanding lap from Alfie Mayer. He holds off the challenge the first half of the lap, and... Oh, oh, I don't even think... They, well, they might. Oh. oh, I don't know. Again, we see the slipstream, and now we've got three carts battling for second. They're going to start tripping one another up. Alfie Mayer's going to play right into Alfie Mayer's hands here. See how they close up now? Yep. And now down towards the carousel for this, the final time. Oh, and there's a yellow flag. There's the cart off the yep. side of the circuit. That's Leo Hunt has gone off. Pahal. 
I don't think Pahal's got the pace. We can we know how quick Alfie Mayer is in this very technical part of Glanigore. We know how much quicker he is. He's proved it every time. And once again, the lead begins to eke out through every part of the switchbacks, through the compression for the final time. There's the gap again. Final turn of the weekend. And it's Alfie Mayer who takes the win. And look how, look how delighted Dan Pahal was Pahal, taking that yes. second step of the podium there. Benedictus Masiokas could have easily been second, could have easily been first. However, he was indeed third. But you know what? Benedict Masiokas, he, he'll be a little bit frustrated. But if you think about this, he, he sat and pushed Dia Pahal if, because he thought I'm, that's my best chance of winning. If he battled with Dia Pahal, Alfie Mayer wins and finishes five seconds up the road. Uh, Masiokas either finishes second or third. Yeah. He thought, no, I'm going to stick with it. And he finishes third, but he finishes six tenths of a second behind no, the winner. No, no team orders there. No team, no team orders. orders. And he, went, I'm gonna make a, he made a conscious decision. My best chance to win is by pushing Bahal, not battling with him, because that keeps me close to the leader. Yeah. And then you don't know. But I, I, I'm, these are the young drivers. But Alfie Mayer won that because he won that for a lot of reasons. But the main reason was because at compression corner, he had a better, more effective, quicker line uh, than anybody else. And, and, and none, of, none of his rivals, Pahal or Masiokas, could figure out a way of keeping Mayer close enough so that they could start making the move halfway down the Dragon Strait. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's, yeah, and if they could have been on his bumper through the final turn, I, that might have been what they were needed there. Um, Henry, we have reached that conclusion. We'll just have a, yes, a quick order, rundown yes. of, the, of the top 10 or 12 or 13. Uh, so Alfie Mayer takes the win, Pahal second, Masiokas third, Logan Roll fourth, fifth was Alfie Garrett, Elijah West was sixth, seventh was Jensen Walker, Alby J. Stubbs was eighth, Lewis Herbertson ninth, rounding off the top 10 was Lewis Kakodi, and then just outside of the top 10, Matthew Lilly, Seb Crawford, Toby Biggs, Freddie Blackshaw, Victor Popacle, rounding off the top 15. Um, Henry, that concludes, <coughs> pardon me, round two of the Kart Championship. It's been an absolute delight to have the Henry Baudet <laughs> join <laughs> us for this no, on Karting Live TV. Well, it's, it's been a, a, as a long time ad, uh, admirer of your work in sports car racing. Oh, thank the, you very much. It's, 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 it's quite a privilege to be sat next to you and uh, commentate with the Joe Bradley. Oh, well, I should have. <laughs> um, the Joe Bra- well, from the Joe Bradley and the Henry Baudet, yes. we bid you good night. Keep an eye on our Facebook page on Karting Live TV and keep up to date with the Kart Championship. We'll see you at round three at one lot at the end of April where you can visit my part of the world we've here in Wales at Henry's part of the world I think Nick Damon's going to be back though uh, if you just want to nudge him off the seat it's up to you mate <laughs> I think you've got broader shoulders than him uh, we hope you've enjoyed the coverage here from Glanic Gores we get uh, back up to the northeast for round three soon uh, for now we'll bid you farewell good night and have a safe journey home